and she is black against real boy. Real boy, by the way. You think he's a real boy, Pinocchio? I mean, you know. Probably. I, I guess so. Probably. All right. What's going on here with that knight on A7? Something feels wrong. It's hanging out with the wrong crowd. Yeah. This is the truly most global event in chess, and this is International Master David Pruis sitting right here alongside me, actually coming to us live from the Mechanics Institute in San Francisco. David, how pumped are you for week one of the, the biggest event in, in chess? This is, this is a big day for me, Danny. Like a, like a football fan, I've waited nine months for my sport to return. Yeah. And here it is, and it, and indeed it is. It is. This is this is the event that really puts chess on the, on the esports map, if we use that term. But uh, we are about to provide commentary for what is one of the most fast-paced, action-packed shows you or I have ever really been a part of. Right? Obviously, you and I have been a been a fan of online chess leagues from from as early as I think we've known each other. But this has really taken that action to another level. It is a truly global event, and we're going to see some pretty exciting chess today. Yeah, it's more games, it's faster, it's higher rated players, it's um it's like anything that the US Chess League was, but sort of on steroids or on a, something. On a like grander that. scale, yeah. Well, let's talk yeah. a little bit about the league and who's playing in it, what what exactly the Pro Chess League is, the format, and kinda take everybody who's just tuning in uh, to the show, welcome, whether you are joining us via twitch.tv slash chess, chess.com TV. Uh, one of our hosting hosting channels, or anywhere you may be in the world, thank you for being here, and thank you for spending the rest of your day with us, assuming you're going to do that. Uh, but as we said, David, so this is, a, this is a truly global event, which is why I called it the biggest one in chess. Uh, it, it's an event that brings together 32 teams from around the world. Uh, they are competing for uh, the biggest prizes and glory, but the time control they're doing it in is 15-2, which you and I really like because Rapid Chess just has that feel of just fast enough and, and and intense enough that the fans really never have a boring moment, but also high quality and high quality enough, excuse me, as we've seen in the Pro Chess League, where you see some real theory, you see some prep, you see these guys playing super high quality chess. So how excited are you to see who ends up being one of those final four teams and what are your thoughts on the rapid time control and what it does for this format? You know, it's it's actually it's pretty cool this this format. Um 
people aren't really used to playing or seeing 15 minute chess before the PCL, you know, I mean, people mostly play either blitz chess or really slow tournament games right. and this kind of middle ground it's um, it's new, but it means there's a lot of like awesome tactics, good learning moments. Like, you know, since we're talking 27, 2800 players participating in this league, there are games which just happen to look the same as a tournament game. They play right. that well right. on that particular day. Right. Um, then there's also a lot of like, head head smacking moments um i remember last year doing one show where there were like six maiden ones or so <laughs> well <laughs> so, and, as you as yeah, you said it's it, and it's awesome chess because of the awesome prizes there we were just showing everybody exactly what's at yeah. stake let's talk a little bit about each division and who the top players are that are competing right. for their teams this year right now we have uh, a visual for everybody of, as, far, as far as who some of the biggest names are playing from the Central Division. That's not the division you and I will have today, but uh, boy, I can't wait for that. You have Jan Christoph Duda, obviously Maxime Vache Legrave, probably the biggest, most household name there. But guys like yeah. Jorg Meyer and Aryan Tari. So when you look at the Central, who are some of the big names or even some of the underdog names that maybe uh, stand out to you? Yeah, I mean, to me, you mentioned a lot of a lot of the big names. Um, one other name I could mention for you is the second board for the Baden Baden, formerly Stockholm Snowballs. Yep. Um, Alexeyev, he's their second board with a rating around 2630. He's a 21 year old Russian whose rapid rating is just over 2700. So that's another really big gun for them that some people might not notice just scanning down the FIDE ratings that yep. um, that they've got a 2700 they're hiding on board too. And speaking of 2700s, uh, not so much hiding, but we just moved on to, to showing everybody the Pacific Division. And I, I don't yeah. even know where to begin in this division, David. Like, okay, Grandmaster Sam Shanklin, yeah. reigning U.S. champion, playing for your mechanics. Uh, you know, Shakri Armamad Yarov, Hikaru Nakamura. Um, you know, but, but really, why don't you give your thoughts on somebody you and I have been a fan of for a long time. And this is his first year in the league, although he's joining a team that made it all the way to the Final Four yet last year. How well do you expect Grandmaster Ding Li Ren to do uh, this year for the Shangdu Pandas? Oh, man. That, I mean, that's, that's huge. For a while, they took their time to sort of announce who their top players were going to be. You know, I remember I was scouting two, three weeks out, didn't see it yet. But Ding Li Ren, man, that's an addition. I think this guy's going to be fabulous in rapid chess and that his team is again going to be like the team to topple in in the, in the pacific, pacific yep. probably with him and yu yang yi i mean those guys we already saw yu yang yi last year yep. super strong and i imagine ding is even another cut above that so yeah no, it, it, you're right. I honestly don't envy your position as a manager of one of the Pacific Division teams because Yongdu <laughs> is, is good. But what about the Eastern Division? We know that uh, he, here we've got also a ton of familiar faces to the Chess.com community, uh, whether it's Jan Napomniashi, uh, Dmitry Andraken, of course, Tanya Sachdev. But I look at a couple things that stand out for me here, uh, David. One, Grandmaster yeah. Fedoseyev is is back in the league, but for those of you who follow it closely, you know that Fedoseyev played for the St. Louis Archbishops last year as a free agent, which meant, David, that he was often playing post 2, 3 a.m. in Moscow, right? And right. so I'm really excited to see what he does this year as a free agent for the Estonia Horses. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, the young star Nihal Sarin playing for the Dynamite and Vidic Gujarathi for his sort of cross-country rival there, the Mumbai Movers. But I, I don't even know where to begin for this, but I think that Fedo Sayev storyline is going to be something we keep coming back to. Yeah, I mean, he was World Rapid Champion the year before, so um, he's, he's a fantastic player at that level. Uh, but in this division, I would say one thing to do is not just to look at the star power like we do in some other divisions, but right. to look at the defending champions, the Armenia Eagles. They don't have household names on their team. Right. Uh, unless you're like a huge chess fan and, you know, you really keep up on this stuff. But I would assume that their team's really good. I would assume that their manager like knows who he's picking. He's got really good rapid players. He's got a fantastic team spirit. Yep. You know, you saw them celebrating together last year. And, you know, on paper, they may not have a 27 or 2800 player. But I would assume that team's going to be pretty strong. No, it's a fantastic point. I mean, you, you make a good point that we, we actually – the Ar Armenian Eagles are the reigning champions, and because they don't pack one of those top 2,700 players on board one, we don't even have them on this on this sort of preview here. But, of course, uh, we know that they will be a force to be reckoned with. And then finally, the yeah. division that you and I will have the call for here today, 
a lot of uh, a lot of Americans, of course, everyone looks at uh, perhaps the most popular American chess player over the last uh, couple months, right there in the middle, Fabiano Caruana, because of his uh, recent event, a small event that took place in London, where he challenged right. for the world title. Um, but yeah, it's uh, hard to it's hard to not be the number one name on people's tongues yeah. when you're playing a world championship match. Yeah, um, and then of course right there, but we have uh, uh, other American players there: a Wonder Liang, Alexander Lunderman, and then you've got Lequang Liem, also a, a former World Blitz champion playing there for the Webster windmills yeah. again. And Anish Giri also was on the chess bra roster last year. Didn't play uh, as much as I think the chess bras would have liked. I actually don't even remember if he even played a single match, but I'll check on that stat before I misspeak. But anyway, yeah. it, it, it'll be exciting. You and I will dive into the Atlantic division specifics here in a second. But I do want to quickly yep. mention as we're getting close on to game time that uh, our fantasy chess competition, for those of you who for some reason are just – this is your first time seeing what the Pro Chess League is. Welcome. Don't go anywhere. Hit the follow button for us. But also get involved. There's a $10,000 prize for anybody uh, that can that can score score the perfect bracket. As uh, as this prize is actually sponsored directly by uh, the league itself. Uh, the Diamond membership, of course, prizes are also plenty. And uh, type the type the command fantasy to learn more about that uh, if you yeah. are in the Twitch chat. So uh, if you've never watched PCL before. It may be hard for you to get every single thing right and win the ten thousand dollar prize in the first week, but you can study each week, start to see who's really right. good, and try and win it in a couple of weeks. Or, or the opposite, right? We always—I uh, don't know if you the March Madness bracket they talk about. It's super unlikely for anyone to get perfect, but I—I rem- I think my wife outscores me by predicting teams based on their jersey color and their mascot okay. every year. So it shows you how much I know about college basketball. Yeah. But maybe it's yeah. one of those things where the more you know, the less you have a chance to win. Who knows? But. Um, we are we're two minutes away, David. This is it, dude. The kickoff. Yep. We're excited. I yep, yep, yep. I don't even know where to begin. The St. Louis Archbishops versus the London Lions. That's going to be. Gonna with, we're going to begin with Caruana and So. That's a good place to begin. Yeah, can't get better than that. Um, remind everybody if uh, if you're looking for. I'm going to make my first uh, shout out to our to our swag here. For those of you who didn't know, we we advertise this in World Championship, but I actually got a backpack here. This is a Pro Chess League backpack, David. You would look so good in one of these. Like not in the backpack, but you get it, right? Right. Where? Yeah. <laughs> where get, um, <laughs> you and, would need uh, like four of them to carry me in pieces. Yeah. Um, but if you are interested in that, uh, they are still limited edition. Check them out in our Streamlabs merch store. Um, pretty soon here, the most action-packed chess event is going to take off. So David and I will not have any time to talk about anything but the X's and O's. So got to no. get that in now. Yeah. Shout out to everybody in the chat rooms. We've got Chess Bay. We've got all of our mods here. Thank you so much for being here and helping us, all of our subscribers, and uh, the support with you. These events are possible. Thanks for being a fan of chess and for tuning in. David, can I just say I'm so glad to be doing this with you. And talk, tell everybody a little bit about where you are, about the mechanics and kind of the history behind you for those of you who may not know exactly what a landmark the Mechanics Institute right in downtown San Francisco is. Yeah, I don't know how clearly people can see behind me, but these are all photos of, you know, people who've been here and played at the Mechanics. Um, I see a picture here on the wall of the U.S. Olympiad gold medal team. Pretty well under seal. That picture's just not attached. Nice. There it is. There it is. And there's our boy Shanklin right in the middle. A lot of Russian hats on these guys. Yep. And uh, John Donaldson, who was the director of the Mechanics for 20 years, um... He retired one month ago, um, but he's been the captain of the U.S. Olympiad team 13 times. Uh, so he's amazing. Uh, and and David, David, what else is amazing is we have liftoff, and not only that, we have our right. first we have our first sort of I don't want to say dubious but slightly unique approach here with Fabiano Caruana against the board four. Uh, for the London Lions, employing kind of a two knights defense against D4. So, what can we tell everybody about this and the system that the young man, not being intimidated, is playing very quick here against Caruana? Yeah, well, the two knights tango, as they call it, is kind of a a disrespect opening. I think the only person who's ever played it against me in a tournament game was Hikaru Nakamura, and um, yes, and I well, think Hikaru I also think played the bomb cloud recently. Some disrespect. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, Hikaru also played the Bond Cloud recently, so don't get too upset about that. Um, no, I, I'm not upset about it. But uh, that's just that's just what I know about this opening. I, I mean, I haven't often seen a good player play it, like, seriously against right. someone else they thought was a, a threat to them. Well, here we have uh, – here we have – 
so d5 is played, and one of the reasons why this is, okay, we'll just provide the instruction we can here. This is considered a little dubious for black, as, as David said, kind of not a very serious opening, is because black has this pawn on d5, where uh, we're in a normal queen's gambit decline structure where white has pressure on the pawn on d5, but black doesn't have the normal development of the knight on c6. The knight is kind of awkward here. Um, usually, yeah. if you could just move that pawn from c7 to c5, uh, and and keep the knight behind the pawn, you'd be in great shape. But here, black doesn't yeah. have that option. Yeah, I mean, both the bishop and the knight on the uh, on the queen side are not in the classic positions for the queen's gambit. Right. Um, and there are some systems with the bishop on d4, but then they would involve c5, like you said. Right. There's some systems with the knight on c6, they wouldn't probably involve bishop b4. So um, he's just throwing something a little bit unusual. But al already, of, I mean, uh, this has become a... What would you say already? I mean, here I feel like Black will put the rook on e8. Okay, bishop g5, a nice move. It was threatening knight takes d5, and so uh, Black immediately he, captured that knight on c3. But I think he's going to fault with h6 and force another trade because he wants to play knight e4. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense. Bring the knight to e4 and then maybe use the, the half-open e-file here where Black has some pressure with a move like rook f to e8. Um, the other move that's coming in some positions is a4 for Black, where you might have this route of knight a5, knight c4, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, for that reason, I th I would have expected White to take back on c3 with the rook, actually. Um, yeah, that's an interesting point, because... Keep some pressure on the c-file, right? And not right. give this knight c4 move. Yeah, and, and uh, maybe uh, Shreya should have played this idea. I wonder how much he's playing fast right now, David, out of true confidence and knowledge of the position, or just because he's nervous, right? Playing against... I think he's trying to show confidence, right. trying to project confidence. Right. I've been there myself sometimes... Like, I never want my opponents to know that I'm not confident against right. them. So often... My, my opponents just pretty much know time. when I sit down that I'm not that confident. But yes, yeah. I hear you. Yeah. So I try to lie about it. You yeah. may have tried to lie about right. too, right? You're like, hmm, no idea what's going on. Pretty worried. This guy's like 28, 30. Yeah. Uh, this guy just played uh, Magnus Carlsen for the world title. Yeah. No big deal. I'll pretend that I prepared for the yeah. two nights tango and that I studied this thing. Right. <laughs> Well, let's let's try to check in on another one of these games uh, from the uh, the team here. We've got another game here between Hans Kuhl Neiman and Sergei of um, yep. which is uh, I think a big game for the uh, for the London Lions to be able to strike because Hans Kuhl Neiman obviously um, not the top player for St. Louis, and maybe that's an opportunity yeah. for them to uh, for the Lions to strike here. So, what are your thoughts about this position here between Hans and Sergei? Well, we've got another weird knight on c6 and bishop on b4. So it looks like one of the lions and one of the archbishops were sharing their prep together. Yeah. Mosesian and, and, uh, and, and uh, Caruana working together. Yeah. That's actually really um, strange, right? Because they're not on the same team. So yeah. so clearly we're joking, but it is weird that they would play the same type of system. Yeah. Yeah, I would think that, I mean, again, I would prefer white's position. I think this is slightly funky by black, this kind of queen's gambit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I, I like yeah. White's position as well. Here, I, I actually like White's position more here than I did than I do now currently with Shrios versus Fa Fabiano. And I think if Bishop takes C3, okay, exactly. Yeah. Possession doesn't because if takes, I think here Hans would have taken your advice and taken with the Rook to really right. use that. And that C7 battery. pawn is so hard to defend, and then yep. that means the Knight has to sit on C6 forever until yep. White gangs up on it. Um, yep. He couldn't like D6 because of moves like Knight takes D5. So he had to keep the dark squared bishop. That also leaves him with the bishop pair as like a kind of counterplay type thing. Right. The bishop wants to eventually go to D6, but not right. sure if he can arrange that. No, it's a good point. And again, you're highlighting the dysfunction of this structure for black, right? Because you don't have a pawn on C6 where you normally would here, everyone guarding D5. You don't get to put your other pieces where they normally go. Like David said, the bishop on D6 hitting H2. This is the natural thing that black can't do because D5 is targeted. So again, another reason why we kind of like white. And don't count Hans Neiman out. Hans plays a lot on chess.com. He's, uh, if he's not quite as strong of a player as Sergei Movsesian, he's, he's very good in the online format, which I know... The pro rap, the pro league here, David, is certainly real chess before online skills, but online skills yeah. will end up mattering in some scenarios, right? No, sure. I mean, he's not a world class GM, but Hans Neem is like 2450 FIDE updated. He's right. like 15 years old or so, improving rapidly. I think he's like a major star. And St. Louis hired him as a free agent. You see, they've got 2800 right. who are local. Right. So for a free agent, they looked around the country and they said, what is the young underrated maybe yeah who gives us the best chance of winning this league yep and they pick this guy and and uh I no, that, that's a great point also 
wouldn't it be nice to have some local 2800s in your backyard? But yes, it, it is. It is nice. It's good to be king, as they say. Nice to be St. Louis. Well, let's check yeah. on the uh, the other game started here from this match, and that is the uh, board four game here, uh, where we have uh, Nicholas Rosenthal, uh, Nikki Nikki Rosenthal, well known as an underrated player, taking on Roman Edward. That's a uh, username's Frolic six seven, and yeah. uh, versus Muggsy. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think anyone will be surprised to see Caruana and So scoring pretty well over the course of the season, right? Right. Um, but so the most important people to watch on St. Louis are going to be their third and fourth boards because yeah. So and Caruana at max can score eight out of 16 in any given week. Yep. Excellent so, point. So the, the question marks are how good will Rosenthal and Hans Neiman be? Well, right. Rosenthal, when he played on the team in 2017 season, I thought he was basically an MVP candidate along yep. with, you know, Carlson and so. Yep. Because he came in with a rating around 21 60 70 and performed 23 50 over the course of dozens and dozens of games against strong opposition. Yep. So, you know, when when your board four scores like one and a half or two points, like what's the other team going to do? You make a great point and and I think again it's one of the most exciting things about the league. It's one of the most unique things is that in the team format chess is such an individual game. People don't think of that, but in the team format, you have the underrated players like the person you just mentioned there, uh, Nicholas Rosenthal, who's who's performed well historically in all types of online leagues. You mentioned the Pro Chess League's predecessor, the U.S. Chess League. And again, he played very well for them in 2017, where they ultimately won the title. For those of you new to this sport here, the St. Louis Bishops won the title in 2017, fell short in yeah. the final four uh, last year, and they did not have Rosenthal on board four. In fact, Rosenthal exactly. pl played for the Miami Champions, as you uh, some of you noticed, his little team icon there. Uh, we're, we're still rolling over from the 2018 season, so we will be updating some of these logos. Ignore that. Ignore that champion's yeah. pawn. He does play for the Archbishop. So, so as far as I recall, last year... Caruana was like MVP for St. Louis. Indeed. And Rosenthal moved to another team, and they and that wasn't enough. Right. You know, an MVP on board one was not enough right. to win the whole well, thing. But to be fair, right, Fabiano was he unable to travel. Yeah, he was, un you know, and again, for those of you who don't know, we had the live final live in San Francisco uh, last year, and, and information to be coming out as far as where and what the live final will be all about this year. Let's bounce back here to the game Fabiano Caruana is what? involved in because he is now he's now sacrificed the exchange, David, yeah. but with the huge potential of this move F four and that queen slipping in on the light squares for uh, for some for some nasty business over here. I mean, what do you think? I, I'm loving the exchange sack looking at it mainly mainly not even because I believe uh Fabiano's gonna mate him, David, but when you look at White's mm -hmm. counterplay, where is White really getting on the C file? Nowhere, right? I think right. that what I would have done for White is Queen E two to H five to defend the ah, king side line. Players. I like that. Queen E two to Queen H five. You kinda yeah. say, you know, I know I don't really have all the chips I need on the C file here. Let me let me put my queen over here. Mm -hmm. Um Look how fast this youngster's played, right? I know he's, again, playing yeah. Fabiano Caruana, but something tells me that in hindsight, people might be turning him. His Lions teammate might be saying, hey, buddy, slow down a little bit. Take a breath here because we know you're talented. We know you can see tactics well. Use your time when you're against, I don't know, the number two player in the world, something like that, Yeah. right? Queen C3 feels wrong to start with, right? Like the threat from black is F4. And I want to play it. Let's do and, it, right? Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to tickle your A5 pawn. I'd be like, tickle away. Yeah, it's like tickle away. I, if I was Fabi, I would have just played a four and just to show the line everybody that Dave and I are thinking of something like this. I, I guess in the end there was Queen E1 and maybe somehow White was getting to this F1 square barely. So Fabi decides, okay, I'm not even going to let you take A5. But but you're right, David. F4 is coming and uh, Shrias will be in, in real trouble. Yeah. That said, he's up in exchange. If somehow right. Fabi doesn't like crash through brilliantly – if if Shreyas won this game, we wouldn't even have to look any further. It would be the upset of the week, the biggest right. rating point upset of all. No, absolutely. And and those early upsets, right? We saw that happen in the playoffs last year, uh, where Maxime Bashe, the Grovs team, the migraines were really favored. And he, he you know, if you get scathed as the board won, even just with a draw, right, David? Every little half mm -hmm. point ends up helping the other team because you're supposed to be that guy, that twenty eight, twenty seven they bring in to go to go four oh. Um and okay, I like Fabiano's position here. Here comes F4. Queen H3 is going to come. Um, but you're right. Actually, the more we look at I mean, so so if we analyze some concrete lines, Queen H3, Queen E1, just to show why F3 doesn't work for everybody, the Queen gets to this F1 square just in time. 
And as David was saying, right. is if, if Bobby falls short, watch out with what's happening over here with the Rook on the fifth rank. Interesting. Yeah. Definitely better to go queen h3 first instead of f3. You keep open your options of trading on g3 or pushing f3. Uh-huh. I like that. So the queen you comes play to h3. h4. Okay, so look, his queen took three moves to get to e2. <laughs> right. Three moves instead of the first move. You, you know, you're right. And now Fabi plays a4. Very nice move because he's going to play b3. He's going to um, get b3, another thing to tie white down. So it's looking pretty tough for white now. And another good point, too, is that if you even if if you get that queen to f1 after something like f3, David, now that these two pawns are so far up the board, black might just take a2, right? Give the c6 pawn and have a couple of passers uh, running Ooh. to the uh, to uh, to the delivery room there. It's a girl on b1. So, um, uh -huh. yeah, so... That's the idea. That's the idea. Yep. All right, well, let's let's move on to the, the, the game we also touched on from this match. It looks like we still do not have the fourth game started here between the Bishops and the Lions... Uh, David and I... I... I found it, Danny. It's just a couple... It's below a couple of uh, games. Okay, it, it, it just started there. In fact, so let's touch on that since we've ignored like it. two books being sacked at the same time here, so... Wow. Yeah, let's go to this game here between Wesley So and Justin Tan. Amazing stuff because something tells me that Wesley So is bringing his prep this year, David, because I don't think he would play a position like this unless he knew what he was doing. This is, this is nuts. Yeah. Although he has spent, like six-ish minutes thinking. So this might not all be 100% right. planned. But look at this thing where he brings his bishop to f1 a couple moves ago. That's like a crazy way to get to yeah, win a Yeah, watch the analysis board, everybody. <laughs> this is this is crazy. So Wesley So in this position plays bishop f1. That's not something you see every day. Knight d2 takes on g2, which sacrifices the g7 pawn, but... Wesley's hope is that while White is desperately trying to regain this rook, I mean, it is a full rook that Black just won, uh, Wesley's going to take advantage of other things tactically, like this move night before, where this A pawn is pinned to the rook on A1. Um, this I don't know. before looks strong, man. Uh, something tells me we're in, we're in for Wesley So's first of many miniatures this year. Something tells me Wesley's going to take this game home here pretty quickly. I definitely see a few ways for White to lose in the next two moves. Right. For example, Bishop B1, rook to C8. Queen H8, Rook C1, mate. That would be... Or... I love... I, can I just say I love showing things when you talk about checkmates? Sorry, keep going. <laughs> keep going. I or love Bishop it. B1, Knight to D3, followed by any disgusting, filthy... Right. Bishop D1, discovery. Knight D3. Yeah, that's... You can use, use your imagination for yeah. that for that uh, scenario. Yeah, this is going to be tough for, for Justin Tan. And just to point out the obvious, of course, also taking on H8, Black is taking on C2 with check... And I don't even know what the next move might be for Black because there's so many options. Like if the move King moved to D1, yeah. you could even just take E3 with another check so that you could castle and everything is defended. So yeah. there's or you can take on A1, and when White takes on right. G8, you've got Bishop F8 to save your rook. So it looks like the we have only a move I see Go ahead. for White that doesn't lose in one move is Rook C1. Okay, that's the only move that doesn't seem to like. Yeah, like you know, resign on the more spot. More than five points of material in one move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, wait. Oh, unfortunately, we missed the first decisive result. We weren't there. Let's quickly check on the Fabiano game. What? Fabi? He won super quickly. Let's show everybody what happened when we oh, left wait. because after the move A4 was played, David and I were highlighting uh, that these pawns here were about to get really crazy. And that's kind of what happened here because after Rook DC won B3, the trade. Now white just becomes overwhelmed. Having to deal with a pass B pawn and the potential of mating nets over here on G2, that's that's a tall task for anybody. And that's kind of what happened here. Fabiano just takes the very forceful transition home, grabbing the C file where the threat of mate and delivering a new baby girl on B1 is just too much. So there you go. St. Louis, big surprise, strikes first. And they are on the board. Let's go to the game Frolic 6-7 here. Um, and... Mm -hmm. and uh, Nicholas Rosenthal, of course, and Romain Edward, because this is the one game that looks like it has a huge disparity on the clock right now with uh, Nicky Rosenthal about to go under the five-minute mark. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yeah, and quite a complicated position. I mean, yeah. as you can see, if you just looked at the position, you wouldn't know immediately that white was rated under 2,200 yeah. P-Day and black was rated over 2,600. Like, you just don't feel the normal disparity when Nicky plays. Yeah. 
No, especially again in this. I, I almost feel like at this point, this kid, we've it's been a broken record storyline since we started the Pro Chess League a few years ago, right? That he's such an underrated board four that makes me wonder if he's just purposely not improving his ratings anymore just so he can be that sort of hero uh, in, in, for some of these Pro Chess League teams. So, Yeah, I mean, he basically isn't playing um, FIA-rated games, right. I've noticed. Um, now, I don't know if... You know, I mean, he's played a handful, but I would say in the last like two years, he's played like 10 games, you yep. know, two or three here, two or three there. Yep. So I don't know if St. Louis pays him not to play. That would be like, right. That's another interesting angle. For most people, right? To get yeah. paid. Not to play. <laughs> right. Interesting uh, angle there. But OK, about this position, though, here comes the queen on the D file angle, hitting both the B2 pawn and preparing for some things on the seventh rank. Uh, yeah. This, this is a tricky position. So as we talk about just yeah. how good of a board for uh, Mr. Rosenthal is, I'm thinking he is in for a little bit of a tough position here, getting under time pressure against a 2600 GM, and and uh, this is looking like it's getting a little bit tough. Yeah, it's um, it's a little bit tough. Uh, I I think that both players have this concern about their second or seventh rank, depending which yeah. side you look at it from, right? Yeah, good point. Um, they each move their F pawns, and they each have the opponent's heavy pieces already getting in there. Yep. Um. But to me, at the moment, it looks like G7 is more secure than like F2, G2. So I'm right. a little more worried for Nikki myself. Yep. Yeah, I agree. In fact, on that note, if we go for some force lines, Queen B2, Rook B5, Rook D2, um, starts to get a little bit nerve-wracking. And in fact, such a line is suddenly on the board. In fact, I wonder if Rosenth Rosenthal just missed this threat of Bishop H4 coming, David. Is that a move, Bishop H4? It's a move. Look at that. Forcing um, forcing his way through and suddenly G two up oh, and he finds it. I think I think this was the tactic that Edward you had often in mind. Get surprised when a bad piece suddenly makes a tactic, right? right? You've got the bishop on F six and you're like, I killed his bishop. Look at right. his light score. Right. And then oh. No, that's an instructional point, David, there. I mean, because you like you say psychologically good lesson for our viewers to learn not to dismiss a piece because yes, it's structurally bad but based on this pawn on E five, but as you pointed out, the weakness of the seventh rank here is just too much for White. And I think Rosenthal is in uh I mean, even a move like rookie two here I think is probably just resigns on the spot actually. Yeah. I assume doubling rooks also wins with the right. idea of trading on F two and playing rook D one at some point there. Okay. You're yeah, moving, so Edward Edward chooses that. Let's go. Let's go to this game, yeah. Hans Kuhl Neiman, because here's our here's an All interesting right. one. Whoa. Let's see, cool guy. Hans well, Neiman. Zezian's trading his queen off for something? Yeah, and a he's rook just... And a knight? Not a very good knight. No, but is he this is what you highlighted. I mean, we left this board saying, hey, we had this opening on two games, but we really liked Hans' position against Movsession, whereas Caruana was starting to turn around, and, and we were right, because this has been... If you review this game from kind of where we left it, David, where this D5 pawn's mm -hmm. a problem and White has the C file, Neiman has really taken this one home and uh, win, wow. wins, wins you know, this. Yeah, go ahead. You know, Mosesian just got his queen trapped not on purpose. I mean, he just couldn't figure out where to get any counterplay and trapped his own queen. I mean, he took this, uh, this H3 pawn, I think, thinking... I, I, don't, I don't know. Well, I guess he had to at that point because G4. So did he yeah. just... His queen was already trapped, basically, when bishop d3 was played. That rook yeah. f6 is sort of trapped in his own queen. And What an interesting tactic there, because it's such a... That's yeah. like a weird puzzle rush position, because it's not intuitive for rook f6 to think about mm -hmm. a bishop retreating to d3, right? But those are moves the computers yeah. spot instantly, because they don't think about intuitive stuff like we do, and, and Neiman finds the really tough tactic and then just traps this queen. Yeah. And I think the other thing we have to give Neiman as far as credit is... He chose to play with this king on e2 against Movsesian, right? Yep. Like, he could have played a castling would have been normal. Right. And he played, like, with knight on f3, pawn to h3, king e2, rook g1. Yep. Like, he chose to do this thing. No, and I'm not surprised. I honestly believe that what you said, David, earlier uh, may – I know you're distracted there, but what you said earlier, David, may prove prophetic because I think that the fact that St. Louis went out of their way, everybody, to get Neiman on their team – is something that is really going to come back as a storyline throughout this year because he may end up proving to be one of the best free agent pickups of the offseason, right? I think you made a good point, David, and we'll see how much that comes back. So uh, we have a yeah. second game I mean, in the a books. Long, there's a long way to go to put away a player like Mosesian here. We second there's game in the books here just to show everybody how it ended. Indeed, on that tactic with Bishop H4, uh, all we had there was 
White uh, eventually uh, giving in and taking on h4 and then simply resigning after rook takes g2. So as predicted. All right, well, let, let's go back to the Neiman game nice in a minute stuff, after we check on the So game because what mm -hmm. we still have here is oh no we, we've had moves i'm sorry after rook to c1 which david said would be played mm -hmm. uh wesley took on c2 brought the queen to d3 and then found this nice move king to d7 a really nice way to sort of defend oh, the knight you know, if, white, if white saved the rook after queen d3 then black was probably planning queen g6 aha which basically now that now that lady's trapped the rook, then he gets in on g1 and right Absolutely. So that's why he ended up. But after takes in king d7, the rook saves itself anyway, but um, your idea of queen g6 happens, and I think that still happens. I think the biggest reason why white's in trouble here is just because, okay, knight f4 is forced, but I see queen g1, and indeed Wesley plays it. Um, the biggest issue I see here is just that that queen on h8 is, is almost trapped, whereas black's queen is a complete menace over here. I think it is trapped by knight f6, no? Yeah, winning, uh, I guess, in fact, you won't even be able to get a rook and a knight for it, right? You'll have to settle no, on the two minus. because the knight can recapture on yeah. e8 if you take the rook. Let's show that for everybody right there. So knight f6 that David just said is a very strong threat right now by Wesley. Well, it's and, also Wesley's move. Yeah, so. and, and I was going to say, and, and I don't know why he hasn't played it yet. Uh, <laughs> in fact, there it's he goes. It's awesome okay. when you've got great threats and it's your move. That's like uh, the best instant, case. Instant response there from Tan. I guess he kind of saw, <laughs> saw it coming. Unfortunately for him, his best case scenario is is perhaps a a trade that looks better for Black at first sight. But maybe this bishop on h1 is more blocked than I think. I was looking at something right. like queen f1, David, and right. then rook queen h8. Queen f1 or queen e3, either one. But, um, but my idea was that after six is hanging and the bishop's trapped on h1. Yeah, after takes takes and something like king f2. This bishop is not getting out. Although there is bishop h4 checks. Okay, this is going to be a mess. Yeah, I, I... Yeah, it's a mess. Wow. That's why Wesley was thinking for a while, huh? Yeah. He probably saw that there was still a mess going on. And indeed, wow. after f3, he has to come up with the right solution here. Yeah, In fact, Justin. look how crazy this is that all of White's pieces are perfectly placed because if you take on h8, the bishop takes on g1, and again, the rook on c3 suddenly guards the f3 pawn. Yeah. So this is actually super impressive defense right now. Yeah, honestly, I mean, like, Wesley's even risking losing here, right? Unless he finds some really good sequence. Yeah. Suddenly that bishop on h1 seems surprisingly trapped, where that you just didn't think that was going to be a storyline in this game. And, and Justin Tan has found a brilliant way to make uh, Black's life hard. In fact, Wesley is now getting under significant time pressure under three minutes. Oh. Oh. The other game just finished. Hans Neiman did win his game against Sergei Movzezian. I thought it would be hard, but he did it. Yeah, he took this one home in style here. I mean, this is this is this has certainly been the most dominant lopsided game we've had so far uh, of the day. And again, if you're just joining us, Hans Neiman, a free agent pickup by the St. Louis Archbishops, because they Brutal. have local 2800s, as David said. So they they pick up 2400s, and they believe that Hans Neiman is an underrated one, and he proved that today, beating Movzezian oh with the white pieces. But all right. Good job. That's all he's got to do. He's already done his day's work, right? Yeah, seriously, you right? The other team board one. If you're on board three or four, and and uh, and you can you uh, tip your tip your hat there, yeah. Can relax for the rest of the day. Okay, so this game here between So and Tan is proving to be one of the biggest ones because right now, it's gonna it's gonna come down to whether Wesley has a creative way to get that bishop on h1 out, or if he's truly gonna be surprisingly worse. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I don't know. Although it looks like also for those wondering when the next match will get underway, we will jump to these in a moment because of course So's game here is by far the more important one. But the next match, uh, between the, I believe it is the the Miami champions. Um, but we'll we'll come to some other games here in just a moment. Um, you can uh, be be assured that we're gonna have crazy action all day here. So let, let's stay on the So game as these other games get going. No need to distract. I don't know what So's going to do here. He's only got a minute. He I doesn't know point. either. If he plays queen g5, the only square his queen can go to, then knight takes d5. Um, It would, would presumably be the answer. 
Yeah. And if his queen keeps moving away, then knight takes f6 check will pro will bail his own queen out. So something tell me there's a there's a way out of this for black. So he settles on taking the bishop. Right. I, I would expect rook takes to keep f3 right. defended and to keep the knight ready for knight to g3. Uh huh. Um, the bishop may be trapped, but you want to hurry up and eat him before he slips away. So let's see that. So if rook takes, black has to take back the queen. No choice. Right. Then pawn takes knight. And I think the move will be bishop d6 instead of be. instead of taking f6. I think Wesley will gain a tempo on the knight, which will prevent white from just focusing in on this bishop. If the knight has to move away, it could give him time for bishop g2. Uh huh. Bishop g2, before and the bishop gets out. Takes. Very nice. Or or even rook g g8 in some positions where you uh, you get aggressive on the g file before that bishop gets trapped. So something Wesley tells me. Wesley's got at least three and a half minutes on that move that we were watching, right? Right. He's got a minute left. And if it pays off, we'll, we'll be talking about just how important that is, and the strong players do it so well, right? They, they know how to sense danger, and they know how to take their time. I always say that strong players manage their time. They don't take their time, and he definitely knew he needed to think there. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Looks and like Justin's he... thinking about this, so maybe there's some real alternative here. Not King D1, presumably. I, I assume King D1. <laughs> Not the move. I mean, so maybe Knight takes is possible. But after rook takes and takes f6, I, I would guess the bishop d6 is still going to be the move to gain a tempo so that I can so I can not get that bishop trap. And again, just to remind everybody of the basic threat is that if, if you give white a move, things like this happen, and this bishop on h1 never gets out. Um, so Wesley has to be aggressive to make sure that bishop on h1 doesn't, uh, doesn't die there. Fabiano Caruana, active over there in the game chat. Um, okay. And he's commenting on a funny suggestion by another member. A member is saying white should just play queen takes e8 check here, and Fabiano responded that queen takes e8 is not a legal move when white's in check. So leave it to a world championship challenger to help explain some basic tactics there. Very awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it is one of the funnest, the the most fun things about the Pro Chess League is you see these top players staying involved and engaged and in their teammates' games. Right? We know Wesley and Fabiano are teammates on things like the Olympiad, but. Other than that, this th teammates. <laughs> right, but this is the only other opportunity for them to be teammates and kind of cheer each other on. So, Fabiano, yeah. shout out in the chat. Oh, I think we just saw a pre-move, Danny. So Wesley, Wesley knows his time situation. Yeah, he's already pre-moved. <laughs> Ooh, he takes f6, knight g3. What's the move? Oh, bishop takes d4. Bishop d4. Okay. Maybe I don't know. Bishop g5. There's there's a few things okay. possible. It just got me so frightened because if if yeah. If knight g3, I guess you're right. So I guess black has more pesky moves with these bishops than I was first realizing. Um, I'm guessing your move bishop g5 is really the problem there. Um, because it seems it like bishop feels. takes d4 will run into rook d3, and there's there's two bishops on pre. But but then bishop e5 is still possible, so maybe you're right. Maybe bishop takes d4 is, is also a move. Yeah. Looks like Wesley has... Has calculated his way out of that mess. Yeah, but looks like I, I was wrong. I was kind of predicting a miniature. So yeah, it did. It did feel like a miniature, and then somehow Justin Tan met him, sort of tactical blow for tactical blow, and yep. stayed in that game. Yep. Well, uh, we're gonna keep our eye on this one. Note that the the other games in the matchup between the bishops. Uh, and the Lions will not be able to take off until uh, all the games are done. So that's how mm -hmm. the format works. It is a team event, right? So this is the fourth game going. But as we said, there are other games that are already underway. Um, yeah, Fabiano in the chat also saying that knight g3, bishop g5 seems to be the key move. Um, yeah. Justin's down to 30 seconds himself now, so he just spent all his time here thinking between, like, knight h5. Right. Rook, rook to b3 might be a move here, so the rook's out of the way of bishop tactics, and you know rook b7 could be a, a move to sort of stay in the end game. And he finds uh, bishop g5 right away. I guess yeah. let's let's just stay right here. There's only 18 seconds, okay. so I think that I think I feel like rook b3 might have been better than d3, but I don't know. It's seconds now. Anybody new to the format, there's a two second increment. That's right. relevant at this point. Super relevant. I mean, unless he doesn't move, then it's not relevant. <laughs> right. Well, he, he never moves again. Knight g3. Look at Wesley just blitzing out okay. these moves. Knows he has enough activity. Oh, that's it. That's now it. he gets now bishop g2. Get near the bishop. Yeah, now and now he gets bishop g2. I think. Yep. Um, there's even a line like bishop g2, knight f4, bishop g3, 
and if takes mm -hmm. black has bishop f1 at the end of the bishop is finally fully free yeah that's not just a, a variation it's a likely variation nope he had something else too Ooh. ah look at these bishops Ooh. oh this something, is where he flags. Something tells me there may be an instructional highlight coming about why the bishops can outplay the knights from international master David Pruis, who will be doing weekly highlight videos for chess.com's, or the Pro Chess League YouTube channel. David uh, will uh, we'll continue to shout out to that. But as a reminder that uh, there's going to be content all season long, but David is, is going to be hosting or, or providing us with weekly highlight videos of the most instructional and kind of exciting moments. So... That was awesome that was right there. That was a fancy little bishop and knight dance at the yeah. end there. They like each took a two-step. And as, and just to show everybody the reason why uh, Tan just resigned after his last move, rook c3, is because, one, he had no time and clearly made that move with <laughs> 0.8 seconds. But, two, the move right. bishop takes e2 is just winning a piece, as now yeah. uh, white just can't deal with that threat. So, so yeah. there you have it. If we're talking scoreboard here, the bishops show why they are so many people's preseason pick to win it all, uh, mm -hmm. wanting to bounce back from last year's disappointing defeat in the final four and and regain their throne as pro chess league champions and they're off to a good start here okay we already had a game quickly drawn by agreement here in that other match we mentioned um interesting this is the uh the matchup between the new york marshals and the montclair sopranos um again uh ignore the little team logos there next to the players usernames everybody we will be working on updating those and our apologies for that but uh these are two players for the marshals a new team in the league this year David, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. You're playing, from, yeah, you're playing from the mechanics, right? One mm -hmm. landmark of uh, global historic chess significance, oh. and and they are playing from the Marshall Chess Club, uh, which is yep. you know on the East Coast, kind of the same thing. So, yeah, pretty cool. Side, same thing. All right, and, and uh, this match is already pretty well underway. Yeah, where do you um, want to where do you want to take us? What games do you think are the most exciting here? Well, I think very quickly we could look at the least exciting and say that Alex Lenderman, the board one for the Marshals, is ahead a safe two pawns against board four Grant Chu. So, um, okay. so we can sort of set that aside and look at some of the other games here. Yeah. I'm trying to get there right now. Okay. Small... Uh... Well, technical difficulty. You've got it on the board. That's all that really matters on the right. live board. So let's ignore the analysis board for now um, okay. and just talk about the live board. So, um, sure. Two exciting two exciting games yep. at the moment would be either um, Firuzja uh, against Kamra Kulov or Carissa Yip against Demchenko. Okay. Um, I would go with uh, Firuzja's game where... Kamra Kulov has just sacked a pawn, but has ample compensation. Okay. Go ahead and uh, take it away here. I'm struggling a little bit here. Um, okay, but you've got the game. I've got uh, the game. I've got the game. I'm okay. just struggling with uh, cool. with some analysis, but go ahead. So it looks like Firuz is just allowing knight d6 check, which could take the pawn on b7, but that's going to allow him to get his rook out from h8 which is his real problem and play rook h8 to b8 at the end of that and get a really good position for black probably so jurabek has to sort of figure out like what's the most he can get out of this position before that rook on h8 comes out and it doesn't look super promising for him actually like i don't know any other move that would put a lot of pressure on firuzja Knight d6, king e7, knight b7, rook b8, and there just doesn't seem to be anything good there. Um, so, what else? Knight e3, king e7, and uh, then the rook comes out and black keeps everything at bay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, something tells me this yeah. position is much more close close to being just really good for black than than first met the eye because now yeah. if white white can't afford to go back and get that pawn on b7 as you highlighted uh because in the end black has this rook b8 skewer of the knight on b7 and the pawn on b2 um mm -hmm. but uh yeah i don't know of another idea i mean because black is going to mm -hmm. play king e7 and get the rook active anyway 
So, yeah, nothing, um, nothing special. So it could come down to playing that line with knight takes b7. Yep. And then after rook b8, you play knight c5 attacking the a pawn. And on rook b2 check, you play rook to d2. And the thought is that black may have to trade rooks because of the a pawn. And then you hunker down, down a pawn in a knight endgame. I mean, it should probably be a loss, but I've practiced those knight endgames against a computer, and I can't win them as white. <laughs> or, I mean, I can't win them as the side with the extra pawn. Yeah, well, I mean, okay. You're not alone. I always you're on, you're not alone in that club, but uh, thanks yeah. for being... Thanks for being yeah. honest about that. Yeah. Yeah, um, but you know, in chess.com drills, you can practice exactly that kind of night endgame. Yeah, um, that's right. And, uh, and they're supposed to be winning. But they're, I, I don't know that I've ever won the them either. Side, win it. <laughs> Reminds me of a show I started doing about a year and a half ago where I was going to go through chess.com's drills and it was this whole thing and thinking, you know, this yeah. would show people a really cool feature. And I didn't stick with yeah. the show mainly because it was just depressing. Like I was consistent, yeah, I was consistently playing winning advantages against the computer, right. and unable, yeah. and unable to, uh, mm. unable to do it. So um, if his idea here is to play rook to d4, attacking the g pawn and trying to be active on b4. Um, yeah, so he does play rook d4, and then on rook to d8, um, he can play rook to b4, and he's still got both pawns attacked. Yeah, that's a nice active defense, I guess. It still feels like Black will have the kind of counterplay he needs. I mean, okay, whether he wins this one or not, Black is playing for two results. I was going to say F5. Yeah. I guess H5 makes a little more sense from the uh, flexibility standpoint. He's not sure exactly yet what he wants to do with the F1. Um, yeah. If White's Rook got into the seventh rank, it also wouldn't like win the pawn on H7, on H7 if F5 had been played. Um, but Black's just solidly up a pawn. H5 is the right move. Then on Rook B4, you're going to play B5. And if A4, you might have attacked it with Knight C6. But worst case, you have Rook to B8. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's check in on Carissa Yip. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. Carissa Yip's game. So her username is magician for MA, magician for Massachusetts. So she's got the team spirit. Yeah. Um, representing her region here, and she's got the IQP representing for active pieces. But uh, Demchenko's trying to stay active himself. He's not just sieging that IQP, he's like throwing weird stuff at her king's head. And uh, Demchenko, 26.75 FIDE. I saw that rating and I thought, huh, I wish this guy were on my team. But let's see. He seems to have the knight pretty well set up on F4. So what would be next? Maybe doubling his rooks on the E file? But... It's not a good square to double them with. If rook e7, he's in line for knight d5 from white at some point. Hmm. Yeah. Nothing simple. White can also play knight e4 in some cases. So what does he want to do with himself? Queen h4, going after h2, then g3. So that's to take H4. more of a positional approach, I guess. Just maybe he's right. not. So he deals with knight e4, mm -hmm. but Carissa saw that coming and had a second plan with her knight as well. Knight to b5, undermining the knight on f4. So if the bishop runs away, black loses the knight. So I think Carissa's found something good here, Danny. I think she's dealt with her, her problem on F4. I'm uh, pulling up that yeah. game as I can here on the analysis board. On the analysis, sure, yeah. Sorry but about... Uh, the knight is attacked twice and defended twice on F4. Yep. So 
the bishop's not allowed to run away. It would also allow knight takes c7, so it would allow all kinds of bad stuff. Um, so the knight on e on f4 has to go somewhere else. It can't go to d5, which would be the sort of classic blockading square. Probably knight e6, d5 isn't good either, so it could go to h5, which is not particularly inspiring. Yeah, but I, I guess I wonder if black has to be... Uh... And it's tactically possibly oh, wow. losing. Bishop to g5, queen f5, knight d6, pawn d6, g4. So she tries knight e6, and now we have to calculate d5, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just immediately looking at d5 must be met with a move like knight e5, so that white is having to deal with yeah. this bishop on c4. Mm -hmm. Only move, looks like, actually. Yep, you're right. But now Yip can sort of take her time and, and kind of re-coordinate, right? I mean, she's dealt with the worst of this kind of overly aggressive approach from Black. The knights have unless, retreated. Unless her queen is still trapped, Danny, after something like d5. Yeah. Knight to e5, bishop b3, knight c5, bishop g5. Well, not her queen. Remember, Demchenko Demchenko's right. the one who's Black, not Yip. So Demchenko's right. queen would be trapped. Sorry. Sorry, I'm thinking unless she's still got his queen trapped. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, and, and I'm thinking that she bishop is definitely five. better here. She goes for the idea of bishop b5, yeah. which... Another tactic. Right. Just which as also good. Looks... Ow. Two so by the hanging. way, despite Carissa's high rating people, she's actually a board four. She's a 2300 plus rated board four. Right. Um, counting, counting as 2200 because of the 100 point um, bonus... I mean, it's a minus, but the minus is a bonus for yeah. uh, female players. That's right. And there's uh, there's yeah. still no other games finished yet, but there have been uh, more games started. For those of you who are ever wondering, hey, I don't agree with the game that Danny and David are covering, and I want to choose my own adventure, uh, you yeah. can do that, actually. Um, yeah. I believe there's a command in the Twitch chat. There are links that you can click that will instantly follow all the players from a specific team, and our, our uh, staff and moder moderators can help you with that. So... Um, the, but this uh, is a board four killing a board one. Yeah, this right? is. This, I was going to say, if you don't agree with us in this game, you may just be wrong because right now Carissa Yip is just, like you said, she's high rated compared to most chess players on the planet, but low rated for the Pro Chess League. And and today she's uh, she may be about to help her team really really I get off to a good start. Ape on Danny, you know me. Yeah, I why didn't she? I think she maybe should have. Yeah. But on the other hand, she's doing a bunch of things well. She played like a simple move quickly, right? Right. She put the bishop in the middle of the board. She's staying ahead on time. She's right. got her little material advantage. Her she idea plays. was that she wanted to kick with f4 and bring her knight off of e1. Right, improve right, her right into this f3 square, and I bet she'll play that move quickly as well. Make room to start playing rook to e8 and stuff like that. So, right. I mean, we can't really criticize such a simple, clean approach. Right. Playing quickly, really No, not it's a great point. And in risk. fact... In many time, in many ways, these fast time controls, your ability to find a quick plan that is solid may be more important than whether you took a, a whole bunch of time and found the most exact plan, because then you might not have time to finish the game, right? We're human beings. We're not computers. So, um, yeah. no, and, and again, for those of you who may be just looking at the board, why is white winning here? White's up the exchange. Just that's it. White has two rooks, yeah. and black has one. So that's yeah. that's going to be enough here for Carissa to win. She didn't really need the a7 pawn. I yeah. just, I'm just, I'm, just, I just like pawns, but yeah. And now you right. definitely wouldn't take it. The knights aren't in good position, so it's pretty easy to show the advantage of the rook. Trading right. one rook is a classic way to try and move the game closer to your victory when you're right. up in exchange, because then black has no piece that can cover files or diagonals. Once you, once you do that, he or she might just play knight g5 to force that trade on right. her turn. You can play knight g5. Sidelined on g6. It introduces she... plans of g4 next after the rook trade. And indeed she does. I'm uh, yeah. trying to keep my eye on, on some of the other games here in case, sure, sure. in case some are getting down to time pressure. Right now it looks like these games That's are kind good. of the furthest along, but we will definitely okay. update you. One game yeah, I'm I want to jump excited to see this. Yeah, I mean, see, I... like a board four possibly beat a board one. That's. <laughs> Well, and, and she's about to do it. Let's jump back Ooh. over to this game with Ferrucci. That was though. a good move too. All right, let's let's jump where you want to jump. And uh, well, I, I jumped back to the game with with Ferrucci because a, a lot has changed if you look at mm -hmm. it from the perspective that uh, White is 
White didn't get much with the Rook and Knight, and somehow that Black King that was on the King side is now all the way over on the Queen side in a very useful position here, uh, guarding the B4 pawn so that eventually maybe this Knight can move. And I think that Black is Black is in good shape here. Uh, mm -hmm. What what to do here if you're Ferrugia? Are you looking to trade already with a move like Knight D4 check and take everybody off the board? Um, are you looking to play a move like Rook A8 and bring the Rook into the A file this way? How, how... I think he's really happy that right now the Knight on C2 is immobilized by Knight D4. So I don't uh -huh. think he's looking to trade the Knights right now. Right. Also, whenever you're in this kind of endgame, you ask yourself, would I win the King and Pawn ending? Would I win the Pure Knight ending? And right. would I win the and the end game that would be the best drawing chance for white would be the, the rook, rook end ending. Game. Yep. So I think black's going to keep the knights with his knight in good position and go for your idea of rook to a8 to a2 probably at some point. Right. That seems strong. The other option would be to play e4 and rook to d3 and just increase the pressure while staying on the d file. Yeah, that's like the barbarian uh, chess approach, right? Just e4, rook d3. In fact, it's very hard to see how how white stops mm -hmm. that. The worry you have is you don't want your own pawns to become a target on f5, h5 if white can right. somehow sneak in a move like knight e3. But as you pointed out, David, if this knight ever moves, yeah. black immediately plays knight d4 check. Yeah. Um, you can also play h4 possibly with rook h8 or h3 or something. Right. Could just continue um, to keep a bind. Well, he goes with this rook yeah. a8 idea, which was the first okay. one we suggested. And I think we're yeah. right because... It's not even that you were really threatening to win on the seventh rank, everyone. It's that there's also this idea of rook a2 and rook b2. And mm -hmm. I don't see how white stops that. If this rook just comes around to hit the b pawn, what do you do? I mean, Fruit is just really playing a classy game here. Yep. He's not playing like a teenager game of chess. He's playing a professional game of chess. Yep. And as we said, at a rapid time control, not like, you know, a six-hour game. Right. Yeah, excellent technique and the kind of technique that – really makes your opponent uh, just frustrated because they didn't, they didn't, you didn't get anything, right? Sometimes you would almost rather lose in an exciting counterplay battle than you would just get squeezed. Uh, where it's sit there for like right. the whole it, game. Never it seems close. Threat, not know why you lost. Right. So there you go. So Ferruja is, uh, let's, let's jump back to Carissa Yip's game because now we do have an exciting moment of some potential time pressure here. Um, uh, yeah. Yip is still in the driver's seat, but with only 30 seconds to 12, I mean, Anything happens in these scenarios where both sides are under mutual time pressure, so she needs to put right. it away. Yeah, there's some counterplay here. F7's falling now, though. Innocent. She can take yeah. F7, and, she and that it. keeps her queen on the king side and weakens the black king. That's kind of a good practical decision, it feels like. The main uh, thing, ooh, rook e7, because she's not worried about yeah. queen c1 because of knight e1 right. or g1. And here comes she this pawn, but, but wait. Commits everything to that. Okay. That's risky. All kinds of stuff can happen. She does have the 30-second advantage. Yep. I give her a lot of props for her time ma management on this one. Yeah, and you highlighted it earlier that she was playing quickly, which from a practical perspective she knew would be relevant, Queen and indeed... Queen is going to be really good here. Just take away the support squares. Yep. Here comes the knight to f4. That's what Demchenko wants, so all, all Carissa needs, though, is probably an accurate move or two and this one should be over. There should be enough material here to, to put it away. And here come her 10 or 20 seconds of extra time to figure this one out. Does she want to go knight f3? Wait, Does she want to hang did... rook? The queen takes d2. Yeah, wasn't queen takes d2 a move? Absolutely was a move. Uh... And then if she took on d5, there was knight f2 winning the queen. I'd looked at that before because um... I thought things could go that way. It looks to us like there may have just been a blunder that neither side missed. But she's still getting herself in trouble anyway. Now all of a sudden Demchenko has yeah. broken through on the king side. Are we going to yeah. have a perpetual check? Could be. Crazy. Don't put your king on the wrong square because then the discovery may be worse than perpetual. King e3, knight d5 check. No, there's queen, queen d5? takes d5. Okay, got it. Yeah. All right, so she's still... The king is running. Oh, no. What? Where, where is he going? Queen to e8 when he goes to g6. He's and, not getting out. And he's out. stuck. And then the he's rook not infiltrates. Getting out. It's over. That's it. Done. Wow. What a way to finish that out. one. Rook d6 he, check. He just wanted to get out. You saw that, right? They yep. both just wanted to get out of there. She was so happy to sack all the pawns and get her king to e4. Wow. And, oh, my goodness. What a way to finish that one there. Yip does take down the board one. Uh, I mean... That's as good Someone as it gets. Rook D2 was a nice move. What's nice about Rook D2? I don't get it. Let's go look back. Maybe you and I missed something about why the Rook wasn't Someone capturable. Said Rook D2, nice move. Like, that was the way to... What? 
If queen takes d2, what was the... Did you and I miss something? I don't think so. I don't so. see anything, man. There's a mate on g2, everybody, so there is no other non-move. And if you take knight f2 check, followed right. by winning a free queen, I don't think that was a nice move. No. That must be sort of Okay, a, so... Sarcastic. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I never know if it's sarcastic or not. I do know that Cash yeah, yeah. Menk... Cash Menk loves well, chess shows. Cash Menk comes... so fast, we could be wrong, but... Jack Cash Mank coming through with a get it girl and a thousand bits to Carissa Yip. So there you go. Uh, it actually goes to the chess channel here. We thank you for your support. But, you know, to her honor. Uh, thank you, Cash Mank, yeah. for all your support of all the chess channels out there. But, okay, wow, that's a huge win there for Carissa. Our that's standings. Huge. That's a board one beating a board four. I mean, board, board four, four, four beating a board one. And that was a victory for the Montclair Sopranos over the New York Marshals there, which is why they have jumped out to an early lead there of two points. So. Uh, and Feruzja is on their team, so like if he wins, yep. um, which you know all all, all indications are that, are that Feruzja should take this one. Certainly not going to lose it, <laughs> right? No, they, they are off to a, a huge start. And speaking of huge starts, we need to go back to at least show the final position quickly that Fabiano Caruana has already beaten his second opponent, Justin Tan, That's and already? he did so. Yeah, he did so in re in redunkybunk style. Okay. Look, look at this. Fast today. Look at this mate. Look at this mate that finishes with rook g3, rook g6, and then sacrifices the queen on e5, David, to deflect the queen from guarding h6. Rook takes Ooh. h6, uh, checks Ooh. your uncle, and uh, and it's mate. So, I like that. Apparently, Fabiano came ready to uh, to help the bishops win the pro chess league this year because he is he is rolling right now. Um, I'm going to let yeah. you choose. I know you got an eye, too. I mean, there's, by the way, to remind everybody, this is the 2019 Pro Chess League. This is opening day. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, and there are dozens of games that are going to be going on throughout the next, really, eight hours on the Chess.com live server. So you can go there right now. Go to Chess.com slash live. Uh, click one of the buttons. Type in any of the commands that seem to be being used in the Twitch chat if you're curious on some information about the league and how to get involved. And uh, let's give our first shout-out of the day to the, just exactly how you can stay involved by following the uh, Pro Chess League Twitch channel. Or you can follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. Those are the avenues that you can uh, you can engage with to make sure that news and alerts come your way. Uh, but make sure you go to twitch.tv right now and, and follow the Pro Chess League because there will be shows, David. We have so many events going on on chess.com. Like our team is, is, is in Wyke and Z right now. The Netherlands getting set to do Tata Steel. Our team will have nice. the official coverage of Gibraltar and some other big events that aren't the Pro Chess League in the, in the, the spring. And so there will be shows this year that are broadcast directly to the Pro Chess League channel. So if you're like, yeah, Danny, we hear that. I don't need to go follow the Twitch channels you tell me to. This time I'm serious. Guys, this time you're, I'm serious. You're telling them they're wrong. I don't want to go Al Gore on this, but I'm serial, okay? Mm -hmm. Go to twitch.tv slash Pro Chess League and follow it because you need – you didn't get the serial reference? <laughs> Come on. You got that. That was – no? Okay. All right. It's a, Al, Gore, Al Gore, when he was trying to be hip and with it, running for president, he used the term, I'm totally serial, to try to be like the kids. Oh, yeah. no. And now it's worse because I had to explain it. No, I'm kidding. All right. But oh, where do you want to go, buddy? No, no, you, no. You... The, more, the more you talk about it, the more awkward it is. It right? is. All right. Well, you choose the adventure, buddy. Are there, are there some games that All are right. getting under time pressure I'm not aware of? Um, um, I, you know, I don't have every single game up here, so I'm not sure. Let me see okay. what's going on. Uh, if I had to pick something, and we got a lot of board fours against board one kind of matchups. Which, by the way, is exciting for all of you to stay with us if you're just getting here, because eventually we will have board one on board one action. Well, let's stick with this Ferrucia game. Wait, something happened here. Ferrucia did did not do his best work here, David. We are suddenly in a situation where no. I, Black is not winning at all anymore. Um, poof. I, I mean, wonder. instead of winning the B3 pawn, he lost the B4 pawn. It's like the opposite of... Yeah, he got out of control with a... Shout-out to Jake Loans, who just threw a ton of gifted subs our way. We really appreciate the support and all the subscribers. By the way, use the emotes that are available to you as the year goes on. We'll have all the emotes of the Pro Chess League team so you can you can wear it proud and bang your chest with uh, whatever team you root for. But thank you, Jake Loans, and thanks to everybody for being here. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is... This is going to be a draw. Well, as you said, Montclair is still kind of in control. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure, they still got three points in the first round. That's a good win. Right, but let's look at what happened there just from an instructional instructional point of view. You and I were talking about the position 
kind of like here. I, I I'm back on move 42, and okay. I think Black is still in control up a healthy pawn. But maybe he just couldn't find a breakthrough. He seems to have fiddled around. And uh, oh no, oh, he, he fell blundered! Oh my gosh, that's what happened. That's the explanation. Here's of here's here's what happened, everybody. We're on our way to Fort oh. Town. Rook b1. Rook takes b4. A brilliant defensive tactic because after yeah. knight takes, we have knight a3 check, which would have been a fork on the king and rook. Uh, it's okay. We're just following the next games. And uh, sorry about that. I didn't get to finish, but there you go. Uh, yeah. Ferugia falls victim to a fork. Does not All take right. home the full point that uh, Montclair wanted. But okay. That's that's what happens when you try and win these end games in drills, Danny. Is like that's something exactly. Just like that. Computers never miss those moves. They're just mean, right? What? Why are we helping computers get smarter? Is that another discussion we can have later? Skynet is real. Anyway. Maybe so. If the computer doesn't turn us off while we're yeah, talking. Yeah, exactly. Um, by the way, shout out to all the premium members in the Chess TV chat. We see you. EO Ghoul, Daper, uh, Steffi94. A lot of you I are there. I suggest we watch Lei Kuang Liem if you want a suggestion. Let's do that. Okay, where are we at with that? Lei Kuang Liem. Uh, what's his One username of the again? I think this might be cool, in addition to Lei Kuang Liem, Liem being cool, is that this is exactly the kind of position that a lot of our viewers probably like lose to White's attack in. And I'm going to guess that Lei Kuang will show us how to how to play this as Black. Well, I'm trying to find the game right now, so I'm uh, okay. I'm not there yet. His name is Liem Le, and White is Yanidze. Okay. And when you're searching down the list of games, you can click to to only look at rapid instead of all types, and that makes it. It looks like easier. I actually already had it up, and I was just missing it. So sometimes I do uh, that. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, no problem. As my producer looks at me and rolls his eyes, right? Um, all right. Well, okay. Uh, Lee, Liam is also a board one for the bishops, yeah. but. Mm -hmm. But also maybe in danger for the windmills. For the windmills. The other sorry, Saint sorry Louis, for the windmills. Louis, yeah, another St. Louis you know team. You're the capital. You know you're the capital of chess when you've got more than one team from the same city. Right, and both of them sporting be... grandmasters north of 2700, who are local. Yeah, um, that used to be New York, right? Yeah. In the U.S. Chess League, there was the Manhattan Applesauce and the New York Knights right. and the something or other. So you, they I, had like for the stuff. bronze. Uh, or Brook Brooklyn. I don't know. Yeah, I blanked out yeah. anyway. No, but okay, but he is a board one for the Webster Windmills, but he also may be someone in danger of not quite getting it done. I mean, here Black can play King G7 to mm -hmm. deal with this threat, but White has some decent drawing chances here because of the opposite code Bishop. Although the more I look at it, the more I'm actually kind of worried about White's position because the potential of the dark squares here being a problem for White, I do think are real. So what's the tactic if Black just takes with the Queen? I think he just missed that. Honestly, I think I think he just straight up blundered the G pawn. Owie. Well, with with seven minutes, that's quite an assumption that Lei Kuang like blundered G five. You double check that kind of stuff. No, no, he G5 didn't blunder it. He didn't. His opponent, his opponent did, right? Right. I'm saying as his opponent, like. Oh right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. You're like, I think Lei Kuang just blundered G five. Right. I'm gonna blitz it out instead of thinking. Right. Well, you know, kids do silly things. Oh wait, he's not a kid. Okay, so that was just bad. Um, what, just what bad. move he maybe could have played for everybody? There was this interesting move h4, which did take advantage of the fact that the bishop can't mm -hmm. move because f7 is falling. Oh, interesting, actually. So, so h4 <laughs> with the threat of g5 was actually right. Was actually a real a real thing. Um, right. Which is why I thought that he should play your move, maybe Danny King g7, and then and, on instead h4, of rook d6. Because then what you want to be able to do is defend f7 with rook to d7 at some right. point. That's how you untangle. Uh, no, I think you're right. And I think there's a right. good chance that we saw some back-to-back -back blunders. Like neither side, uh, meaning Liam maybe made an inaccuracy with rook d6 if this move h4 had been played. But then his yeah. opponent, as you said, makes a huge... Uh, just a, a, And again, we're being critical not because everybody blunders, but when you, when you just don't manage the clock well, as I said, the best players in the world, they manage their time, which is part of having a feel. It's part of recognizing when you're in a critical moment, as Wesley so did in that first game that we were kind of applauding him, him for against Justin Tan. So that's just a, a practical mistake. Um, another practical mistake, we, I do have word that one of the games that ended quickly was Ituri Zaga getting a forfeit win, actually, so from, a, from a practical point of view, meaning someone did not show up. So that does happen in a, in a global online league. Bad. You know, we literally yeah. have had people forfeit games because they got stuck in traffic, so it does happen. But, you right. know, we also have to have rules for a reason, and if you're not online in a certain amount of time, right, time to move on. 
But Danny, don't you think it was a conspiracy because Shimanov was on my fantasy team and Greg didn't want me to win the ten thousand dollars? You know what? There you go. Um, I agree with you. So, let's so, you know, let's start calling Greg world. out for things like that. Um, world. Yeah. Again, a quick reminder about the fantasy. David just mentioned it. Let me remind all of you because we do have a lot more viewers here now than we had to start. That there is a fantasy chess league that runs during the pro chess league season with a ten thousand dollar weekly prize if you can predict a perfect bracket. Not for the entire season. We're not giving you a billion in in one chance to get it to get it right. I mean, there is some chance that somebody is going to get a perfect bracket at some point during the season and if you do, you get $10,000 cash that week. We also award diamond memberships to the best bracket even if you don't get it perfect. So get involved, use the command fantasy if you are in the Twitch chat, if you're in the chess.com TV chat, find one of our articles. You're already on chess.com anyway. I'm sure you can figure it out and learn about the fantasy league. All right. It looks like after that ridiculous blunder of G5, Liam is in control here. Um, and the reason we say that black will get a good attack is exactly because of moves like that. In obstacle bishop positions, we talk a lot about the fact that the first person to get the attack going on the color square of their bishop, it snowballs from there. Often the other bishop feels like a bystander, kind of a, a soulless bishop, right? And not only that, you're struggling to have the proper defense because your your opponent has almost two pieces where you don't have any. And and so this is this is a good point that um, I think Liam will take this one home smoothly. Yeah. Do you want to see some more of Cool Neiman? Hans Cool? Of course I do, although we should mention quickly that Wesley So yeah. did just win by resignation against Shreya. So the board four, um, yeah. the board four for the Lions kind of a tough pairing to start a pro chess league debut david yeah. you get fabiano caruana and wesley so back to back it's not right. ideal but if your goal in life was to play all the top 10 players in the world okay then, uh, then maybe okay yep <laughs> all right well now we're on homeschool neiman as you said he is playing roman edward he came up with a huge win for the bishops in the first game and and is he on pace for doing the same right here white is in a bit of a weird position with this battery on the first rank isn't this nice and weird this is nice and weird just like Hans likes it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fabiano Caruana again involved in the chat, rooting on for his teammates. If you're not on the chess.com live server, you can't see it, so you should go do it. Fabiano engaging with mm -hmm. the fans, saying that Rook B1 looked like a very good move, and he likes Hans' position. Yeah. Well, that's good to know, because I had no idea what the evaluation was here, Danny. Um, and originally I'd planned to ask you, but if, uh, if Caruana can tell us, that works. Yeah, Bobby, if you're listening, you shouldn't be. That's against fair play when you're playing. But if you're listening now, give us some advice. We'll appreciate that. Um, yeah. Okay, Queen G1. I'm assuming mm -hmm. uh, this is one of those positions where I, I get in trouble in bullet all the time, David, because I just give checks like instinctively. Like I'll play Rook B3 check, assuming how can that be bad, right? And then I'll give yeah, another I'll check. And then I give mm -hmm. another check. And before I know it, this yeah. king just walked itself to F5, and I have no more checks. <laughs> like, in, this case, in this case, rook b2 might be better, though. That's the interesting thing. Oh, rook b2, not even a check. Right. Look at that. Yeah. But um, white might go for rook to a8 with a perpetual there. I mean, which is fine for the archbishops, right? I mean, this is, again, their board three against the board one. Yeah, I'm showing that nice tactic by you on the board to show that David's idea mm -hmm. here. Although... Yeah, if the B moves, you just check. You don't ever take it. Yeah, you just play Rook, uh, Queen, E7 check first, and, and White would have a perpetual. So that's a nice defensive trick that certainly Neiman has to has to watch out for. Yeah, I mean, if he's if he's obsessed with winning, then, yeah, he's got to give checks instead of playing that Rook, B2 move. But the Rook, B2 move, there was no defense to G2, so I think White pretty much would have had to bail out. And you, and you make a good point, because maybe he shouldn't be obsessed with winning. Right? He already scalped Movesessi on. He beat board one. Right for uh for the lions in the first game and but okay he's a strong player i think neiman is more than confident that he doesn't have to play for draws against grandmasters he's an international master who's who's a rising yeah. star um yes so now wesley so in the chat saying let's go cool guy also commenting on Hans school <laughs> neiman's username um well it's at least clear who who wesley and fabio are rooting for That's... yep Speaking of which, we already mentioned that Wesley did indeed take his game. So the Bishops, as you can see, are, are currently commanding the lead in this matchup here against the Lions with a 5-2 score. That's uh, got to be the highest rated um, cheerleader duo we've ever, we've ever seen. Yeah, that's a highly – that can we get maybe a Photoshop contest? Whoever can put Wesley So and Fabiano Caruana next to each other <laughs> as cheerleaders, as cheerleaders. <laughs> I want pom-poms. 
You don't have to have skirts. I'm not really into any kind of. You know, there's no requirements in my world as far as how either gender must dress, but they gotta have pom poms because they're cheering. Okay, yeah. so if you can Photoshop a great picture of Wesley So and Fabiano Caruana with pom poms, um, you get a one-year Diamond membership. I just thought of that just now. So there you nice. go. Use the hashtag Pro Chess, of course, to get involved. Um, we just nothing counts if it doesn't have a hashtag on it. It doesn't. It, honestly, from a logistical perspective, we can't really track it well. So you have to use the hashtag so that yeah. we know. Um, all right, twenty-five well, Hans, was a good move by Edward. Right? And, and I mean, look at this. Controlled. Hans may be regretting that he yeah. didn't go for your line because the point, everybody, is if you look at the board, White is threatening Queen B8 checkmate right now, and the yeah. moment Black runs out of checks, you can't stop that idea. Which he will in a second. I mean, it was brave of him not to trade queens and play rook e3 and d4 and try and, like, salvage the, uh... Oh, he oh takes a5. Lord. He's running. He's on Speaking the run. Of brave. This but here guy goes rook h7. Your idea. Rook h7, my yeah. idea, right? Yeah, I love that. Rook h7 is going to come. And everybody, if you're just joining us, we were both... I mean, it was it was slight, but Ooh. there was there was some tone in our voice that we didn't believe Hans made the right decision not to play rook b2 that David suggested would have been a draw. And now, rook h7 is GG. That's that's it. It's over. Yeah. You see how easy it is to find a tactic once you know the pattern, right? Like yep. once we talked about rook b2, rook h7, it took you zero brain cells to find it. And Fabiano gives a frowny face in the uh, the live game chat. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Wesley so saying, man, Black was winning earlier, but uh, yeah. now he's down a rook, and that's a lot of material um, if, you, if you're keeping score at home. Yeah. Okay, so... The first, the first uh, backfiring of Hans Hans uh, Niemann's career in, in the pro wrestling. Yeah, it's it's a good lesson though because it is something that you know when you realize, hey, this is a team game. There's other people relying on you. It's okay sometimes to make those strategic decisions that really put you in a great position as a team. And a draw would have been fine for Niemann. A win against Movsesian and a draw against Edward, I would have taken it. Instead, he loses. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, a lot yeah, of other games. Let's go back to Liam line. Lee's game. Liam Lee's game is about to have an instructive finish, I think, because this is uh, this is some sassiness okay. here. Black is on the attack. Oh, he's also got four extra pawns, right? Yeah. So he could win it instructively or uninstructively, his choice. Kind of. His choice, right? Or we'll call it fancy or unfancily. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is unfancily a word? Yep. Good question. <laughs> Unfancily. Unfancily. Fancily? Fancy schmancy? I don't know. Hmm. A4. Ooh. He just wants another pass pawn. You know what he else wants? He's, play he's playing a variant where you just have to capture the eight pawns instead of the one king. Well, he's got this access point to the A1 square, jokes aside, right? So what he just did there from an instructive point of view is he's made a, a good two-weakness position for everybody at home. He now he's got the ideas of queen h4 check, but also a new threat on A1. So that was a yeah. it was actually, actually a really <laughs> irritating move to deal with, surprisingly. So yeah, A4, yeah. and yeah. it looks like uh, Liam's going to get this one. A super annoying... Rook to A4. All right, so, so many other games going. In fact, uh, the matchup, the only match that hadn't started yet uh, throughout the day that you and I have already been here for about an hour and a half, so if you're just getting here, thank you for watching the Pro Chess League. This is the start, the kickoff of the 2019 season. But uh, a big fan favorite, uh, obviously a team that is well-known online for their, for their streaming activities on Twitch and to the Chess.com community. They did just kick off, and so... Uh, just to let you know that, of course, Grandmaster Eric Hansen trying to lead the way this year for the Chess Bras is currently facing off against Alex Shabalov. And this will probably be an exciting one. And actually, Hansen's board three for them this year. He's uh, he's always uh, hired some good some good help. I mean, that's that's huge. I mean, it, it's been kind of a, uh, you know, no reason to keep it uh, hidden the black eyes over, but the, the chess bras were relegated last year. For those of you who don't know, they actually didn't perform well enough in the 2018 season to even stay in the league. They had to requalify their way back in, which they did. Um, and so Eric, you know, as everyone knows, has been very committed this year to the kind of turning around the fortunes of the chess bra crew. And a big part of that might be that you shouldn't have Eric Hansen playing one 2,800 after another on board one. Right. So as you said, David, he's done some work this year to really uh, revamp the chess bra roster. 
and we'll see if yeah, that pays some, off. Somewhere here they should have Saric playing for them. That's somebody I'm I excited. Have, uh, I have that game find. right now. Atua okay. Shetty is actually playing Yvonne Saric. That username is ASMS9699, uh, taken on taken on Yvonne Saric. So, um, it's, a, it's a random string. But I found it. A random <laughs> string of letters and numbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it may it may make sense in some way because I do see his name. His first letter of his name is A, and his last name is Shetty. So maybe that's some sort of really complicated family surname in there. But all right, we'll give him the benefit okay. of that. I thought it was the password to his email or something. Which, by the way, always try chess.com usernames when you're trying to hack into someone's computer. Just pro tip. Try the username first. You might break into their whole, like, life code. Um, yeah. All right, well, we're che we want I wanted to mention this one mainly because the chess bras are so popular. I don't know that we need to stay here. In fact, a game I already want to go back to, David, is back to Carissa's game over here. This uh, Magician 4 MA is in All another right. crazy one right now. She took down the board one for the New York Marshals, if you're just joining us. Um, yes. And uh, now she's got board two, so out of the frying pan into the fire. The dragon, Danny. Yeah. Dude, good thing we prepared for this. Good yesterday. Good thing we prepared for this yesterday, and I got crushed in the dragon. <laughs> the dragon is. But you won the, but, but you won the second I, one. That's so. right. Okay, I I have this weird thing where I'm only remembering traumas right now. I'm seeing therapist about it, but anyway, <laughs> I do remember the trauma. You destroyed me. Um, yeah. And the dragon is something that if you're currently playing it, you should also seek therapy, as I am currently doing. Uh, you're right. All right, but. Let's talk positionally, because this is good for white in the sense that you've got this knight on e4, which blocks the yeah. pawn on e5, which blocks the bishop on g7, so we've got this sort of old lady that swallowed the fly, one bad thing and another. Yeah. That, that's why white is, is usually... And this is actually a really instructive goal, David, right? Because this is kind of what white wants in these dragons. You've got these long-term positional weaknesses. The c6 and a7 pawn are, are isolated, which is why they're weak. Um, you've got these doubled e pawns. So all white wants is moves like bring the other rook over to e1, maybe play king yeah. b2, and just kind of positionally grind it and make sure black doesn't get an attack. That's why, in theory, white is winning sort of long run here. Right. In practice, black controls the d file. Several pawns have moved in front of the white king, and uh, it's pretty messy. I think bishop f8 would be a big candidate move here. Yep. Given that that bishop's not very good right now. No, you make. I love how you just said that because in theory you're right. In fact, if you gave this to an engine, I'm sure you would see like white's a little better. But as you said, in practical play, the dragon succeeds because when you give someone a position where they have to defend their king for 40 moves, they can't always do it. Um, mm -hmm. I, yeah. Wow. I, it's a weird one. Look how much time Carissa's put into this. She's down 11 minutes in a 15-minute game. Well, speaking of being down on time, let's pop over to the game with Crypto Chess versus Ilya Nizhnik because okay. this one here is about to really get under time pressure as Alexander Katz, known as Crypto Chess to the Chess.com community, is living off the increment and may mm -hmm. unfortunately uh, be living his last day here as well because I think he's about to yeah. be losing in this endgame. You know, Nizhnik just scored like five and a half out of six on board one at the Pan Ams to win the Pan Ams. So you're saying he's not bad. That's what you're saying. Not only is he known to be not bad by the fact that his FIDE rating is in front of us, but he's in good form right now. Right. No, good point. Here he can choose, I think, between king e4, where you might mm -hmm. say, I'll allow things like knight f6 check. I'll allow it just so I can just be fully kind of on the run here with a very active king if the f pawn falls. Uh, we got dirty things going on there. Um, yeah. He might also, you know, this knight on e8, David, is awkwardly away from g6. So you could consider moves like, okay, he goes for king e4. But I was wondering if you could consider h5. Because the point is, if you push the h-pawn, now g6 is weak. But that knight isn't right. in a good spot to get it. So that was another move, maybe. Um, yeah. So he's just going for the f-pawn. That's the plan here. He didn't yeah. want white c-pawn. This is tough. Just going with his strong f pawn here, and that knight did not find anywhere good to go. If it's no. going to knight f6, where it can't move anywhere, and and Katz is doing his last stand, which is to bring the knight to e7 and try to get the c pawn. But here Nizhnik is probably choosing between brute force calculation, like he's about to do, and run the f pawn, or whether he plays knight d8. I think both yeah. are possible, but I'm guessing he'll calculate pushing f3 and that it's winning. Something like f3. Yeah, yep, he does it. I think f3 is the right move yeah. too. And he does it. It's, it's fast enough that White has to play knight g6 instead of knight c6. Yes. And then he knows that once he trades his f pawn for the knight, he's got enough to win this end game. And that knight may not even have the option of trading itself for the f pawn. In fact, 
He doesn't, and Katz just resigns because he, away. he can he can't he even right can't even get himself up. The knight couldn't get to g three, but it could have maybe gotten to e three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, good technique by Nizhnik. Nice. You made a great point that he is on form right now. So, uh, big win there uh, for Nizhnik. And uh, we have other games to cover here. So, where to as I look at the times? Let's check out a couple uh, players we haven't looked at yet. Um, Joshua Grabinski. Really Ivan Saric's game, if you want to look at that okay. for a second. We can do that. I'm uh, going back. A ASMS96 craziness. and. Remember the whole thing now. <laughs> yeah, now I got it memorized. There you go. Um, yeah, so Shetty just penetrated to the seventh rank with Rook C7, attacking his queen, seemingly winning the game. David, I solved and... it. I solved it. It's his initials, yeah. A. Shetty. He's born mm -hmm. September 6th, 1999. How much you want to bet? I just did it in my head. Natalia Shetty. 9699. Master of Science. <laughs> Well, exact. I don't know what I don't know what his middle initials are, but there you go, right? Um, all yeah. right. The uh, the master of science, but that's known totally as like how you make up a password, right? That's I, I know that's what I was saying. I mean, maybe somebody <laughs> should le get legit try to go log in to you know. Let's help this kid's you know make his username a little more secure because. Right. Um. All right. I remember when I first started talking to my wife about adding symbols to her password. Like I'm like, you know, yeah. we're you're getting to, we're getting to the point now. Like cybersecurity is a real thing, honey. You can't just have like the same password that's like your middle name and your birthday. So I just told everybody what it is, <laughs> but she doesn't use that anymore. But I was like, I was like, you can't just like you can't just have that for everything, right? Anyway, right. lol. All right, what's going on here? Rook A to C8 was played, which is kind right. of a queen sack. But to point out everybody. Right. Shetty will not capture because after rook c1, bishop f1, you won't even see bishop d7. You'll see bishop h3. Either. Ouch town. There you go. Right. But the interesting question was why he couldn't play queen d7, right? Because that would have been what he would like to do to re reinforce the rook. Instead, we see other stuff happening. Yeah, he's trading everything, and now he's got to deal with the c file. And notice that Sarge. He has a knight. Yeah, so I was going to say, Sarge has a double attack here on c1 and on h3. Yeah, he's got no time for queen c3, but knight f4, queen c1 check, bishop f1, g5. The knight might have to come to g2 to deal with bishop h3. That's a great point. In fact, that could be a really ugly line there for white, especially if Sarge can come up with something while these pieces are stuck. In fact, you might even see your move bishop h3 anyway, David, just to kind of really tie down things. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is the b7 pawn, so okay, I think I think Sarge has some calculation to do, but... I agree with you, and uh, it certainly gets all his pieces into the right. It, it gives him that space, that activity. He could play b6 at the end. Right. Okay, so this is this is a tough one. It'll be a big game for Sarge, who's currently competing for the chess bras. If we remind everybody, this is the Atlantic Ooh. Division. And We've so, got a very good comment from Chat, Danny. Yep, go for it. Which explains why Knight f4 wasn't played. Um, Rat sec. So the g5 before queen c1 is even stronger when the knight can't go to g2, right? It's Very just, good, yeah. Yeah, g5 would have like been trapped, winning. and yeah. queen c1's coming. Yep. Well, the Atlantic so. Division, as I said there, that's uh, that's what we're covering here. Um, the uh, the next division that will go that will go down after this is the Pacific. You and I will be handing off coverage to Grandmaster Robert Hess and Women's Fide Master Alexandra Botez. You'll be doing commentary for your own San Francisco Mechanics, yeah. um, and the Pacific Division will be nothing short of superstars playing today. I believe Hikaru might even be streaming his own commentary while playing for the Sluggers today. Don't hold me to that if I if I'm wrong, but I know he does plan on 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 streaming some of his own commentary throughout the year. So if somehow you're not following Twitch.tv/gmHikaru yet, you will be. Don't worry, you will be. You will be. Yeah. Um, all right, but all right, David. Good point, and I think that. Uh, the fans might like to see what Eric Hansen's doing right now. If Let's you're do looking it. for another, if Agreed. you're looking for another board, he sacked more pawns than we're going to count. He sacked several pawns, but he got his knight to e6, and he's sort of. And this is attacking. kind of a, a typical English hurt. attack deal. Yeah. Um, meaning. Like this is something that you would do to somebody. If I had my way, right? I, something I maybe yeah. used to do to people when I when I play good chess. The idea is that White is. You know, you're willing to sacrifice this this sort of big pawn chain. If I back up here to move 10 and then move 11, you see the English attack structure, which is what this is. Because it, 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 in these types of English attacks, it's all really about who gets to roam first, which is the uh, the king here. And so white is kind of allowing the center to be undermined and blown apart but precisely because, not even necessarily the exchange, but really 
taking on G7 is kind of what's coming next, right? And just to yeah. give some crazy lines, I mean, okay, well, first of all, I don't even know where that black queen goes, so that's a good point. Okay, he decides right. to go to C6, but... I was looking at a lot of crazy lines here. I mean... Yeah, there is a lot of crazy... I mean, there's takes... I wouldn't want to follow everything in my weird head here. So he takes F8 first, which is okay, but I was going to say, it's really not even about the rook. It's about the fact that this move is coming next. H takes G7. Mm -hmm. That's why you were willing to sacrifice everything, and something tells me Hansen is just about to blow this thing open and, and win quickly here as white. Well, the knight on a4 is hanging too, and it's um it's overall a messy position, so I'm not sure what will happen personally. Well, now there's queen. You're right, and I am probably a little biased over the fact that I've played a lot of positions as white. I get the okay. feeling this feels like this feels like uh, the very first time. No, I'm kidding. It feels like the very first time I've played this uh, attack because I'm so excited. Um, queen to d7. <laughs> queen d7, I think, is the move actually. Queen d7, that looks good. It defends the knight on a4. As well as getting into the seventh rank and attacking everybody. Yeah. And then and then I don't know what I'm doing next. Am I playing knight b6 next? I mean, I as much as I... Black will have to play bishop f8 in response right. to the move. That would be their only real option here. And one of the things I like about knight b6 is that I'm not just hitting the rook. I'm threading bishop c4 check because right. my knight guards it. So yeah. these are, I don't know. It feels like something went wrong here for Shaba, and I know he's no stranger to playing the black side of crazy Sicilians, as you and I know, but something right. something feels like Hansen has got the better of this one. Okay. In my in my uh, in my very whatever used to be good English attack opinion, but now not so good. Right. Okay, some games yeah. that have ended. Let's remind everybody. Uh, Zarov did take down um, Carissa Yip in that in that okay. dragon. So magician for magician for MA after beating board one. For the marshals, uh, she went down in, on the uh, black side of the dragon um, against Azarov. So um, that was one game that's in the books. You can see it's already been updated on the standings there. Um, so a win for the marshals. The uh, oh yeah, that was a great game by Azarov too. Yeah, it really was. I mean, yeah, Sergey Sergey Aza classy. versus Magician Magician Four MA. That was the game there. But okay. Uh, Let's go to some of these games that are getting under time pressure so we don't miss any super exciting moments. Okay. We can we can pick our flavor. What yeah. about Alexander Lenderman's game versus Real sure. Boy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diorabek, uh, Karmrakulov. Karmrakulov. The guy who the guy who saved the Rook and Knight endgame last round against Firuzja. Yeah. And here he's, right. he's not going to be saving. I think he's the one... On the, on the, on, on the, the hunt. Attack. Yeah, that's a nice move, Queen E5. You talked about David, an instructive point that you want to see your opportunity to transition into the next endgame if you know you're winning there, right? You always want to be aware: is the king and pawn ending winning for me? Because if it's not, don't trade queens. But here, as David pointed out in that other game, this is a really good move because White just can't trade on E5. You would instantly be losing the king and pawn ending with such a great mm -hmm. king on H4 and a passed E pawn. And that's how you leverage your advantage, right, David? When you're the one who controls kind of the keys, right? You're the one who controls the trades. Every next endgame is better for you. Very difficult yeah. to play white here when now you're not only not anyone to trade queens, David, but there's threats like queen h2 check. Exactly. Right? It's this actually is... also losing by force. This queen e5 move is a, is a cold win. After queen d3, he has queen h2. and there's Oh, no and then you're just taking h3 next move. You take either on h3 or you play queen g3. Either way, you trade queens with check on the next move and then yep. mop up. So, that's it. Oh, yeah. Great point. And just to show what David's saying here is that after the queen moves, queen h2, if you go to a light square, we take with check. If you go to a dark square, we play queen g3. And because of that, white puts the king on c4, but it's not going to be good enough. And I think Lenderman, right. Lenderman is going to be going down here. Big win, by the way, for the marshals. They need this because, remember, right. they uh, they fell behind against the Sopranos in the first round matchup. Yeah, Lenderman realized the situation, played queen c4 to avoid a queen trade, but surrendered both, you know, pawns on the king side because of that. And A good practical and, decision by Lenderman, though, because at least yeah. now he has those outside perpetual checks chances as long yeah, as the I mean, ladies the are on the board. Yeah, the was to resign, which was, which was what you would do if it weren't a team game, maybe. Right. Yeah, here White just can't deal with the two pawns, likely will not have anything close to perpetual. I think even g5 can be possible here because... Yep. These checks are just going to be one check, and that's it. Um, yeah. But uh, 
Jurabek is is taking his time thinking, do I want moves like Queen D3 check? Do I just want to play G5? I can can pick my flavor. Let's go back to that super exciting game between uh, Hansen and Shaba. I think that's what the fans want, and I think uh, I think it's what we want here. Yeah, they're asking for it, and Eric played Queen D7 like you wanted, but Shaba played a move that we hadn't guessed, uh -huh. which is Rook to D8 instead of Bishop takes F8. Suddenly now, there's back rank problems, and I got some of them. What's going on, huh? But you know what there is? There's Bishop C4 check. Uh -huh. I, I can I can give up this bishop. Sure. And then defend D1. Let's just t show everybody the tactic. The point is, if the queen moves off D7, now Shaba turns the tables and takes on D1. But right. I think Hanson will find Bishop C4 and then probably Queen yeah. E7. And this well, it's going to be King F8 maybe defending E7 in response. Oh, to look at that! That's nuts. Leave everything hanging, but still try and get that rook trade possibly. And you, you know D1. what's a crazy line here, David? Situation. Crazy line, David. After King F8, H takes G7, one. Knight takes, yeah. Rook takes H7, because Rook D7 is made on H8. Uh huh. I like that. You that know what that's I like the then? way. Uh huh. Uh huh. Then I would play we Knight like F5 it. For black, maybe. Knight F5. I don't know. Rook H8, King G7, Rook D8. I'm sure Hanson is calculating this right now. This um, thing is crazy. Yeah, I guess that loses for black. Interesting. Interesting. Could be big here. Everyone knows that the Chess Bros are looking to rebound um, after their uh, 2018 relegation. They are back in the league, and this could be a really great start if if Hansen and Sarge and these guys can kind of set the tone. So, I like, and I'm biased for White to yeah. get a win here because you know I love when the English attack wins. It just feels good. Yeah. It feels like yeah. I'm living through my kids in sports. You know, yep. like you know when you're like old, mm -hmm. retired, and you don't win with the English attack anymore. Anytime somebody else wins yeah. with the English attack, it feels like it's my victory. Yeah. You know, just like that's why I have my kids play a million sports, right? In a way, right. I'm kidding. Anyway, there was, there was a chance that they would win at one of them, and then you. There would, you go. There you go. Well, Bishop C4 was played. I hope we see my line. King of eight, eight. Oh, he's yeah. going for it. Yes, eight. That rook takes it. Yes, do it. We did it. I called it. <laughs> Booyah! The chess bras are yeah. going to strike here. I've looked at knight f5 and queen c4 here, and I think they both lose to rook h8 check. King moves up, and then rook takes d8. Because the bishop on e7 becomes pinned. Oh, he, he and so okay, he takes on right, c4, which means rook. he's probably going to try to give up the. Okay, he goes f7, but here comes your rook d8, and again, yeah. it's over. Yeah. What a nice game by Hanson. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to help the chess Black, prize. I don't know if Black has some way to keep things sort of like slightly going for a little bit. He's got a lot of knights. <laughs> he's got a lot of miners. That's true. But... He does have. He's got. Hey, that's a lot of knights over there. A lot um, of minors against like a couple majors. Queen c7 probably saves the knight on a4, uh -huh. but there are probably multiple moves here. Queen c7, knight b6, maybe also, possibly. Yeah. Queen c7, knight e6. That might make queen c7 not so great. Oh, queen c7, knight e6, I see. Yeah, so I think. Mm. I think Once somebody has like a million like minors, there's like nowhere to go. To well, hide you them. have knight b6 here, and if if queen e2 is played, then you can just take on c6. Okay, Hansen goes queen a7. That's another square for the queen that avoids the fork of knight e6. But uh, was the plan here just to play b3 or something? Yeah, that's a if weird. A4, is that, yeah, why is, is he? he... <laughs> what's the what's the next move that he has? I guess it's just b3. You could be right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Simple enough. And yeah. the reason we're saying that, everybody, is because if the bishop takes on on uh, a4, b3 will win the piece back. And and the funny thing is that you may, you may win more than the piece back because if the queen moves to some random square, you also have bishop c5 coming, and e7 is uh, is being worked over. Yeah. There you go. Okay. I, I think we're going to stay... Here for a moment. I'm watching the clock okay. on some other games. We are getting a number of yeah. finishes. Lenderman did lose that game, as predicted. And probably yeah. the, the other quick result we have to highlight is that Hans Neiman, Hans Kuhl Neiman is being cooled down right now after that big win against Movsesion. He just lost okay. his second game in a row for the Bishops. He actually fell right. here um, to Shrias, which, which is huge because Shrias is the board four for the Lions. So Hans Neiman, oh something tells me that Hans – the upset that he'd gotten, he sort of gave it back. And I was going to say, something tells me Hans was a little bit frustrated that he blew that last game. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, 
Hans can be in a, an emotional player and a very passionate player, which I think is both strength and weakness at times, and that's speaking as somebody who's guilty of it, right? If I'm mm -hmm. reading into this, I think he was riding the high, and then he kind of blew that last game, and emotionally right. maybe he didn't let it go before this one because he just lost to, a, frankly, a much weaker opponent. Hey, Shimanov has showed up, so he could still rescue my fantasy team. Hey, there you go, right? I guess Greg's, Greg's uh, scheme didn't... Yeah, take that, all. Greg. Haha, <laughs> Greg. <laughs> how 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 uh how about chat? How's it going, everybody? Just uh, haven't haven't given you much love and engagement today, but just want to say hi to, to everybody that's here. We love you. Bobby and Wesley are, of course, both back in action. Uh -huh. The Hans name lost, um, and Fabi has sacked an exchange. Yeah, let's go look at Fabiano's game against Movsession. Pretty the interesting. The test of three like seven because. Because yeah. as much as we had the bishops really in control of this one, rightfully so. I mean, Hans won and, and the top boards won. But now look at the scoreboard. The Lions are only down by one. It's five, five to, four. to four. Yeah. yeah. And this now that we're into round three, this is where the big dogs start playing against yeah. each other, right? Yep. This is like world-class matchups um, where you can't afford to play the two knights tango anymore, I would yeah. think. This is where the action is, as they say. You bring your, right? you bring your A game. And uh, this Mosesian Caruana game looks like high class chess. Yeah, this is an exchange sack with positional devastation. This bishop on e5, just so well placed, blockading everything in the center. And here you see, again, we talk about when you, when you say the exchange in chess, it means you're highlighting somebody has a rook for a minor. That's the, the, the chess terminology, if you, if you miss that. And the point is, this is not a position, at least currently, where the rook is dominant, right? The rooks do well on open files, they do well on seventh ranks. So that's why Fabiano is able to get away with this. He's sacked the exchange, and he's got all kinds of dark square pressure. Now, that said, that said, yeah. the rook is better for a reason, right, David? And that we gave it a, a five-point evaluation because at some point you expect the rook will get active, and it will dominate the minor pieces. So yeah. I, this is, this is a, I don't open know. File. If the rook were on an open file. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, it's a ways away from that right now. Yeah, bishop g4. Okay. But it's super hard to evaluate this position, right, Danny? Or is it clear to you? I have no, I know nothing's clear to me. But I no, mean, okay. I, I appreciate you even asking it, honestly. <laughs> but no, <laughs> thank you. God, that's the nicest thing anyone ever said to me, Danny. What do you think? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> all right, no, but I, I, it's not clear to me at all. I kind of am biased toward Fabiano Caruana because he's he's pretty okay. good at chess. For those who didn't get the right. TPS report, okay. But let's go right. back to the Hansen game again because the Hansen game. Okay. This is where the action is. I want right. to I want to go back to the Hansen game. Shabalov. We did have this queen takes bishop b3, queen c3. That's where I thought he would go with the queen. Pawn takes on a4. That's the worst he could have messed up white's pawn structure was letting white take on a4 instead of taking on b3. Yep. Then as expected by me, knight f5 trying to save that bishop that you were planning to target as oh, white. But and that's a good move there by Hansen. Forking e5 Ooh, and c3. Uh, the knight cannot take on d4, everybody, without rook takes e7 coming. The, yeah. the queen will likely have – oh, he goes for it, but now rook takes yeah. e7. He has to. Then he'll play, like, king f6. Okay, but and... uh, oh, it just feels, I don't feels know. so wrong. Then rook takes d4, knight c6. I, it can't work. You can even play rook takes e5 and then queen g7 check. If, if this position is wrong, I don't want to be right, David. This, okay. this is where the action happens for white. Let's take. Let's. Oh, he. So he just settles. I don't think that was right. I think there was something better there for White. Okay. Wow, so I, he did not finish it off yet, right? I don't think he did. I'm not going to be overly critical because I'm going to say that one of the biggest issues Hansen knows, so I can be critical of this openly. All of his fans know this who follow their channel. He tends to overthink his advantages and get himself under time pressure. Just, I mean, really, David, we've seen him do that. We saw him do it at the Speech Chess Championship qualifier, um, really blow some winning positions. And so, I think I saw think something good here, though, Danny, as you're saying that. I mean, what do you find? Rook f4, king e6. Rook f4 was actually mating because, pretty much, because on king e6, he's you have got queen a6, right? It's just and over. on king e8, he's got queen to a8 or b8. Right. So, no, and, so, and I actually like that even if it wasn't there, I'm just saying I think I think the main thing Hansen yeah. needs to do when he's better is play quickly and not allow yeah. those games to slip away. Um, well, maybe that was fair the way he did that. I mean, yeah. he also had four minutes against ten seconds, so he didn't go into anything too weird with the rookie seven and then your yeah. pieces are dang. Yeah. Just... No, and I, I agree. And there you go. Hansen wins. As you can see, the scoreboard has been updated. That little chess bra logo there, that's them taking a three-to-one score over the Pittsburgh Pawn Grabbers. 
after the first that's round a, of play. So that's a strong first round. Yeah, strong first round. Um, okay, so where to go, buddy? Um, let's go back to yeah. Demchenko. At least just just peek at that game. Oh, commentator's curse. The moment I click on it, he wins by resignation over Barbosa. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Demchenko takes that game home for the uh, Marshals, who, again, they've worked their way back against the Sopranos. I think we're going into the next round of play tied 4-4 between Marshals and Sopranos after that win. Wow. Big time. Um, okay. All right. So players Marshals like, are looking pretty tough. Players pretty like Fabiano Caruana are what the fans want, as yeah. well as Wesley and So. I, I want to say this, like, you and I didn't know what the evaluation was in this position. And I saw the chat just full of comments like, Fabi's got him. Right. He's all tied up. It's over. There's nowhere to go right. for Mosesian. I'm like, I don't know if any of us could take over this position and beat Mosesian. I, 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 Let's I go think back that's, to Fabi on a Caruana's game. Um, I think that's kind of like a Caruana-based evaluation of the position because I, I don't know how everybody in the uh, chat no, I, I agree. I mean, I think this we highlighted the instructional point that, you know, the reason Black could get away with the exchange stack is because this rook isn't active yet, because of the dark square bishop control. But I, I agreed with you. The moment yeah. we looked at it, I was like, ah, this does not – we have the Caruana bias, as they call it, but, no, yeah. I agree. This is not a um, – this is not I a mean, clear I think, position at all. I'll say this. I think Caruana could avoid ever losing this if he wants to because the bishop on b1 – is basically trapped if he right. never loses the blockade on e4. I don't right. think there's any way to lose the game for Caruana. Yeah, I agree. But it's a very much blocked position, which means there may not be a way for him to break through and win without letting the white, you know, bishop and rook out, and then he might not have that. Oh, he's offering the pawn trade. Interesting. Super interesting. Although he points out, I think by doing the move queen g3, kind of what you were just saying, just how dominant the knight is over mm -hmm. this bishop on b1, but right? If white if white trades everything and goes rook to e3, he wins the g-pawn, but maybe the number of pawns doesn't count that much. Black plays knight to a4 at the end. Oh, so you're saying take, take e5, e5, rook e3, but then knight a4 comes and b2's falling. Right. Just in theory, white could win that pawn on g3, but it doesn't really fix his problem. Right, and that b-pawn might, be... be might be more problems than he bargained for. Um, yeah, I mean, the B-pawn's blockaded by the bishop. The bishop finds a job by, <laughs> by losing the B2-pawn. That's true, but if the B2-pawn falls, then C3 also falls, right? Moves like knight v1, and, and that's really... Yeah, I mean, white's rook's on the third rank. He could start bringing his king over. Like, I don't yeah. I don't know that any of this is... It's not super clear, and I don't know that, that Fabi is really better here. But yeah. let's check and on the his... Chats, and the chat's all like, white's down a piece. Well, not White's not down a piece anymore. <laughs> We're going. We're going for that line you just called. Look at that move. H five bishop g four though. I do like that. Whoa. That's technique, baby. Look at that. So he didn't want to let that rook get out or something like that. that was, he didn't that want that it to get nice. behind things. That was nice. And there isn't even rook to e three to e two because the bishop guards e two. And he saw all this coming, of course, because you every know. time we commentate together, it's <laughs> like we finish each other's. Every time we comment together, it's like we finish each other's. Yeah. Definitely. Every time we comment together, it's like we finish each other's. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> okay, let's check on Wesley Sells' game. Let's check I on guess Wesley it Sells' work game. Every time, Danny. I love that. That was great. <laughs> uh, let's check on Wes Wesley Sells' game because uh, this is a big one. He's he's playing board two for the London Lions, um, and like Fabiano Caruana, he's got his work cut out for him. Well, that, that was a really nice transition by Fabi. We'll come back to that because um, – Yeah. But I think Wesley So maybe has a tougher road ahead than even Fabiano does here because okay. White has this dominant two F and E pawns with F5 potentially coming, and Wesley might just have to settle on a draw. No, he doesn't. He doesn't play Rook D1, Rook D2. He's going to try to keep fighting for the D file. But I don't know okay. that he's any better here. I mean, just I mean it would be surprising to me if – Black were better here. This position yeah. looks a little bit easier to evaluate, right? As I sort agree. of something pretty solid for white. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, he, tr he trades. Okay, so now, now Edward will have to deal with both the a pawn and threats of check, but even just a four because this is one of those funny positions where I think initially, and this is a good lesson from watching, is you see the the fear of checks and you just get worried. Mm -hmm. But if there's no concrete series of checks that win anything, although as I say that, actually. A4 wouldn't work because of queen d1 check winning the b pawn. 
So mm-hmm. actually, what I is wonder it? if he's thinking e six. E six is a very concrete uh, move here. So maybe to like yeah. go for a draw. Yeah. Um. So maybe White still what, can go you know, for a draw, but but maybe that's why Wesley did this because it's not actually clear that White. Because here, if White doesn't go for a draw, David, are we starting to get in that territory where you could mess it up? Almost, right? This is because because now I suppose it's possible. I mean, the Black Queen is so active. I my first look at this position is that I wouldn't really be scared with either side, right? Unless I were playing against you know Wesley or right. Something. Unless I was playing someone like I don't know Wesley, so I wouldn't be yeah. scared to play this position. <laughs> if I just had this position, I would think like it was probably equal and that I could afford like one or two mistakes and it would still be equal. Right. No? Right. Maybe. I mean, not really bad errors, but you know, like if a three or a four, if one of them is like point one better than the other, I should yeah. be able to get away with it. No, but, but he goes for what you said. I think he recognizes okay. like, Hey, yeah. let's force Wesley's hand because the truth is so now. So would be in danger if he doesn't take E six and kind of allow that opening of a potential p- perpetual, then, you know, yeah. okay, well, one E7 is coming. If and, he lets White play E7, he'll right. be in danger. <laughs> that could be a problem, right? Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, There's no magic get out of that card just because you're 2800-ish, you know? Like, let, let's go back over to the Fava game because we do have a result. It was indeed a draw. Um, so despite uh-huh. that that combination working out. Um, so everybody, there you go. You've seen you've seen your own bias, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> Straight up agreed to a draw while everybody was saying that Mosesian was down a piece and he's going to resign. Yep. Okay. Well, there you go. So let's go back to So's game. Obviously, that's uh, that's the only one I think left currently. They say Sergey is saved now. I mean, theoretically, if Bobby knew how to win that, he would have probably just won it, right? Yeah. <laughs> like... But you don't understand. You don't understand the bias. You know. Anyway, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, all right, well... Um, All right, so agreed to a draw also with Edward. So, so I think that, I mean, the the Lions got to be happy. They're holding up. They're holding up, but they are still down, right? So their top they're still down. one and two held held arguably the best one and two punch that any team in the league can throw at you, car one and so. So they did hold them right. to draws there, so you're right. But now we're going to have the literal board one on board but one matchup. But that is not enough? Even that's not enough for the Lions? Right. I mean, it's frustrating, right? That's, that's... They're board four, who's like super lower rate of one a game. Right. And they held Fabiano and Wesley to draws, and they're down two points. Yep. Okay. Well, All right. That's... Well, we've got we've got these other games going here. <laughs> Where do you want to go? We've got Liam Lee uh, versus uh, Alexander Katz. Right, Lequang Liem. Um, that's that's kind of a boring one. Let's not do that one. But let's go to this game. Let's go back to Carissa Yip's game. Carissa Yip once again in a uh, in a really weird one here. All right. With the She's white pieces. One of our favorites to watch. Now the black pieces. Uh, Magician Four Ma um, is the is the username there. Um, yep. And she is black against real boy. Real boy, by the way. You think he's a real boy, Pinocchio? I mean, you know. Probably. I, he, I guess so. Probably. All right. What's going on here with that knight on A7? Something feels wrong. It's hanging out with the wrong crowd. Yeah. The black crowd. He is. Huh. Uh, he's out of the jungle here, and he may not be able to return. He can play knight B5 so, right now. Knight B5? Yeah. It's like, yeah. I give you one chance to play knight b5. And, and, he, and he does it. He needed to. So, I mean, White's strategy of trying to win the game by taking a pawn on a7 with a knight in the first 10 moves, yep. not normally a good strategy, but so far, he's not even behind in development. He's just up a pawn. How does that make any sense? Yeah, I don't know. Um... But okay, I mean, I guess a pawn's a pawn, right? I mean, and and where's uh, what's Carissa's next next concrete move? Um, what was this opening by the by? Let me just back this thing up and just rock through it real quick. I just want to see. Okay, a C three Sicilian with the D five line. So a lot of theory, uh, and that something tells me because it's theory, one of these one of these players is about to teach the other one a preparation lesson because. If indeed White is able to just steal that pawn and get out as counter, because doesn't doesn't Knight A7 look like an engine line, David? I mean, seriously, it right? Does. I mean, it looks like it something does. somebody prepared at home in the kitchen. 
because otherwise you don't take a seven unless you know it works. Right. And also, if you look at the evidence of White having had 14 minutes on his right. clock no, great when we started watching yeah. this. So the more we look we at it, the more we're who's more prepared here. Yeah. The more we look at it, the more we're convinced that White is surprising Black here with with a little bit more more home cooking than she was ready for because she's down a pawn. And despite the bishop pair, it looks like that knight was able to, to steal it in the night and get out just in time. So, OK, interesting one there. Yeah. Um, all right, still so a million other games. Want to remind everybody again. Um, let's go over to let's let's check out Lenderman's game, by the way, against Alexander Lenderman versus Azarov because this last move. Okay. What in the world is going on here? Something crazy is going on in the center. I guess White is able to take back, but I'm gonna say we haven't given too much love yet to the to the Sopranos uh, versus the uh, the Marshals. So, okay. What do you think here? Well, I think it looks a lot like a uh, like a Catalan, although the computer is labeling it an Imso Indian. So, yeah, I'm just Somehow checking on the Catalan Twitch chat here. No big deal. Just checking in on the Twitch chat. My favorite. Yeah, it's my favorite kind of chat. The Twitch chat. They're all worried. They're all worried that I was being racist, but I was just talking about the black pieces. That's right, and it <laughs> was pretty funny. I'm gonna say something like White's losing later, and then I'll like, be racist. What? And... You're racist again, David. It is funny that yeah. black and white, that more innuendo can happen mm -hmm. there. But let's let's just move on from that, yeah, because right. no. <laughs> but I think that's the most exciting thing that's happened <laughs> yep. in there. All right, so B4 far. has happened here. Uh, B4 has happened here. So that drops the extra pawn on C4, right? I mean, yeah, and at the at the cost pawn. of hopefully getting the D4 pawn, right? So if if Knight C4 getting D4 active, take C3. And then if white really wants to be ahead of pawn, they could play bishop takes c6 here before trading any pawns. Yeah. But that's that's a lot, a that's lot, a lot of white, white squares to give, to give up. up. up on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, that might be too many too many eventual problems, long term weaknesses. And that that's actually instructive for those of you who may be joining in, like, you know, how do you value material over things like square weaknesses and okay, you know, these things as you become a stronger chess player, they become more natural. But certainly one very quick criteria is if you're giving up long-term weaknesses around your king's position and you can't move those pawns back like that's a very very risky decision right those are normally pawns yeah. that aren't worth the weaknesses you're creating so um yeah okay so we'll see how lenderman chooses to deal with this the next yeah. round of the chess bras is underway i believe yeah uh, he could even ignore the whole thing with you know knight into the center knight e4 rook 81 kind of just Ignore everything and play the center. You're talking about the... Uh, yeah. I was just saying about Lenderman's options. But, yep. there, I mean, there's so many things that could happen. So, what do you want to watch now? I was just checking on Hansen's game because he's playing a Wonder Liang okay. this round. Um, yeah, oh yeah. And a Wonder had a great year last year yep. for the Steelers. Um, plus, any American play fans are going to be curious how such yes. a talented young American This is definitely is one to watch this round, everybody. A Wonder Liang versus Eric Hansen. So uh, Eric Hansen's like up a tempo with Black. That's weird. Yeah, the move <laughs> order here was uh, was unique, I guess. And I wonder if I wonder if it's by design. I wonder's playing like it's by design, right? They're both playing super fast. Super um, fast. So something tells me that they've uh, they've been down this road before. Like the new hotness for White is to get into a symmetrical position where you're down a tempo. Yeah. What? Hey, that's 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 what the kids are into, David. That's what it, that's, that's what it's about. That's the computer era. Yep. Um, and indeed, I, I agree with you, though. It does look like black is, has done just fine here. Um, but, okay, I mean, the d5 pawn, it, it, should you parry these sort of tactics and the pressure that the knight and bishop have, the d5 pawn is restrictive and, and maybe maybe gives white some potential positional advantages on the e-file, but it does seem kind of weird. The other mm -hmm. game we should, we should give a quick shout-out to because it's a... Um, a player for the the chess bras who I don't think played as much last season. That is Kempsey, uh, Grandmaster mm -hmm. Robin Van Campen. So he's actually taking on a Tula Shetty uh, this round, and we're getting we're getting some uh, some subscriptions and some gifts, and we appreciate it. Shout out to everybody mm -hmm. who's been here and and throwing bits and all the things you're doing. We love you. Sorry we don't give as many shout outs to that during these big event shows. 
not like every stream, but thank you for your support. We appreciate it. Um, I mean, the thing is, there's probably like 10,000 or 20,000 other people watching with you. Right. And, uh, you know, they want to they hear about the action. Right. Well, the, uh, the Chess Bros took a 3-1 lead into the second round, if you do happen to be just joining us. Uh, follow, kind of led by a huge win by Eric Hansen with the white pieces in the English attack. It was an exciting game. So, so that's uh, that's going to be kind of the matchup that we have the most time to talk about throughout the rest of the day here because it started last. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll yeah. we'll talk about some of these other games that are getting close to finishing. Um, it looks like the next round of the the bishops and the lions hasn't started yet. Okay. But uh, but we have some others that are nearing time pressure. Um, right. I think the that would be like the Webster. Yep. Match. Yeah. Let's go to the let's go to the Liam Lee versus Crypto Chess, the uh Laquang Liam versus Cats, because Black okay. just played this move F six, which I feel like I almost want to take that move back. Can I am I allowed to do a take back here? <laughs> it just feels like like is that really? Did you just play F six? Wow. But I guess the yeah. dark squares are the idea. Mm -hmm. Um we do have mouse slips, by the way, in the Pro Chess League. There are some epic moments throughout the last couple of years if you're tuning into the Pro right. Chess League for the first time. But f6 doesn't look like a mouse slip. No. He, he, I think he plans to meet takes f6 with queen d6 check. Okay. Uh, inner mizzo, kind of. And then when the king moves, you, you can gobble back this f6 pawn. Um, okay. With the queen. But, it, but I, I'm just guessing here. I, it, it's still, right. I mean, it's such a double edged move to play something like f6. Yeah, because pawn takes f6, queen d5, queen e8 check, king to h7. f7 doesn't look. Doesn't Quite look good too enough. great. Um, yeah, unless there's some weird dark square perpetual here, but I doubt it. Queen d6, we play king h1, and queen d1, we have rook e1. I, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I really don't like f6, even though it was clearly planned, or I don't think it was a mouse slip. I I guess if I back up a move and give him some credit, he was playing the worst side of a rook ending against Le Quang Li M, and, it, it, you know, this was a difficult position for black. Um, but yeah, I think he wasn't sure how to fight against White's yeah. D pawn anyway, which yeah. was coming with D six next move. Yep, I agree. No, this this was this was going to be hard to deal with. Okay, so we'll see if Laquang Liam comes up with uh, a fancy schmancy way to finish this one off against the newly exposed Black King. Yeah, I mean, somebody suggests why not E six? That's an option too. Yeah, I guess you can't even take Just the D pawn. Maybe, maybe, yeah, you can't even take the D-pawn because White would have promoted the E-pawn. But... Right. Okay, the simple move is to take here, and now maybe Queen D6 to F6, Danny's suggestion yep. next. Indeed. Queen D6, Queen F6, and then... And okay, I guess I guess uh, he's, he's sort of made it so he's only dealing with one big pawn in the center. That's the D-pawn, right? Um, yeah. Fair enough. King H1. I wonder if he's planning to play Queen takes H4. Yeah, that would be interesting. That's super. The point here is that if Queen takes, Queen takes H4, you win this rook on E2, but at the cost mm -hmm. of the G5 rook falling. And this this right. has got to be a winning queen upon ending here, especially because this white queen is just so instantly well placed, guarding D5, right. guarding the king. So. Oh, Whoa. wow. Uh, what? Uh, I suppose on queen e8 and f7 he's got rook d1 and then rook e1 because of back rank because of back ranks he can trade one pawn but even then can he stop the f pawn? <laughs> I have no idea. Plus, the only thing that's funny I have to say this is that if a move like queen d2 is played in that line and white has to go fix the under promotion and play f8 equals knight with check. Yeah. Right. That could be a funny moment. Our first. We've had so many under promotion tactics where, by the way, again, and I know I have a currently clipped. Uh, clipped and pinned tweet at the top of my Twitter profile what, where I held down control instead of alt. You have If you hold down alt, you will be able to choose your piece in it, even if you have auto queen on. So you don't have to go into your settings. But if you hold down control and do it, it won't work. <laughs> Pro tip. Go check out that <laughs> clip on Twitter. Um, uh, yeah. Do a little stretchy. Nice. A little bit of stretchy here. Nice. All right. So this position's quite interesting. Katz is uh, making it weird. It was one time, Chess Bay. It was one time. 
okay? You don't become the king of something just because you did it once, all right? <laughs> anyway, um, all right, take G7. Takes G7, simple approach. Now rook E1, okay. That'll, that'll probably do her because, you know, H4 is falling, and, and this is a problem. Mm -hmm. What if you played, like, queen d2 or something here? What What's the result? Queen e6, and then... Oh, and that's the result. There it is. Double attack town. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a relevant question, it, if a dumb one. It I, was at no, least but I wonder, if you, I wonder if you set me up. Like, Danny, this is your tactics time. What happens on queen b2? <laughs> <laughs> All no. right, well... Good game there by uh, Laquang Liam. Obviously a big win for the Webster Windmills, who now have a 4-2 lead over the Miami mm -hmm. champion. So, okay. Um, again, we, nice. can, uh, we can choose our adventure here. There are so many, including the last round matchup getting underway here between the Bishops and the, um, excuse me, the London Lions. We see uh, Hans Niemann's game with Justin Tan just starting. Of course, Fabian Akarwana is already underway against Roman Edward as well. Um, with the white pieces I think, here. I think Firuzja may have just won against Demchenko. Firuzja? With, Inspiring maybe. fear? I think he may have, with basically like a puzzle rush. I shall go tactic. to there. I have to find the game. I shall go to there. Uh, Where are you at? Where are you at, Ali? Ali G? I've been calling Firuzja Ali G for a while. I know. I know. You like I guess it. it didn't win. Okay. Ferruja has to find a way to get the e-pawn, but I guess worst-case scenario, he has bishop a5 and, and sacrifice right. for it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Demchenko found a way not to just lose the piece for nothing, so he gets to play on in this rook end game. And Ferruja has failed to convert, I mean, on a on a, an end game that had more winning chances probably than this one does. So, yeah. But who knows, maybe he'll convert on this one, and uh, even though he doesn't have as good a chance as... Yeah. He's got chances. Um. <laughs> you know what? Um, the real boy's knight is back to a7, Danny. Again. We must go to it, there. Magician for it, a <laughs> Carissa Yip. Versus... Yeah, he decided he liked it on a7. Hey. Or he heard us saying that knights, white knights don't belong there, and he thought he would prove us. He thought he's going to prove us wrong. He's going to play b6, and then the bishop's going to come yeah. back to f3, and actually that knight is proving to be... A menacing he's like, beast. He's like, that's such, an such outpost, a, Holmes. Such an interest, I mean, honestly, this is an interesting line. For those of you that play an Alapin Sicilian, and, I mean, there's a lot of you out there that may play a C3 Sicilian, and that's what this is right here, the Alapin, if you look at the analysis board. Again, as a reminder, the Pro Chess League is not your average speed chess blitz event. There's a lot at stake, a lot, of, a lot on the line, big prizes, and we often see real opening theory and preparation. And as we went through this game, if you're just getting here, we were so surprised at first at what happened for White that this knight ended up on a7 that David and I both became convinced this must be preparation, and it looks like it's exactly what it was, and uh, uh, is, uh, Jurebek is, is about to take this home. This is You don't play this type of approach unless you're prepared to do it, and this looks mm -hmm. like... So again, that, it's just an instructive nugget. Like, oh, if I play the Alapin, I, I would look into this line. It looks like something White can do. Yeah. This, um, I mean, an advantage to playing this position is that it's, like, weird. And a lot of people won't know how to play against it. Like right. me, if you play this against me as white, like, yeah. I won't know what's going on. Right. Yeah, no, this Rook, is... Uh... I, I think Rook A1 was a super strong move, but that's kind of guesswork. <laughs> the, I mean, at some point here, you almost look at lines... I wouldn't do this if I was the one in control, because you don't want to create a situation that's unnecessarily double-edged. But even things like bishop takes b7 and then a6, and at some point these two pawns just become monsters. You yeah. have to start calculating line just to show it on the board. Bishop takes, queen takes, a6, the queen moves. I'll just move it somewhere, everybody, just to show that b7's coming. I, I, this could be really dangerous um, mm -hmm. as, as something that black has to constantly watch out for. Yeah. So Yip is... Chris is using a lot of tactics for somebody with one minute on the clock. I mean, first she was stopping bishop f3 because of, like, a bishop g5 tactic. Yeah. Now she's not giving white time for c4 and bishop d5 because of c4, e4 hitting the rook. Yep. All right. Well, here comes some tactics from Jarabek himself. a6 followed by 
B7, I assume. Yep. Threats of like queen to B6 are in the air, followed by, right? Mm, queen B6, that would do it, I think. That would be the end of this. So so B7 is, I think, just immediately threatening queen B6, and I think Yip is, mm -hmm. is going to struggle to figure out what to do here with only a minute on the clock. Probably she'll just play E4 to open up her bishop and have some, some chances. Some hope. It always feels yeah. good to open up your pieces right before Doom, right? Yeah, it lets her play bishop e5 if she needs to to prevent queening. She's got e4, bishop e4. Oh, bishop takes c3, questionable. Bishop h7 check. Ooh, that's a lady. King to f8, and then queen takes c3. Uh -huh. And then if g6, queen h8. <laughs> uh -huh. That's quite the line. That's called a helpmate, but yeah, we'll show it anyway. <laughs> that's black helping white, and she plays e4 anyway, but... Finding aggressive moves right before you're about to lose, first of all, you know like in, in, in bad guy movies where like the bad guy's already down for the count, but at the last second they like, no, right, they like shoot somebody and like, and you got to dive in front slow motion to save your girlfriend, mm -hmm. right? You go, yeah. you've been there, right? You've done yeah. that, so. Yeah, I do that now that, and then. Those last minute aggressive movie, uh, moves are a lot like the bad guy's last shot before they finally go down in the movie. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I think black is done here. There's nothing, okay. nothing to it. All right. Last, last shot that she's thrown. All hey, right, uh, well. B7 pawn's not going anywhere unless white chooses to go to B8 with it, so. Okay, there's so many games to look at. I really want to check into the Eric Hansen game versus a Wonder Liang. Um, okay. Because, uh, there's a pawn on D6, and I don't know oh, how yes. it got there. That's why. Because <laughs> I'm like, what? Uh, pawn's on D6. By the way, the, a couple of games we'll keep our eyes on. We won't go to now, but the game between Lenderman and uh, Sergei Azarov is getting down to the wire. Also, Firusha versus Demchenko. So we may be checking in on those here in a moment. But right now, let's look at this game with Hansen. This game is pretty Liang. funny. Like, yep. Black is pretty secure on E5 and D4, and White's pretty secure on D6 and E7. And it's like they've got these units that are cut off in the other person's camp, but right. pretty well defended. And knight d5 is a good move, everybody, because if the bishop takes it, okay, d7 is already in the air, but I think you would just take back, and now you have to deal with this super uh, super strong d pawn, super precise. Mm -hmm. um, okay, but after bishop takes, are there t tactics with e4? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. My voice gets high when I'm insecure. Um <laughs> The rook could come to c2 as well. Something something feels really weird here for Hansen. That the bishop is... That's like weird. Maybe rook c2 is a good move. Rook c2... Because it gets out of the way of d7. And actually d7, then you can play rook takes bishop and your queen right. covers d8. Right. Rook c2, queen moves, and then like even rook e2. I mean, you could... Yeah, maybe it's maybe do something. Such a weird position with a dominant knight and 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 such like hanging potential tactics, but the d pawn is just a monster. Ooh, queen b five. Mm -hmm. That's a double threat. So Dark. now I was thinking bishop e four if this move. Okay. But then yeah, then I bishop. I have rook c two anyway. By the way, because you can't take it. Oh, you still have it. Yeah. Knight f three. Okay, but we've already seen two moves: queen b five, bishop g two, and bishop f eight. So. Uh, something transitioned awkwardly for Hanson here, because what's going to happen is that bishop's going to be traded, and that d pawn is going to feel like a, a calf who wandered too far from the farm. Um, yeah, I think he wants to play a4 now, and then you know try and get black to play queen d7, then trade bishops and play queen b4. Okay. But even then, there's nothing to do and stuff. But I mean, if you just use your Put your imaginary goggles on here, everybody. Not Google goggles. The, you know, just, mm -hmm. those are dangerous, I hear. But put your imaginary glasses on and see the forest through the trees. And the point is, if you take the bishops off, okay. Oops. Uh, I made a move. Didn't mean to, but no. If you just take the bishops off, okay, and then the d-pawn falls, you have this just dominant knight on d4. And on a dark square, yes, this bishop is active, but... Very, very soon that bishop could become kind of a, a soulless bishop where it has open squares, but it's not attacking anything relevant. So you have to be really careful here if you're Hansen. He does take on f8. Oh, wait, Hansen's black. Oh, I love Hansen's position. Mm -hmm. I just lost the colors here. Hansen, Hansen, I really like yeah. black's approach here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I really, I, what I'm saying is if you see the forest through the trees, the pieces are getting traded, this d pawn is going to be corralled, and, mm -hmm. and I really like black's chances. 
Yeah, okay, so a wonder probably wants to play f4, given that king h1 move. Ah, that, that's counterplay. That's counterplay. Um, let's, but it uh, looks like he might not get it in time, right? Because black's yeah. queen's covering We'll, we'll check back on this, but I want to check on the Lenderman game, Alexander mm -hmm. Lenderman sure. versus Sergei Azarov, because... Um, because one, it's time pressure. This is really dangerous. Yeah. And uh, and two, it looks like Linderman found a way to have a little bit of pressure. The threat here, everybody, is to take on c7 and then mm -hmm. play rook b7 again. Yeah, what? that's a good threat. That's Bl a nice threat. Black can never trade. Okay, black should probably be fine in the end game. You can give up that end. In fact, I think we're going to get that. We'll get a trade. Rook b7, the black rook will give check, king up, and we're going to have past a pawn versus past d pawn, and this should be a draw. Okay. So. I saw another funny draw that was possible with king to f8, and then you trade rooks, play rook b7, rook to e7, rook mm. b8, check, king g7, rook b7. Yeah, I'll show that. Instead of d4, <laughs> king f8, the idea is that David, David's is. idea is you, you guard the seventh rank so that on this move you can just sit tight. So that was another way that black could have held, but... I think uh, Black maybe wants to be the one who's pushing a little bit, even though it should just be a draw. Okay, the yeah. other game that became weird, even though it's a rook ending, this might have some real moments of intrigue, David. Let's go look at the Firuja game. Mm. Carissa Versus... Yip just flagged, by the way. So, I mean, she got some counterplay. She got White's king to walk out to g4, but it didn't come together. Didn't come together. Well, okay, Firuja mm. has been pushing Firuja. this one for a while, but as predicted, mm -hmm. looks like Demchenko will hold. Will hold it. Is there... So one way you would have a chance is if, if you could get your rook on the fourth rank, maybe even rook d4 now. I don't think white black can trade in the king upon ending, and that might allow us some progress. Yeah, Ferruja's going to go for that. And now, okay, rook, rook there means that if rook f4, he's going to play rook f5 and force the rook out another way. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, I think it's still going to be a draw. That's what I think. <laughs> but okay. All right. He's playing, he's playing tickle here, like anybody who plays a lot of blitz and bullet on chess.com should. So he knows that he, it's a draw, but he has he has some chances to kind of to tickle this one here. Okay. Uh, if you're just joining us for whatever reason, quick reminder, this is the uh, 2019 Pro Chess League. Those are the scores right there. Bishop's currently leading the Lions, Marshall's ahead of the, of the Sopranos, and uh, on down the list there. But let me remind everybody real quick of what's up right after this. Grandmaster Robert Hess and Alexander Botez will take the wheel. You are watching week one, uh, really match match one here with me and David. Right after the Atlantic Division is the Pacific Division, uh, starting, as you can see it, at about 525 Pacific time. Um, yeah. The uh, Pacific Division, yeah, there you go. Just look at the stars. Yeah. Um, by the way, Hikaru looks like kind of a bit of a, of a jolly elf in that picture. Can we get a Photoshop? He's got some rosy cheeks. He looks like he's, <laughs> he's getting excited to go to work in Santa's shop, if you know what I'm saying. right? I see that you're, you're sending out your own elves to do your Photoshop work. Yeah, right? I mean, they, they li <laughs> that looks, that's a little bit happier than I'm, than I'm comfortable seeing Hikaru with. Okay. You know, maybe we can give everybody a shot of the studio to remind everybody that angry Hikaru is always watching. That's He's happy. always watching. Angry Hikaru is always watching. He's right there. You can see his eyes. But if eyes. you don't have one this happy, do you? There you go. There's Thank Arn. You. There's Arn Hawaii, our producer from Studio C. Shout out to Arn doing so much hard work behind the scenes here. Shout out to our mods, of course, and everybody with us. So there you go. There's the studio and uh, a lot of top grandmasters lurking in our office. They're always here watching. It just... Honestly, Arn doesn't feel good unless he's got a frowning Magnus Carlsen over his shoulder. It just doesn't feel good. <laughs> So, all right, Farouche is not going to take this one. What else should we go to? Back to Hanson. No. Um, what do you want? What you got? Let's see. There's so many good games. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. at positions. I don't see anything super sassy yet. Uh, I wonder sacked in exchange and avoided losing the D pawn for a moment, but okay. Let's go. Let's go look at that. Let's go. Let's look at a wonder in Hanson's game here. Farouche is going to peter out to a draw. So, Eric Hanson. Uh, up the exchange. I don't think his king will be open enough for it to be an issue. Yeah. 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 Notice how we both just say, yep, there it is. Yep, yep, There's yep. that happy Hikaru elf going down the <laughs> chimney. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, Santa is an elf. You know that, right? By definition, he's an elf. He's an elf? Yeah, I think he's an elf himself. An oh. elf himself, of course. All right. Uh, I wasn't up on the lore. Yeah. All right, Queen of Two. Good move by Hanson. Honestly, jokes aside, Hanson is about to really show that he, he's going to lead the way himself for the chess bras to come back to pro chess league glory this year. Because I think if he gets the second win in a row, yeah, he, he just played two of the best players for the pawn grabbers, and he's on a roll yeah. now. St. Louis yeah, just got a win. If, we should go back and if show. He two GMs from board three, then you have to imagine his team is winning. Let's just give a shout out. We're not going to look at the game, but Frolic six seven, known as Nicholas Rosenthal, just took a victory uh, with the uh, with the white pieces for St. Louis. That means they are a half a point away from clinching the match against the Lions. Eight and a half gets you a match victory. So Frolic six seven, six seven, Nicholas Rosenthal just won. Um, so shout okay. out to to him there. So he scored. So he scored two points today from board four. There you go. That's what he does, right? Right. All right. Let's go. I mean, to, let's just. Let's what go are you to supposed Robin to do? Van... What are you supposed to do? Exactly. Let's go to Robin Van Campen's game. Kemsky Kemsky versus ASMS SSMS. Mm -hmm. Because this game, this game is about to have a flagging a flagging moment, and you know I love those. Somebody's going to lose on time here, and it might be a tool of Shetty. Um, Maybe. Shetty does have a bishop pair. You like those too. I do, though. You're right. Well, so not now for long, I guess. Not for long. <laughs> yeah, uh, one of these bishops is coming off the board here pretty quickly, right. especially when this. Oh no. Oh okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No. <laughs> he insisted. Okay, but Shetty right. has some outside counterplay here, despite the time pressure, because this knight is temporarily under a bit of heat. If the knight moves to a square like d3 to guard the rook, there may be things like rook g4 check, and then bishop g2, and then. I assume there's something delicious here. You know, he had to do that whole thing, Danny, because there was a back rank made on E1, so he had no way to take on G5. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, this was... So Shetty actually has some real yeah, counterplay he here. About it for a while. And knight E5, awkward as it is, was presumably the only way that he could yeah. defend his back rank. Well, this is an exciting moment for the pawn grabbers, right? They already got one game back in that 3-1 score they took into the second round of play. If Shetty can, can hold his own here against Kempsey... Mm -hmm. Then the pawn grabbers are not out of out of it against the chess bras here, right? Okay, but looks like looks like Van Campen has just sort of solidified. I think he'll quickly. Okay, knight g4 also does it to guard the h pawn and forces the well, rook trade. Knight g4 is like a tactic that seems to win the game. Uh, forces the rooks yeah. off. So yeah, I guess if yeah. we're I guess we're assuming the knight end game is. Uh, oh, I guess he have one rook on, but yeah, yeah. I mean. That was still a very nice move. Yep. I want to remind everybody they can get involved in social media. If you didn't know, social media is a thing. Um, yeah. We've got, uh, we've got a tweet there from International Master Eric Rosen. It says, throwback to November when Shreyas Royal, the kid playing uh, playing today, right now as we speak, made made the move there uh, for Fabiano Carvana and Magnus Carlsen there in Game 7. So... Pretty cool stuff. Use the hashtag ProChess. You can tweet at ProChessLeague to get involved. And uh, Eric Rosen coming coming in clutch with some awesome photos, as he always does. So, um, All right. Looks like Kem C figured this one out, David. He's about to play 95 check. Yeah. Yeah, he does so. And, and the C pawn is Charlie's He's coming home. He's way through this nicely. Yeah. Uh, how many times will he force that poor rook to A8? Poor guy. You know. All right. When's it time for the C pawn, Danny? Now. When's it time for now. the C pawn? Charlie, I keep thinking it, too. Charlie's Every time home. he moves, I'm like, now it's time for the C pawn. Now it's time for the C pawn. Charlie's coming home. It's not Penny's boat. There we go. Just push push him. Push him, baby. I, I, think, I think he's waiting really too long, way. honestly. I think pushing the C pawn <laughs> is just... That's all you need, but okay. He's got that other C ideas. He wants to be fashionable for this party, right? Yeah, I mean, he, he just he wants the knight to come to e6 and and maybe do other other dirty things. Uh huh. Knight e6, rook f4, or c5, like we've been waiting for this whole time. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's like c5 seems he's so He's gonna easy. go for this. Wait a second. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's good enough. Knight e6 guards yeah, the knight f4 check. Rook f4, so yeah. there's that. So he'll win the g7 pawn and uh, and be happy. I, I still think that this is unnecessary. <laughs> given that uh, the C, P C pawn is ready to be pushed. Like, okay. I'm going to show you can win with the F pawn instead of the C pawn. I don't okay. need to push. Let, let's bounce back to Firuja's game, because even though not much has changed on the board, 
they're under incredible time pressure here in the Ferrugia game. And if anything's mm -hmm. going to happen, it's right now where Demchenko doesn't have right. enough time to think about the proper defense. Winning chances are pretty comparable here since it's most yep. likely to just be a flag. Right. Okay. But again, this is what Ferrugia does. Got a couple seconds extra here. A couple seconds. Now he's facing with a critical decision. Here comes Rook F6. Yep. And if the Rook comes out, the King is st still going to work its way in. Rook F4 now. Uh -huh. <laughs> King G7. Oh, a 50 move rule draw. That's, <laughs> that's how you know you played too long for the dirty flag, right? If it's time to take a look in the mirror, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? If it's time to take a look in the mirror and say, you know... That was unnecessary. That this is one of those moments. Okay. Or fifty moves is where you can tell your coach, like, hey, hey, I did everything. I, I literally I could. did everything I could. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. It it ends with a fifty move draw. Um, I left nothing on the field. I left, I left everything it. on the field, coach. Okay. Back to Hanson. Back to Hanson yeah, back and to Hansen. Liang because Hanson right. is he moments still away has from victory. To collect that D seven pawn, but things are still looking good for him. Yeah, and, and with uh, Liang also. Down on time, it'll be it'll be no wonder if a wonder loses on time here, huh? Uh, uh, huh? <laughs> Dad puns to the rescue. Yeah, um, I that one made my producer over there shake his head. Like Danny, not even for you, not even for you. It's just yeah. I was gonna ask just, you like this. Yeah. Does, does that kind of a pun usually get you? He puts up with it all day. <laughs> it, it's no wonder that a wonder might lose this game. It'll be no one, no small wonder either. Um, right. Okay. Okay. H five. Good stuff. Good stuff. Moving forward. Hanson. Hanson's gonna. You know, but seriously, jokes aside, Hanson, where he where he wasn't coming through last year. You chess bra fans, right? Yeah. Chess bra fans, you're getting what you asked for. There you go. Get them out. Get those emotes out. There you go. Get them out. Yeah. I, I want to see how many chess bra fans we have in the chat. Time. Here they come. Here come the chess bra fans. Look at Hess hanging out in the chat. Yeah. How many chess bra fans are there? They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Just on a small delay. There you go. Yeah. Queen f5. That's what I thought. And then basically, I don't it's see over. how white, how how black doesn't win this game. Like, not yeah. really sure. No, it's over. How Four seconds. Could win. King f6. King f6, and then rook to d1. If, if, if h6, rook. Uh, I'm assuming that h pawn. Yeah. And if h6, rook d2. Even double mm -hmm. threat of rook h2. Yeah, should be enough. There they are. There's those chess bra fans. They're here. <laughs> they uh, are. There they are. <laughs> King G5. <laughs> King G5. All right. So that's going to give the chess bras a 6-2 to two lead as they head into the third round of play because eight games, if I do my math correctly, is uh, is exactly two full rounds in the books. And that's a pretty big lead, right? Hard to overcome four games in a couple rounds. It's possible, but hard. Um, I would say, yeah, it's like mathematically possible, but I don't know if we've ever had that big a comeback. Fabiano Caruana is moments away from clinching the match for St. Louis. Let's go check into that one because he is he is Let's doing work do here against uh, Romain Edouard. He's uh, better yeah. as black and up a ton on time. I thought oh, sorry, better was as white. white. Sorry, I, yeah. I meant better as white and up on time. Cool, 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 cool. And this time he's like better, better, not just like, He's Fabiano better? I think so. Although, okay. I haven't done my Fabiano math. And you know, mm -hmm. if you forget to carry the three in Fabiano math and divide, then you can, you know, before you know it, right? So so there, he's going to move the bishop and then maybe let black queen a pawn and then play h4 mate as soon as black makes a queen. Look at h4. Look at h4 if that happens. I'm going to I'm gonna get really excited if that happens. Yeah. Like, if e3 check, king d3, e2, and he doesn't mate because he wants to mate after black queens. That would also like, be... Oh, but then you got to deal with the underpromotion of a knight. Be careful. Always watch yeah. out for underpromotion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how, king how, do you, how do you stop h4, by the way? Like, legit. Yeah. No, I would love to see king d3, e2, king d4. Like, now you can't underpromote for a check. <laughs> I think Edouard just like walked his king into an unstoppable mini. So we're about to see St. Louis win their first match of the season. Let's not go anywhere because it may end up being the match that first starts their road to another championship campaign. And uh, St. Louis, we know, is very strong and, and Fabiano is very good. Um, mm -hmm. H4 is coming. It's on the board. It's on yeah. the board. Fabiano was a chess bra for one year. 
He was, actually. It was a weird time for him. He was confused. It was adolescence, right? Mm -hmm. A lot going on. Your body's changing, right? <laughs> so that's, so it was a weird time for Fabiano to be a chess broad, like most of us. Most of us grow out of that stage. Eric and Amon right. will be there forever, apparently. Forever. But uh, there you go. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> there so there's the first, first of all, why, why, the couldn't, why couldn't yeah. Edward play it out? Why couldn't he play it out? Oh, I wanted it. Yeah. I wanted it bad. Yeah. All right. You gotta send. You gotta send an, a second contract out all, to all the players, Danny, saying like, if you're about to be made it in one move, you must play it out. You yeah. must play it out. So I could probably get him to sign a contract like that. All right, Grandmaster Just Wesley. Just make the so, contract long enough, and they'll sign it. So we're, no, we're not going to stay much longer on St. Louis's games because they've already yeah. won the match. But we will finish with Grandmaster Wesley so because he's about to do dirty things on the H file, and I don't want to be away when it happens. I want to be there, Dirty Harry, ninety five. He's going to e7. He's going to clear. He's going to clear the dark squares, busting through. Wow, Wesley's got quite the attack here. Um, St. Louis is flexing here in the end. Yeah, they no, had is... they had one or two little rough spots there. But it's kind Constant of the game plan: hold our own until Wesley So and Fabiano Caruana can just crush every other GM. You yeah. Know? Hans Neiman wanted to go like sixteen and zero. You could feel yeah, that in that second. You could feel it, right? He got. He, he was got like, cool. I'm better than your GMs. Check this Han, out. Hans Cool Neiman got cooled off. Yeah. yeah, they had to cool it down, and then they still won by a lot. He didn't like that one. Cooled off. That was for you, buddy. Are you just trying to make him I'm cry? Sorry, Darren. Laugh. Yeah, sorry. Uh, okay. That's what I do. Um, all right. Well, where else to go? There's all kinds of other games going. We don't have to stay with Wesley. I just, I thought, I thought it was about to be over. Honestly, when I looked at the board, I was like, right. uh, I mean, it won't take too long. It's two minutes left for him. Two minutes for him. Mobsession is moves away from from mate. Maybe, maybe. The Marshals yeah. have made a – remember how the Sopranos started off with such a great uh, – I mean, you, they came out of the gates flying. Carissa Yip beat Demchenko, board yeah. four over board one. Right. After taking a 4-2 lead into the second uh, set of games – or sorry, I think it was a yeah. – that would be too many games. Now, at one point, the Sopranos, I believe, had a 4-2 lead. And what is happening to them? Yeah, the Marshals have come all the way back. So what we're going to check on those games here in a second. I mean, one thing I noticed is that Grant Chu has like one point for the Marshals already, which means he hasn't played Carissa because they play in the last round. That means he upset a GM. So right. that's that's a big point for them, for sure. Okay. And then you see their third board, who we've been watching but several times. 97 so. is what I wanted. Because the whole point, everybody, the reason I got excited, if you're just joining us a few moments ago when that night first popped there, because if the bishop mm -hmm. takes, you don't take back baby bird. Let me feed you, baby bird. You take h6. Take h6. That's how it happens. Okay, that's that's where the magic happens. And that's why black has to take with the rook. So that was mm -hmm. the whole idea. Now he can just blow things open. The bishop comes into f6. This is this is good stuff from Wesley here. Always the bishop. It's always the bishop that gets you. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff from Wesley today. So who played better of the top two boards from St. Louis? That's like their own internal competition. I mean, Neither went 4-0. They both gave a draw to the board to the board two, board one respective combination for the London yeah. Lions. So <clears throat> Yeah, but I mean seriously, London has a good team. I expect them to be there toward the end. They really ran up against the you know, one of the toughest matchups they'll have all year in the Atlantic. We'll see right. if they can bounce back. But they've done work this year. Um, we know that uh, Sabina Chavanez does a does a great job there as the manager of the London Lions, and she has attracted some new free agents this year. So I don't believe Mosesion played for the Lions last year, if I'm correct. So I don't remember. Yeah, me neither. But I did say it. So, so there you go. I can't correct you. Right. But if you just said it, I could just say and, you're wrong without knowing there you either. Go. And also good, right? A lot of people do that. <laughs> so we'll, all right. We'll let Decide who was right in a poll. I, I think I think what we're gonna stay here because now that Wesley's gotten himself under a minute and hasn't really made this advantage much better, I'm gonna stay mm -hmm. here just in case we're proven wrong and and Mofsesion makes a game of this thing. I am keeping yeah. an eye on some of the other matchups again. The uh, the Marshals, the Marshals and the uh, and the Sopranos will be where this one's at in a few moments. That's where we're really gonna be focused right. because. Demchenko's taken on Lenderman. 
Um, yeah. Uh, Nizhnik throwing down Ferugia, taking on Azarov. So, uh, so yeah, that'll be yeah. good stuff. That'll be good. Um, yeah, you know, honestly, it's just not that clear how Wesley's going to win this game. Yeah, the more we look at it, right? Yeah, and if he doesn't win it, then then Fabiano played better to answer your question, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go, right? Which <laughs> so of whoever, which of the two best players aren't they both former MVPs too? Because if I'm remembering correctly, when when the St. Louis Archbishops actually won the Pro Wrestling Championship that year. Yeah, over Magnus Carlsen's gnomes in the mm -hmm. finals. They mm -hmm. uh I believe Wesley so yeah. was the overall season MVP. So I think you're right. Even though Carlson beat him individually, Wesley had right. played like every right. single match and scored every single point. Right. Yeah, so, so um Yeah, so that means we're correct to say that actually. That means you have two MVPs playing for right. St. Louis, two former league MVPs, so Okay, well, right now, well, Wesley now has found his way on the F-File. Mm -hmm. he, fa he found now himself. He, he did what he needed to, and now it looks pretty clear. And it looks like the final score is going to end up being 11-11. Uh, to five. I don't know why it took me mm -hmm. so long to finish that sentence, but I was waiting for you to finish my sandwich. You know? <laughs> Sorry. All right. So, uh, that's... Uh, Wesley's Wesley's going to take this one. Congratulations to the Archbishops for starting the season right. The London Lions, we know you will bounce back next week. But we're going to move on to the matchup that's still really unclear. Um, let's start with Lenderman Demchenko. This is the battle of the board ones. Or sorry, the board twos, I believe. Demchenko is definitely board one. He is. Right. Wait, so they're not on their last round yet. Okay, my bad. No, they are on their last round. They're in their last round? Because isn't Ferrugia? I think Farouche is board one. Okay. Uh, um, Lenderman's board one. And Farouche. Uh, yeah, I think I think Azarov is board one this week for um, the Sopranos, and Farouche is board one for the Marshals. What I see is Demchenko, Azarov, Jurabek, and Lenderman, Farouche, Barbosa. Ah, so Farouche is board two. That's why I'm wrong. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay, I didn't know. That. I just yeah. assumed that there was no way Perugia was not a board one. But okay. Yeah. His rating's gone up. The board orders, this will be a point of interest or confusion for everybody, is yep. that the board orders are based on your September rating. And Ferruzja was lower rated in September than he is now. Right. Um, so, and uh, Demchenko just took on H7 check. Yeah, I need to find that board there again. I, I got lost. The queen almost. trade there the we queen go. trade did not keep him from playing the Bishop H7 sack. You gotta love that. We're gonna take on F7 with Gusto. May Gusta Peshka. And then can he play C4 at the end and just completely finish the game? Like, is there any way out of that? Yeah, let's look at that. In fact, that may force King F8 precisely like, because yeah. of your, your combination. If David's point is that if takes and we have a fork, if any random move is made here with the rooks, we're gonna see a trade in C4, and that's a pin emote. Pin emote. Use your pin emotes if you're a subscriber to the chess channel on that. Okay, King F8 was played to avoid the pin that's emote. That's correct. But that means you just stole that pawn, and you can get out of get a dodge, right? Yeah. Take the money and run. Well, if you're Lenderman, that's good. Drop the pawn and keep playing. Yeah. Don't don't just lose the game on the spot. No, I mean, it's a great point. I mean, we're we're joking slightly, but you're right. I mean, from a practical perspective, acknowledging your mistakes is sometimes the most important thing you can do, right? Just don't yeah. spend too much time. Don't make things worse. Just quickly move on. Right. Don't agonize over it. Get right. your piece onto a good square and just, just because, keep going. We've because seen, Lenderman's position that. still has decent drawing chances here. Totally. Yeah, we've seen these kind of positions draw Right. Um, for the player down a pawn. That said, with the Sopranos down two points in the last round, they need three points out of four. Uh, that means that they're going to need more than some draws. Okay, well, I'm being proven wrong that we left the Wesley So. Let's go back to the So game just real quick because he only has five seconds. Yeah. Wesley So with the white pieces still has not gotten it done, still should Looking be. Looking like a mess. But this has become a total mess. Looking like a mess. So if Movsesion holds with black, then 
Fabiano Caruana wins the the in the in team battle. Mm -hmm. Um but looks like so has sort of figured this one out. Black eventually takes F7. Mm -hmm. What's the theory on this? Well, that's that's what that's what we're all wondering. Hop in the DeLorean. Shout out to Chess Bay. Thanks for the gifted sub there. Welcome, Hop in the DeLorean. Thanks for being here. I think um, this should be a holdable position for Black. Yeah. Okay. And seems tough to win. Yeah. One of the biggest reasons is that sometimes when you have a king and rook versus a king and bishop kind of endgame, everyone, there's the threat that you might take the bishop and transition into a king and pawn ending is something that makes it really hard for your opponent to defend. And this kind of endgame where white has the corner pawn, there was never, there's never going to be a threat to transition, which makes black's good here. Yeah, makes black's job just very easy. And and indeed, we see Wesley just throw in the towel, says, you know what, I'll give Fabiano Caruana the day on this one. And uh, St. Louis wins by a final score of a, of ten and a half to five and a half points. So, yeah. All right. Um, so many games to look mm -hmm. at. I'm going to scroll through all the boards. The little preview position I have here on the Chess.com live server. If you see one you want, you just yell at me. Sure, I'll um, let you know. I'm clicking around as well. Lots of interesting stuff. Eric Hansen, having made his way through two GMs as as a lower yeah. board this year for the chess bra, now gets himself um, against ASMS MS 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 nine six nine nine. So, oh, I actually yeah. said the numbers right though nine six nine nine. Um, so now <laughs> now Hansen finds himself favored in these matchups. So, you know, look for look for a big day from the fearless leader of the chess bras here. Um, yeah, let's see how the real boy is looking. Interesting. Real boy? Let's go to the real boy's check game. Check out the real boy for a second. He's playing against Barzid. Yeah, let's Oliver do that. Bosa. The real boy currently playing against uh, Jurabek in a position that almost looks composed. Mm -hmm. Lots of closed pawns. Right. Maybe a knight coming into f5. Not sure. Like the answer is going to be something like sack your queen for a knight and then the board is locked and it's a positional draw. Um, yeah, b3 was definitely the right way for white to play the queen side because the queen side was not looking good for white. So now the last side of the board that anyone cares about is going to be the king side. If black ever plays g6, then queen e3 could be annoying. Yeah. So... No, yeah, I, seems... I don't know what to do here. I mean, I, I kind of just want to, like, put my knight back on g8, if not for knight mm -hmm. f5. Right. But but eventually, white can always play g5, knight g8, knight f5. So it feels like that's inevitable. Ooh. There's g5. a shot. g5, right. going to force a transition here. Right. White probably wants to on passant just because... Not doing so is going to allow a completely a deadlock. Yeah, just offer the draw now. Otherwise, it's a draw. So, so on Passant. H takes, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Nope, F takes, using yeah, the F file. Okay. Yeah, it gives White the H file. It gives him the F file. Yeah, I wanted H takes because I guess my instincts were to be worried about a vulnerable pony here. But it's mm -hmm. not a bad idea, actually, taking with the F pawn because really... F2 is uh, that's a that's a sore spot for White. Doesn't want to talk about it. We'll just yeah. sweep that one under the I rug. I think I think there's also a problem with HG, which is the knight on H6 kind of lacks a square. Uh -huh. And if it ever goes to G8, then you probably are like losing control of the H file. Right, right. Good point. Okay. Oh. So F takes made a lot of sense there. Okay, this is going to be tricky. It's kind of I mean, it's it's a little boring, but I think this one. I mean, we're not sitting here screaming about fireworks, everyone. But this this right. could be. This could be really critical here. And again, of all the matches remaining right now, I think we should focus on the Sopranos versus the Marshalls because it's kind of the, the main one in striking distance and the one closest to finishing. Right. Um, That's what I had been thinking. Okay. So this is, we'll keep our eye on this one. We, we started with uh, Linderman and Demchenko. 
Uh, right. What's what's what? the what is that? There was a a queen trap in the other one I've been watching. Which game? So Carissa Yip versus Grant Shu. Just look what happened. I mean, it was so bad. I wondered if it was a mouse slip, but uh, somebody. It's the ma magician for MA against yeah, yeah. GXU. Yep. Um. Yeah, white shows up a queen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what happened? Yeah. Let's back this thing so, up. Check it out. Yeah. Bishop c6 takes and takes, and after knight takes f7, knight e2, the queen went to e4, queen c3, yeah. queen a4, knight e to d4. Looks okay. Like, black should have been okay, but just... Positional stuff, right? And then... And then he takes a2. Queen a2. I mean, the queen had options here. Queen a3. Yeah. Yeah, she had all kinds of options. Queen a6 and queen a3. She had two of them. <laughs> well, remember, she's white. She's actually up a queen. So there yeah. you go. No, I mean the black queen. She. The, oh, she, yeah, the she. She, yeah. Options. The lady on a4 had plenty of options. The lady You're right, had two but... options other than a2. And uh, that's a blunder a2. that... That's, That's a blunder that has you hang in your head with your teammates later, which is really unfortunate in a team chess battle. Yeah. We talk about the, the really fun aspects of it, but also one of the really difficult parts of it is if you don't have your best chess, you really, you know, you're not just letting yourself down. Yeah, um, so if we chalk this one up in advance, which we can, I mean, queen d6 check just missed. Yeah, I mean, no, don't go anywhere, everybody, because this is, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Yip's gonna win this game, which is gonna pull the yeah. Sopranos to within one. So within one point, basically. Yeah. Right? So yeah. this this could end up being our, our our closest match here down the stretch because I'll go ahead and call it without worry about jinxing. I mean, at this point, any move by her queen queen c5 looks like it does the trick. There's all kinds of threats of discoveries. In fact, you can even do it now. It's double check with knight f5 or knight c8. Knight f5. And yeah, then she does it. Knight f8. Uh, sorry, king f7, queen e7. The king moves and it's over. So. Indeed, Shu resigned. So look at that. Carissa well Yip, done. board four on board four action. She comes through in the clutch. That pulls okay, the Sopranos so to within one. one point. And now we need to check out Firuzja, right? We yeah, haven't... let's do that. We're back to Firuzja's game. We haven't looked at his for a second. He's playing against Azarov with black. Yep. And he's. Azarov he seems has like he's in a bit of trouble here. Connected passers, but weak dark squares. Yeah. But it just... Okay, if I it's save my bishop... Messy. If I save my bishop to free up the knight, and I'm no longer worried about tactics here... I, although, do I even have to do anything? I mean, if I play king takes c3 and you move the bishop, you're opening up things like rook b7 check. So you mm -hmm. have to be really... In fact, yeah. Uh, wow. Azara That's agrees. He just takes. He must have been thinking about it for a little bit, right? Because bishop c5, rook b7, isn't that going to be slightly yeah, rook, messy? Rook b7, king a6. No, you're right, but... Because now I just have another piece that's hanging, defended by another piece that's attacked. So one move I'm looking at, David, is knight f5. Knight, or knight b7 might be his move here. Instead of rook... Oh, I was thinking rook b7, king a6, and then knight f5. Oh, if okay. you take yeah. f5 in Ermizo, I trade, and if you uh, take e4, then I win d7. So I'm wondering if that'll okay. be what is our. And if I take on b7, you play knight e7, bishop e7, d6, check. Yep. And then take on e7. That's very cool. The simpler move that looks playable is knight b7. I agree. That's a move that at least like Azarov hasn't blundered his pieces here. Yep. To rook b7. Well, Azarov has. Is it Azarov or Azarov? I don't know. I mean, not that it matters. I was just curious. Um, yeah. Let's just say it both ways for the rest of the season. Just switch right? every other time you, you say Azarov. Yeah, let's do that. That'll be so much fun. Oh, and there okay. we go. I called there for a go. photo. I called for a Photoshop contest, David. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Mama gets what Mama wants here. We you have, have a good. Uh, uh, oh, this is great, Wesley. So of, Wesley. Of so Wesley so to show us. That's it. That's all I wanted. So whoever they, get that guy a one-year diamond oh. membership <laughs> takes the cake at Claw Clawwell ninety six. Thank you for that. Um, Fabio looks so happy, and he's at perfect the perfect angle and, for but, his. But little... one of the things that makes them great teammates is that I mean, yeah. if you're just joining us, jokes aside, St. Louis won their match here today versus the London Lions. Right. But Fabiano and Wesley were hanging out in the Chess.com chat, having fun, right. um, cheering on their teammates, and I said, "Let's show these two is what they really are, which is just just glorified cheerleaders." There you go. <laughs> They're like, we're 2,800, but we're really here to support. Here, so very good. Love it. 
All right, knight b7 was played. Um, indeed, you were right. He takes the safer route. I don't know that my move is wrong, rook b7, but no. I think I think he takes the safer route. No. And even if it's wrong, you'll just say that you didn't want to be right. So it won't you know what? Hey, if if, uh, if playing that move is wrong, <laughs> I don't want to be right. All right, so now the bishop can move from e4 safely because the knight on b7 yeah. has the protection it always wanted. Um, yep. Bishop can come to c2. Yeah, knight. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but so Azarov is playing for the Sopranos, right? That is right. That means no. if no. He's playing for the Marshals. It's hard to keep track of. It's New York versus New York. Yeah. Okay, but so Azarov's Azarov playing for the Marshals. For the Mar so Azarov winning this game would really, really help the Marshals then. Yeah, it would get the Marshals up to eight points. Okay. So they'd be I, I am confused precisely because it's New York on New York action. I, yeah. I um. Look, he found another move that's pretty cool. A tactical move instead of moving the bishop. Yeah. And, and I had a feeling like he'd be looking for something tactical here. I had just some weird instinct that he wasn't pumped about bishop g2, rook e3, or rook e2 or something. Right. So, so he's going to meet rook e4 with rook b7. The bishop comes. Ooh. Bishop b6. No, but then knight e6, and it's fine, because after the trade, I guess h7. Wow, and then he doesn't take h7. Yeah, now he's... Barucia seems to have seen the worst of this. This move knight d8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just saved it. I mean, he got the opposite colored bishops, and he got one of the connected passers. Yep. This could not have been the grand plan. What's this? Rook e3, king d2, rook f3. I mean, he's willing to sack every pawn to trade off one or two. Which is not, not a bad, I mean, a good defensive lesson. I'm not saying it's going to work for Ferugia, but if you're watching, right. this is... You know, often in these obstacle bishop endings, your your coordination, your pressure, your king activity, these things are more important than the, than one extra kind of unhealthy pawn on f6, right? And so, mm. you know, if you have this mindset of, as your as a player yourself, you can look for these defensive resources, and it's kind of a defensive sacrifice because Black is valuing the pressure here over that over that pawn. So I like it, instructive. Um, and indeed, that's what he goes for. Okay. And there it's all happening. So he can have h7 too, but uh, yep. Black's going to... It's trace happening. Some stuff okay, and White and still has winning chances, don't get us wrong. He's going to take on h2, attacking the bishop and the a pawn. So he's going to get rid of the a pawn too if things go perfectly for yeah. him. Yeah, that's a good point. If, I mean, the White King could try to come to c3 and play bishop c2 and stuff, but then rook to g2 or some I don't know. Bishop a5, king d3, rook d2, winning the bishop. Yeah, so... Okay, so he doesn't even take h7 because it wasn't going to work out. And a good, uh, you know, uh, returning the favor, we talked about Ferugia giving up the pawn for the activity we've now seen this rook come up with. Here, Azarov mm -hmm. doesn't want a pawn at the cost of giving black counterplay. So again, you're emphasizing keeping your rook, your, your opponent's pieces uncoordinated, guarding the a pawn uh, with your bishop here on the second rank. And I just think that that's... You know, as we near the end of the day here, we watch these games because we enjoy it, but also everybody wants to learn something. I think this is instructive, and I think this is going to keep Azarov's winning chances alive here. Mm -hmm. um, okay, now now Ferugia has issues because if you attack the g-pawn, I put it on g4, where it's guarded by the bishop and holds back h5. You can't... Maybe you could actually put the king on this diagonal because maybe there is no, no discovery. Wait, he takes g3, but now c6. I was thinking you couldn't move the bishop because you needed bishop b6, but David... I mm -hmm. don't know. I think Ferugia just took a huge risk with this move. Bishop takes g3. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we mentioned that his his idea was to trade off every pawn that he could. And he yep. was just hungry for that simplification. Well, unfortunately for the Sopranos, they're down a game right now, despite Carissa Yip winning very quickly on board four. And if I'm looking at right. these, I'm spying these other games, David, Lenderman, Demchenko, yeah. I'm just going to show they're it on the analysis pressure. board. We can stay here on the Azarov. Ferugia game, yep. but if you look at the Demchenko game there, look at that. That's Lenderman Demchenko yep. on the analysis board. That's going to be a draw. And the real boy game also looking very closed up. So suddenly if we're thinking about whether the Sopranos are going to have enough of a comeback, I mean... It's all... hard to see where another win would yeah, come exactly. from. Yeah, exactly. All, three, right? all like, three of these games are going down the peaceful route. any board here they could win? Yeah. I guess they would have to win Barbosa against Real Boy. Yeah, the uh, they would, they the would have to win this crazy, crazy closed file game. Right. 
that's the one that's the only one where I can like imagine a scenario where a GM loses it. Right. For the uh for the marshals. And then they'd have to draw those other two games, which they might, but Yep. So what's the move here? Knight F seven feels wrong. Yeah, he's just gonna he's just gonna tickle it. Tickle it. That rook to f seven felt right. E five though, that's a good move. Oh, maybe white has more chances here than I Definitely thought. Got an advantage for white, right? Yeah. If not a, if not already a winning advantage. Hang on. D six check. Don't you have to play king d seven? I take e five with check. Say what? Right. D six check looks D6. like a. a what about real king problem. d eight? King if, d eight. If d six king eight, even then we take e five, right? Now we've got right. Got a a million and a half class pawns. Slight right. exaggeration, but. By the way, well, in that line, D7 checkmate is coming. <laughs> Which would be nasty, right? I mean, D7. Yeah. D6 looks good. Barbosa. Oh, my goodness. Uh -oh. He's winning. Dude. Wait, what happened? He's winning. I mean, your oh, idea but, of D7. But speaking made, of win, that's... Demchenko beat Lenderman. What do you mean? Yeah, Demchenko just beat Lenderman. Like it's over, over? Yeah, it's over, over. To the back cave. I'm pulling it up. I just pulled up the game. Look at the final position here on the analysis board, everybody. Keep watching. Uh -huh. Keep watching the Barbosa game. But on the okay. analysis board, I guess that. Oh, that, you know what? That I, was the Marshall State points. I looked at that game, David, and I thought it was Obscode Bishops. I was I was Ferugia blinded, but it wasn't Obscode okay. Bishops. Actually, in hindsight, Demchenko. Right, it was colored bishops. Yeah, I just didn't even see it, and the C pawn was just too fast. He eventually... Yeah, he was sacking the H pawn to distract the Black King from his C pawn. That's why I thought that was also a game where, like, it was an if they could hold it for right. the Sopranos. Well, that's huge for the uh, obviously because now if you're if you're yeah. in the Marshall's corner, that win there puts yeah. puts either uh, Jurabek or Firuja in a position where all they have to do is draw. It um, means they can survive this foul thing that Barbosa is doing here. Wow, they what a what a big win there and a miss misspoken by us. Apologies that, that clearly yeah. Demchenko was in the driver's seat against Lenderman the whole time and I just I uh I had a, a brain a brain gap because I So all they need to win the match is for Azarov not to like hang yeah, up. Just a, a just piece, a draw. Yeah. Pretty much. A draw would a draw will do. A draw will do. Big big game there for Demchenko taking on not Lenderman's best day, by the way. We know mm -hmm. Alex well and, and uh, you know, plays a lot on chess.com, so not to rub salt in the wound. But um, not a good day here today for Linderman. So. No, not not as much as he needed there. Look, in look fact, at this, look at this move. Here it comes. He's going to take Chris it. Chris Yip is almost scoring the most points for their team at board four. Oh, I wish there was some mate. I wish there was some mate faster than just taking up six with the pawn. But take up six with the pawn. Oh, it just feels so good. How's, yeah. how's White going to win here? The Windmills got a little bit closer to taking their match versus the Champions home. By the way, they now have a 7-half, 4-half score, as you can see there, everybody. Um, takes with the Rook. Okay. Interesting. To which Jurabek decides, I'm going to keep that horrible-looking tower on G8. <laughs> that feels yeah. good. I don't know, you know, because that seems like a good idea. Because every piece he keeps on the board is one extra trap piece. Right. <laughs> because every PC keeps on the board. Misery loves company, as they say. Yeah. Um, One more piece that can't move. Knight B7. This is getting abusive. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is this is getting, you know. This is my favorite thing in chess, Danny. It's this kind of position for white where you just like, yeah. bring in your last piece right. and the other. It's like, I've got two squares. And now he finally plays D7. Rook F8, I'm oh, assuming, yeah. will cause a resignation. Right. Uh, yeah, it should. Okay, or rookie six, I guess, and that then rookie good. eight mate. Rookie eight coming. Okay, so with that, Barbosa. Well, Barbosa kept his cool. He had a bad start to the day, yeah. one and a half out of three. Yeah, he but, stuck with uh, it. It's pretty nice. Okay, big win there for Barbosa. Um, that. Uh, ooh, we have to check back in here with the uh, the chess bra games here in a moment. We're getting Definitely some interesting time here, but that, that does keep the Sopranos fighting. Unfortunately, if we go back to this game with Perugia, uh versus Azarov, 
what? Azarov wins. I don't know. I don't know yeah. what just happened there, but it looks like. Um, well, I think he was winning for a while. He actually had the Black King trapped on a8, which yep. meant that he could set up with his bishop on it and then find a time to push the c pawn. No, and I'm going to end this analysis of exactly how the uh, the marshals took this one home with that instructive moment because you and I had just been highlighting a whole bunch about how the the extra little pawn isn't the most important part of these endgames, right, David? And so if you go back to this move 48 where, where mm -hmm. Ferugia took g3, I was instantly critical of it because of c6. Yeah. And again, in these endgames, the one extra pawn is is often not as valuable as keeping your opponent's pieces uncoordinated or keeping a king less active than your own. And here, Ferugia allowed c6 and no longer had the blockading move bishop b6. And honestly, yeah. because of that move, look at this. The c-pawn, the uh, the diagonal, when the bishop eventually found it. And and I, mm -hmm. I agree with you. In hindsight, Azarov was actually winning that whole time. So, yeah. all right. Just well, a lost situation once the king gets stuck there. With that, we will move back to the uh, to the the chess bra match, which means right. starting with Eric Hansen, who's not in as good of a position as I thought he would be um, as black against against Shetty from how it started, but still seems to be you know doing fine here with the black pieces. And if you're just joining us, Eric won his first two games of the day against the top boards of the pawn grabbers. He beat Alexander Shabalov and a Wonder Liang, so he's um. He's really holding his own right now for the chess bras. Yeah. All right. Shout out to everybody who is here, all of our subscribers, all the viewers, whether you are on chess.com, chess TV. If you're on Twitch, remember you can hold your mouse over the uh, the the Twitch player and and give give uh, people a follow. If you're if you're interested in uh, in following other chess channels, maybe this is one of your first times tuning into chess here on Twitch. Um, this is only available on uh, Twitch directly, not at the third party, not at the embed at chess.com TV. But you can hold your mouse over the uh, the extensions and follow and subscribe to to some of the other channels here. So. Yeah. Um. One other thing to follow in this fourth round is that Eduardo Iturizaga the uh, second board for the Miami champions. Yep. He actually is three and zero after beating um, Lei Kuang Liam in an opposite colored bishop ending in the third round. So he's got a chance to go four and zero oh today, which yeah. I don't think that anybody else has done that yet. But the champions need every point at this point. They, um, they do need all of them in this last round. So. <laughs> every one of those points. Hanson playing quickly from a practical point of view. He looks at his opponent's clock there. Shetty about to go under the one minute mark. So mm -hmm. that's interesting. Yeah. Makes a decision to do something with the queen trade. Just wants to make it a little simpler, but. Okay, I mean. Shetty has played well here, I, I think, holding his own. I think he was worse out of the opening. Like I said, I expected Hanson's position to be better. And he and he's he's got goals, big ideas for this bishop, right? Big dreams that this bishop might find its way to b2 and undermine the pawn on the dark square. But but I think Shetty gets some credit here for, you know, the knight is good. The pawn on d5 is restrictive at this point. But I guess the problem is where's the plan for white? There's no targets. The bishop guards e7. What, yeah, the bishop's what do we pretty do here? strong here. There isn't really a plan. Right. Um, you know, centralize the king and try and defend everything. Something like that. Robin Van Campen mm -hmm. drew his game versus a Wonder Liang, so that's okay. why we First saw... First point the, he's given up today. Right. That's why we saw the half point change there. Six and a half, two and a half still for the chess bras. Yeah. Okay. I think I hear some of your teammates coming in there. Pacific oh, yeah, Division, you hear people starting to come in? Which is cool. The Pacific Division okay. is up right after this, of course. Um, yeah, our match is in like 15 minutes or so. Yep. It's going to be pretty much back-to-back. -back. <laughs> pretty much back-to-back, -back, right? Um, pretty much back-to-back. -back. All right, well, Shetty seems to have found a slight blockade here. Let's check out another game here in the Pawn Grabbers versus the Chess Bros. Let's go to Alexander yeah. Shabalov's game, Super Bliss versus uh Dal Matanak, which is Sarich. We've Sarich, got yeah. we've got Sarich here taking on Shabalov. 
Um, It'd be a shame to go a whole day without watching a single game from Sarge. Yeah, seriously, because he's pretty good too. Yeah. Um, and he's better he's again up here. Upon now. Up upon now against Shabalov. Yep. Yeah. I am not playing in the match for San Francisco. I'm not even on the roster. I'm just the manager. That is right. Uh, okay. Shabalov holding his own, though. G7's a problem, but he's got the target on A5, and I think if he can... Or, sorry, on D4. Mm -hmm. He just pushed A5. Yeah. So if he can keep some dark square issues on the board for Sarge, it might be not the easiest, cleanest win. Yeah. I think now that he's done what he did, he wants to trade bishops. Try to go to a rook end game. Uh -huh. where his rook can go to, like, d5 and b5, sort of. It's hard to defend both those isolated pawns, right? With pieces coming off, um, makes me feel even more likely that that uh, Shava could hold this one. Yeah. I mean, it looks like he's... Is he in time to just collect the b-pawn? Not quite. That's too bad. Yeah, this one's, <laughs> pe this one's petering out, even with even with time pressure. I think that, I think that Sarge is going to be... Pushing this one though, because if Shava's under time pressure and uh, and the one fighting for a draw, this could be hard to hold. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. Okay, if you're just joining us, we do have two matches in the books already. As you can see, the bishops handily took care of the lions. The marshals, the uh, one of the new newest teams in the league, they qualified their way in back in November. And they win their first Pro Chess League match. So congratulations to the Marshals beating their crosstown rivals, the New York team, New York based team known as the Montclair Sopranos. Um, we've uh, we've got games right now. We're looking at a game between Chess Bra Ivan Saric versus Alexander Shabalov there for the pawn grabbers. Um, the matchup that's going to finish first though is this one here. Um, between the, the windmills and the champions, so yeah. maybe we should check out one of those games. Um, sure. Let's actually do that is, because is we set the Raman against Lake Huang Liam, and the board two game is Iturizaga and Nizhnik. Well, I was going to say there's also the Shimonov game. I was going to say even though he forfeited a game earlier, I just pulled up Shimonov's game um, versus Crypto Chess, and he may actually have a chance to play Hero. David, despite getting a forfeit loss to start the day, if you're just getting here, he showed up late, so Ituri Zaga got yeah. a forfeit win against Shimonov. Um, yeah. But it hasn't stopped the Bishops from having a lead right now, and if he wins this game, maybe a little bit of redemption if he can get the uh, the clinching victory for the windmills today. So, there you go. Yeah. We got Greg Shahadi in the Twitch chat. Shout out to the We Twitch. have on... Um... Iturizaga, who did a sort of weird trade of his queen for a bunch of other pieces. Um, Iturizaga did a weird trade of his queen for a whole bunch of other pieces. Which game is that? There we go, against Nizhnik. I got it. Iturizaga, Nizhnik. Yeah. I mean, it took him like five moves to make the trade. It was so complicated tactically, but it starts on move 20 where he plays queen takes b2. Yeah, I see. Walking into rook b1, reminiscent of the game that Carissa Yip won really easily with rook to a1. But this time, Black had a little bit more up his sleeve. You yeah, gotta, gotta kind of like Black's chances here, right? Knight d4, pretty slick, right? And then bishop yeah. f3. Yeah, this is a nice little tactic from Ituri Zaga for sure. Yeah, so now he's got rook, bishop, and two pawns against the queen. A whole collection of stuff. And, uh, yeah. White um, still needs to get his bishop into the game. But uh, he was worried about rook to b1 there. And thinking about maybe trapping the bishop on e2 in a best-case scenario. Yeah, I like that move f3 because of that idea. In fact, where's the bishop going? I mean, you have to be a little careful if you're white. There's still discoveries on the queen. But that's that's actually that's kind of problematic there if you're Ituri Zaga. Yeah, it's kind of going nowhere at the moment. I mean, right. because of king f2, knight g4, check. Oh, then there's queen takes g4. So it's actually... Yeah, there's no real threat for black. He might really be threatening things already. But yeah. king f2, rook to b2 would be a way for black to play, maybe? Eric Hansen continues his tear, by the way. He just finished with a victory over uh, Atulia Shetty. So congratulations Ooh. to Eric for yeah. 
helping to start the chess bra campaign for the 2019 Pro Chess League season on the right foot. Um, and uh, with that victory, and then a quick victory for Saric over Shabalov, he just won that game, and suddenly what was a a match that had, you know, it wasn't even over yet, it just ended just like that. Wow. Uh, the chess bras get two victories, and they have already won the match before right. the last round even started. So, wow. uh... So that's pretty decisive. Yeah, big stuff here. Sarge won that Rook endgame without too much trouble, huh? Yep. All right, so back to the Nizhnik Ituri Zaga game. Yeah, this might be a pretty fascinating moment here um, to see yeah. what Ituri Zaga is up his sleeve for this. I wonder if he just missed this idea, right? Because it's, it's kind of counterintuitive to think the bishop might get trapped right there when you feel like, okay, the queen is on this discovery, and you have to be careful about my Rook coming down, and I've got your mm -hmm. king. Suddenly, well, Nizhnik just plays f3, and not only have I dealt with my king's problems, but your bishop is is just trapped. Right. So, um, yeah, I think I think a little bit counterintuitive. Almost, almost, uh, you feel like, oh wow, that's unfair. But uh, mm -hmm. I think Nizhnik is going to win this one quickly. Now, I don't see how he deals with this bishop. The queen, how does he? Unless there's some tactic we're just missing, but right. How do we deal I don't with know. the there could be something. I mean, he could oh, just Okay, move here's an idea. Knight. I was Oh, he, he plays rook there. What's his Yeah. I, it gives the d3 square possibly for the bishop. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I I was thinking um, maybe there was h5 which would have dealt with king f2 with knight g4 check possibly. Mhm. Mm oh, that was a cool idea so too. That was, yeah. that was another idea, but right as I yeah. was thinking it uh Ituri Zaga committed to his move which was rook to b3. Yeah. I was also thinking depending on how bad the situation is in some case he could move the knight attacking the queen like somewhere bad like h5 or e8 even right. in order to then play rook to b2 and defend the bishop so there's still a lot of options in the air here yeah creative creative solution there and it'll be interesting and instructive i think to see if the pieces can outplay the queen here because i don't think that's a that's the type of dynamic that people see every day but uh Strong players know how to coordinate pieces against a big piece like the queen. So, yeah, even if he, even if he doesn't lose the bishop, though the bishop's awkward for a while. Right, but again, you um, highlighted that right now Ituri Zog is undefeated, and as you look at the scoreboard, the Miami champions need, need him to continue to play well. <laughs> yeah, they need him to win another three games this yeah. round. Maybe they could just have Ituri Zaga play a simul next week, against everybody, right? If he could play yeah. everybody. That might be a good idea. Um, yeah. Anyway, so queen a7. Okay, that's an interesting move. Huh. Feel like black could get some dangerous stuff here. What about bishop h6? Huh? A little tickle? That gives the king a square, too. Ah, so he likes it. I like awkward. it. Bishop h6, yeah. F4. Nice one, Danny. That just doesn't feel like a move that you're happy that you had to play. Right. F well, if you a... get too excited and play ninety four, then Queen A eight is going to win for white right. before you can back rank mate him. But okay, with no blunders coming, but... F four just self trapped the bishop on H two, yeah. right? Uh, How about King G seven now? Right, just kind of a. I mean, E seven. You got to be a little careful because you can take E seven and guard the knight. Yeah. So, so I guess Eterizaga wanted to defend that first. Um, okay. But 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 just think of it this way: the bishop on H six did its job, right? David had forced yeah, F four yeah. to just go right back. All right. Um, and yeah, then, that's pretty. I mean, that's a nice concession to get out of white. All right, well, we'll keep our eye on this. If Ituri Zaga wins this game, then Miami's hopes are still alive. But the issue is that um, the uh, that as we said, they Ituri Zaga has to win this game pretty much at this point. Okay, a draw, they still have a chance to tie the match at eight games apiece. But mm -hmm. okay, the other games that are going, we have uh, Laquang Liem. Um, Against Seth the Raman, that's a match right. of four we have ones. Shimonov playing. And, I mean, a tactical move has just been played by Seth the Raman. Knight f4 with a fork, which apparently okay. you've got emotes for. Let's check that game. Yeah, we've got lots of emotes. we got emotes for forks, emotes for pins. If you're a subscriber to the Twitch channel, just check out the plethora. You've got like a smorgasbord of emotes there, a, sh a smorgasbord. That's a word people use still. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Maybe we'll see knight f6 check in response to knight f4. Oh, then you'll have several tactics at once. 
Aha! Takes the soup. Knight takes f6, so guess, takes, takes. I guess knight f6, rook f6, queen g5, queen g7 will probably not actually work. Barely? Barely doesn't work. Probably Wait! Doesn't. Wait! Queen g7. No, never yeah. mind, it doesn't work. Because if rook, I thought I had rook g3 inner miso, but you just have knight g6. Hmm. Um. Okay, so knight f6, knight takes f6 maybe doesn't work, and if that's the case, actually, then maybe you just have to sack the exchange on f4. Mm -hmm. Well, we have one of our first potentially uh, not jam-packed with time pressure moments as the, the last round for the chess bras uh, versus the pawn grabbers has not begun, and we have a little bit of time on the clock. So we're going to take our first very, very quick break of the day here, everybody. Uh, don't go anywhere. We're going to be back in just a few moments, but... Uh, we have week one of the Pro Chess League. With coverage of week one of the 2019 Pro Chess League. Thank you for sticking around for our first break we've had for, I guess we're going on about uh, three and a half hours here. So it's yeah. been, a, been, a, been a, fun, a fun ride, and we still have plenty of interesting action left here. Okay, Queen F3. Not the move we exactly expected Laquang to Laquang Liam to play, but I guess it makes sense now that, now that we've seen it. Yeah, um... What's what's he planning to do? Maybe he's planning to answer knight h3 with knight f6. It's got to be, right? Knight f6 check, and takes, and, and then just takes back. And this knight is is extra, but kind of struggling to figure out the right thing to do when the king is also wide open. Right. 
But okay, I mean, it's a, it's a piece. Piece is a piece, right? Knight f4 takes and knight g6. I mean, I think Liam has something to prove here for sure. Oh, well, if, if knight h3, knight f6, rook f6, I think he'll play queen a8 check instead of queen ah, a6. Ah, I wasn't even looking at the full board. Yeah. Nice. Okay, there we go. That's that's the trick. Okay, so queen f3, Laquang Liam is spying tactics. Hashtag do your puzzle rush, kids. Um, that's why then you won't miss things like that, like I do. Um Okay, you know how they have some, like, athletes who tell kids what to do because they did it the right way in their career? I'm the guy mm -hmm. that tells them what to do because I clearly gave a bad example in my career. Mm -hmm. So, there you go. Um, all right, he's going to take h3, and Liam has a uh, an extra pawn, kind of, in this queen and pawn ending. Maybe most likely results a draw because I think black can take h3. And, and Yeah, and it'll be hard to take on a7, won't yep. it? Yep. Okay. Well, um, we have eight games still in action here with the Atlantic coverage. If you just joined us right after that break, you already see we have a couple of matches. In fact, three matches in the book. The chess bra is so dominant today, they still have the entire round four of games to go, which just got underway. But they've already won their match here against the Pittsburgh Pawn Grabbers. So not the best day for guys like a Wonder Li Yang and Alexander Shabalov. We know that they, they do like this format and are usually pretty good. But the chess bra has brought it today. So congratulations to them. They've already moved on. Um, and their last round games are, are only getting started. So, yeah. Um, let's check out Ichiri Zaga with Nizhnik because still as, fascinating. Still I was gonna, fascinating. Yeah, and as long as that game's still going, then the champions still have a chance, right? If Ichiri Zaga can get this game here, where he sacrificed a queen, an interesting position here for Black. Mm -hmm. H5. No. Okay. Knight e4. What's the threat? He just wants to take back on g5 with the knight. I'm guessing. I guess so. Right. Who knows? I mean, he's also got rook b1 as a move. B1. I guess, I guess it doesn't do anything clear just yet. But but this is one of those positions where the reason why the pieces can outplay the queen here, everybody, is because the queen lacks targets. We always talk about unbalanced material positions, right, David, where what does the queen want to do to, to flex her muscle? She wants the king to be open. She wants there to be multiple weaknesses on both sides of the board. Uh, where she you can kind of really cool video series about this, right? Idea. Right, and 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 the the ex the, the more powerful piece wants there to be targets because it, then it can really show what it does best, which is quickly switch and make make power chess moves in the open board. But here, you know, white lacks targets, which is why the pieces can maneuver, they can coordinate, they can help each other gain a gank up against things. That's how the pieces will outplay the heavy piece when they have those time. But wait a second, rook b4 is played. Yeah. Why not bishop takes f6 here? I don't know. But I was going to tell you that I was kind of liking Black's position, but now we have to calculate. Now I'm now I'm not so sure because if Bishop takes, you can't take back. That's a forky. Why move. can't you play Rook G4? Because I'm, I'm thinking I can take E7, mm -hmm. and if and if Rook G2, I can run with the King and suddenly F8's problem. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking I you know I'm you know yeah. I'm not a scientist. You know that. Oh, and he goes right. for it. Went for it. I actually think that Rook B4 might have been a big blunder the moment he played it. I was just I was just about to highlight the lack of targets for white, but okay, bishop bishop d4 prepared a threat, and he just played rook b4, and I'm like, uh, hold a second, mm -hmm. hold the phone. Yeah. I think Yuri Zaga might lose this one, and with it, we might have all four matches closed here because that that tactic was a huge problem. E easy well, can to you, can you take on g4, and then after bishop e7, just kind of play something like h6. To move out of the way with the king. I, I guess so, but uh, I mean, I was I was assuming that I could take f8, and maybe even then I could take g5, right? Suddenly here yeah. the queen has what she does, what she wants, right? She has an open right. king. She's got those yeah, pawn targets. Hanging. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think I think bishop f6 was a. Uh, was a big tactic that Ituri Zaga, who's been been Superman for the champions, they needed a hero, right? And yeah. he was he was their guy today, but it looks like he's he's uh, finally running out of steam, and this is the last game going. Yeah. No, there's two other games that, still going actually. That queen end game though that you that you were just saying would probably be a draw between Lake Wang Liam and Seth Ram on the two top, the two board ones that did end in a draw. You it right did end in a draw. One. Okay, so Liam drew, so which again. Um, helps the uh, helps the windmills even further. They inch that much closer. So with Liam getting that win, the champions, or sorry, getting that draw, the champions are almost knocked out. Um, Ituri Zaga 
is now in trouble and now having to prove himself that that wasn't a blunder, but with only 20 seconds to do so, we got problems. Yeah, and with the time he spent on that move, it's obvious that it was a blunder. Yeah. Um, Bishop d4 was a little bit telegraphed that he wanted – that he thought he was threatening a sack. Well, I think, like you, I, I think, like you said, it's kind of it was easy to dismiss almost because you assume rook takes g4, I'm getting g2, but then mm -hmm. you know the moment it happens, it's like uh, bishop takes e7 right. is a real problem. And he must I, have thought like bishop e f6, rook g4, and I defend yep. the knight on g5, and I win. And okay. then just and with that, the Miami champions take. Uh, oh. Sorry, they take the fall, and the windmills oh. officially have right. a nine to six lead with Shimanov still playing against Alexander Katz. So let's switch to that. It is the last game e going seven. here. E um, seven comes in, and it's not Iturizaga, but Nizhnik, who ends up taking running the, the board right? with a first four zero that I've seen of this year's right. best league. Well, we uh, we have all four matches of the the first round of play here for week one of the Pro Chess League is in the books. There you have it. That's exactly what's going to happen. And in, in, uh, that's how they will move on to week two, despite the fact that we still have interesting chess. And the chess bras, who've been awesome, still have four games going. So don't go anywhere. Stick with us until Dave yeah. and I hand off the coverage uh, to Grandmaster Robert Hess and Alexander Botez. But um, there you have it. Maybe a, maybe a good time to point out a change in the scoring for the Pro Chess League this year. Yeah, go for Danny, it. even for people who followed last year. Yep is that this year every single game point counts for the final standings. Yep. It's not just like your record is, you know, seven match wins and two match losses or something like that. Right. But a match win gets you 10 points, and every single game point you get counts into that total as well. So for the chess bras, they've got nine points. So they've got the 10 points for winning the match, but they've got four more games. Why not rack up two, three, three and a half more points, you know, yep. if you can no, and we'll um we'll prepare. Uh, actually, that's a good point because I think what we'll try to do is have some information to remind people of that because it was actually a huge change and it had a a long email thread with me and Greg, uh, and and some other people going back and forth as the best way to continue to provide competitive balance. And I think that's a don't you like that change? I really like that because what it does is it creates a situation like this, David, where yes, the chess bras have won nine three, but guess what? If the pawn grabbers win these last four games and only lose the match nine seven. That's right. You almost have like stolen a victory from the jaws of defeat, right? Because you're creating a situation where um, you have a you have a much better chance at the playoffs if you're not just getting crushed in your matches. Um, yeah, I mean, for them, they'd be more than doubling their their take home pay yep. for the day. Right. So, exactly. Yeah. No, so that's a really I'm I'm really glad you brought that up. And everybody who followed it last year, that's a new change, which we, we like because again, it creates scenarios like this where the few boring moments that happen in the Pro Chess League, I don't think there are many, but if there are. It's when a which it's when a team dominates another team, but yeah. now now we always have something that's that's interesting because in the final weeks of the season, David, that may actually be a storyline that keeps people in the playoffs, right? If someone fights back right. even though they've already lost a match, that could be the difference right. between them making the playoffs. Right. It could be the like two or three points you score in the fourth round of a lost match that would, that would keep your team's total in right. the playoffs. Right. No, that's a that's a phenomenal point. And right now, Katz is uh, he's fighting for that, right? Again, even for the Miami champions, they are they have lost this match. But if Katz can hold this position against Shimonov, we have our first example of that here. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, only six right. seconds, so let's let's not go but anywhere. But Shimonov's on my on my team, so. But my, my oh, family. there you go, right? So you've got this like emotional thing going on, right? Yeah. Like when your like, two kids yeah. go at it, and you don't want to say mm -hmm. who you're rooting for, but emotionally, yeah. you kind of are rooting for one, and you don't know why. No, you've never been there like, on that one. Looks like a draw, huh? Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, the Miami yeah. champions do fall by a final score of 9.5, 6.5, but um, a half point held there by Katz for Shimonov. I think that helps him. So, Okay, it's all chess bras from here on out, seeing if the pawn grabbers can – got some interesting games here, David. Let's go to this first one, a Wonder mm -hmm. Liang versus Sarich because that's a dragon. Cool. That's a board one versus board one action. We got Red Nova, 17-29. Taken on Dal Mat Matinok 101. I don't know what that's about, but there you go. We got a dragon. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, and we've got sort of this classic pawn sack of the dragon, right? Where you yep. go G4 and black takes it, and then you try and play like H5, and like F3 is hanging, and you're not recapturing anything ever. And for those of you who may have just gotten here and wonder mm -hmm. exactly how the chess bras got such a dominant score, uh, let's, uh, let's go to Eric Hansen's game real quick. He is 3-0 on the day for the chess bras leading the way, and right now he's got the white pieces against 
international master Levon Bagradzi. So, uh, mm -hmm. okay, if he can get it done here where he is supposedly favored, he will he will have our 4-0 of the day, right, David? We were saying we don't have a perfect 4-0 yeah. yet, and that, that no, could be. we do have one. We do have one. We have the first one from Nizhnik. Oh, Nizhnik, that's right. Nizhnik. Okay, Nizhnik just did it. You were just saying that, yeah. yeah. So we have yeah. one 4-0 in the day. Neither Fabiano Caruana or Wesley So went 4-0 for the Bishops, but they still got it done. But right. uh, That shows how hard it is to, to win this fantasy chess thing, right? Yep. I mean, I took Wesley So for board two. Who did you take? <laughs> uh, I didn't take So, actually. What? How can you not take Wesley So? He's like... A board one playing on board two. I don't know why. It was a matchup thing, but I think I'm afraid to admit it. I think I took Shabalov. Okay. No. So you didn't do better than taking Wesley So. <laughs> I did not do better than taking Wesley So. I don't think you could, really. Um, but, yeah, but apparently Nizhnik would have been the ticket today. Yeah, but I, I picked against myself. That way, uh, you know... If Shabalov, if Shabalov did bad, it means the chess bros bounce back, and I think secretly, just because I, I know them, I kind of wanted them to start off on the right foot. I don't really have any rooting interest beyond that, but I'm glad that they're bouncing back from their from their previous relegation. So, um, the uh, okay. So, yeah. what about the game with Robin Van Campen versus Shabalov? Speaking of the board two on my fantasy team, who, who yeah. disappointed me. Um, okay. We've got Kempsey yeah. here. It's making the classic pawn break. In the center. With C5. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Although overall, I kind of like blacks. Yeah. Overall, you know, though, C5 almost looks desperate. Knights and things. Here comes knight E5 and knight G4. And can I get a mate on H2? Can I get an amen? Knight on G4. Yeah. Queen on H2. Right? That's what I was thinking, too. Yeah. It looks like Kemsey is doing well. And if that's another rough game for Shabalov, then he... He really did not have a good day. Hashtag the Danny, the Danny curse. Um, you don't want it. You don't yeah. want to be picked on my fantasy team. That is for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Hanson's doing well. No, We've got Kempsey here. I'm trying to look for the most interesting one of this matchup here between them. Of all of these, the most interesting one. I kind of want to go back to the to a oh, Wonderly oh, Yang game, the Red Nova game. Well, okay, let, let's stay here. Let's stay here because Night G4 oh, yeah. happened, and we may get the attack we fantasized about. Mm -hmm. Who do you got there? Someone want to someone want to say hi behind you? Here. Here's our board for Ezra Chambers. He's got to lean in. We can't quite see him. Oh no. Okay. He's gonna make his debut. There you go, in, Ezra. Uh, What's up, dude? In a couple minutes. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's remind everybody real quick what's coming up next. We've got the Pacific Division. Uh, when uh, when David says his team, he's talking about the San Francisco Mechanics. Um, and, of course, the Pacific Division is just stacked this year. Uh, the Mechanics are led by the man right there in the lower left corner, the reigning U.S. champion, Sam Shanklin. But as David said in the pregame show, being the manager of the Mechanics doesn't keep him from having an unbiased view where he knows that they have their work cut out for him because – you got a lot of strong players in the Pacific Division, and I'm not even yeah. going to name their names because people can read, and uh, <laughs> they're good. Excellent. So, yeah. So I was watching the Hansen game. It was pretty cool. Hansen managed to clean up the pawn on B3, which is a major accomplishment for him for sure. Okay. Um, yeah, let's check on the Hansen game there. regazzi has got a little bit of counterplay, but Hansen quickly plays Rook to D1, gaining a tempo, and I think... I think He's going for knight d7, right? Yeah, I think bishop g2 is met by knight d7. It's going to be weird, because there's still moves. You know, knight d7, there's bishop f3. Yeah, there actually, is... if knight d7, there's also rook d8, there's and the knight is kind of pinned. Yeah, yeah. Six check bishop takes. Yeah. Defend. Yeah, though, uh, no discovery there. Mm. How would we get a, a discovered check emote? I don't even know. Let's think about they that. They played a couple moves pretty quickly there, and, and I mean, like, tactical moves. And now it feels like, wait, hang on. What am I doing? Let me right. double check some of this. And now he's like, did I just give my opponent unnecessary counterplay? Don't ruin your perfect 4-0 day, Eric. But you might, actually. Right. And at this point, now I've kind of switched. I'm like, hey, pawn grabbers, make this thing interesting because you know what? Right. It might matter for the playoffs. Okay, well, Hansen is also down on time, which I will say one thing that Eric did very well today, in addition to playing solid chess, is he managed his clock yeah. well. And and from a practical point of view, was he... Definitely true. I mean, we were complimentary of that from day, from the game one, right? He was doing well, and now, mm -hmm. now he's really down on the clock. Okay. 
let's let's quickly go over to the uh, a Wonder Liang game because Red Nova is about to go on a king march, bringing the king to oh. f6. Uh, in a sorry. good way or a bad way? Oh. In a bad way, yeah. but Saric... He's got Saric as king, doing the march. He's doing the march, but again, I was thinking that but Saric has safety on e7, and I don't I don't see how yeah. Liang comes comes through here. Yeah, queen h4, queen g5 is not really going to keep the black king in right. trouble. So a wonder just kind of, you know, gives up the ghost on that, but he's but he's just down mm -hmm. pawns now. If he if he takes yeah. on f3, I mean, black's king is totally yeah. safe. Maybe even a4. I, I'm counting two, and I'm wondering if d5 might be a good move. So okay, the one threat I guess is rook h7. So we'll keep that mm -hmm. possibility alive if we're right. So I was thinking then black could play queen f6 as a defense. Okay, good point. Yeah, I mean d5 looks very good. I agree with you. Just and again. Partly, you're just trying to simplify here. And speaking of simplification, this look is at the other move I was thinking. Yeah, of. <laughs> look at the other way to simplify. Force force White's rook off of that dangerous file. I assume yeah. rook h7 will be the move. Yeah, he can also play f5. It's not as simple, but yeah, f5 is that move where you're like, oh, your your king is sort of feeling the breeze, right? Lifted up the kilt. Right. But uh, yeah. but no, you don't want that. Rook h rook h7. I think rook h7. Active. We have about 2,000 of you with us still. Just want to remind you, don't go anywhere. The Pro Chess League Pacific Division is getting underway. And uh, Star, Pact, as we already said. And uh, right after David and I are done here with the Atlantic here on day one of week one of the 2019 Pro Chess League, we will have the Pacific Division. So, pretty oh, exciting. That was a very solid-looking <laughs> option. Bishop E8? Yeah, that was yeah. pretty solid-looking. Maybe he's going to bring his king back to g7. Yeah, why not, right? I mean, the, rook, the rook's on h8 now. Yeah. So I wonder if found a good switcheroo with, like, queen f3, queen f2. He's finding different angles, and right. Sarge can't just defend everything. But now maybe on queen a7, he just goes king f8, king g7. My rook's covering the h file. And you know what's so sneaky about b4 is the queen guards the a-pawn. There's just, like, yeah. there's just no targets for white. There's nothing left to attack. Yeah. Black is up two healthy pawns, and white is running. And, in fact... I wonder yeah. Liang is just so sick of it, he just throws in the towel. Yeah. Which is he just ran him out of hope by moving his own king backwards. <laughs> okay, so back to Hansen's game. <laughs> Alright. He uh he doesn't really have any advantage left anymore. I am not sure who's better in the Ops Code Bishop ending, but Was that a fourth point for Saric? It was. So just very quickly we mention because four O's two, are a two big four deal, O's right? on the day. So if somebody scores four O, we Yep. We have to say they did the gold, it. The so. golden sombrero, as they say. Four and points. And Bragadze has really turned Four this points. around against Hansen. Hansen. Hansen definitely lost the Fred. Um, yeah. That 97 tactic did not do what he wanted it to yeah. do. Now, again, from an overall oh, match day oh, perspective, oh. if you're just getting your Hansen has played great chess and obviously knew that the chess bras had it clinched, perhaps let his guard down a little bit here in the last game. But he, I think he wanted that 4-0, so... Not not the best way for him to finish, but maybe he can at least hold a draw and get three and a half. Mm -hmm. He's gonna have to hold a draw to get three and a half. Yeah, he will. <laughs> Let let's let's check on the one game. Let's check on the one game here of this last matchup we haven't looked at. That's A M S M S M S M S. Sure. With uh, uh oh. With a very tough game day so far, right? Zero, but he's about to he's about three. to uh, rebound. All right. If you're a board four, I mean, your job is basically to beat the other team's board four. In a lot of lineups, you're not like... Right, and if you get a busy. half a point upset, in theory, you've done your job, right? right? So, Which is why, again, the board fours that dominate in the way that, like, Nicky Rosenthal did today for the Bishops, if you're just getting here, he went two and two. And so, you know, yeah. a 500 score when you're the lowest rated player on your team is certainly, certainly yeah. acceptable. Doesn't give a lot of room for the other team to win. Yep. So, okay, so everything's nice about about Atulia's position here, huh? He's got a knight outposted on F3, <laughs> keeping the white king in place. Well, let, let's go back to Hansen's game, because an right, right, right as the criticism was coming down, I think deservedly so, he's actually turned this around where he's... Where did he uh, get a pass C pawn from? I think, I think maybe Bragadze got a little bit too greedy with the pawns, and, okay, this game should end in a draw regardless, but... um. And in fact, now yeah, he went for rook b5 instead of a2, so then there was c4, and that was like, oops. Yeah, right mm -hmm. here. He just missed this move c4 with tempo, and just like that, 
Hansen was back in the game. But okay, we'll stay with the live position and likely right. this bishop likely finds a blockade. Him. So okay, a great day for the chess bras. What is going to be a three and a half score uh, for Eric Hansen? Wait. It, I mean, he's not quite doing this right. He should have moved his king to c8 instead of his bishop yeah. to f3. And then when the white king comes to b6, it can't go to b7, and he can play bishop e2 to defend the a-pawn. Maybe the 4-0 score no, isn't out of the off. realm yet for Hansen. Look at that. Now the king's cut off. What is he going to do? Yeah, it's super awkward. What did Brigazzi do here? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. His bishop's digging on h1. It's making, for the it's making us feel like that guy who says goodbye to you and then walks next to you all the way to the terminal of the airport. Right. Right? I mean, <laughs> we're now the ones, now I'm the one feeling awkward because of Bragazzi's yeah. poor technique. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, at least it's not a world championship match. I once stopped a broadcast between Anand and Topolov because I was like, opposite colored bishop, end game, draw. Right. Bye, everybody. See you for tomorrow's game. We stopped the broadcast. Yep. We went to, like, go I, I remember. Uh, you yeah. and I were doing that broadcast together, weren't we? Yeah. And I was like, that's enough. We'll go get breakfast. Yeah. That was that was the first world championship that I think we ever covered in full on chess.com. You and I doing that one, actually. Sounds about right. Right? It yeah. Back at the chess house. Oh yeah. man, that was that was the that was the worst in hindsight that we did that. But I think we were both hungry. Exactly. That's what it was. It was because the games with the time zones. Yeah. It was so like, it, it was we it like, was it was it was consensual. We both agreed, and yeah. uh, it didn't work out for like either of us. Like if you guys are gonna uh, play two more hours in this Bishop Endgame, we're gonna eat breakfast during it. Yeah. All right. Well, um, looks like uh, Brigazzi's. He did back finally. He did finally get in holding territory. <laughs> I agree. Okay. Let's watch. Yeah. Let's watch Shetty finish this one off because. Uh, yeah. Shetty is. Uh, He's black. The uh, okay, we've it's a a a, a s s m s m s m s m s m s. There you go. Move e three win. E three just wins on the spot, and that's exactly the move I wanted to see on camera. We got it just in time. E three, game over, Red Rover. Knight d two was good too, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Knight d two would have been schmancy. Yeah, perhaps even better for a computer's perspective. Right. Okay, but a nice win for Shetty, who had a rough day, didn't necessarily get a lot of help from the other pawn grabbers who also struggled today. But okay, this win may help them in the long run. Who knows? Every game yeah. matters, as you said. And in this year's Pro Chess League, you don't want to get – you want to keep it as close as possible because every point may be the difference yeah. in your team getting in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, in this case, for Shetty, like, winning on board four is not enough given these lineups. Like, usually right. that's, like, your board four, you're like, I won board four, board four, I did my job. But in right. this case, like, his team was running a player rated just about 2,400 on board four. So they were giving up 100 points on board one, board two, board three to have him. That means right. they're expecting him to cause, to steal a point here or there, or a half right. point here. It's right. kind of the... No, that's a really good point. And again, Teddy you're speaking Daniel. as a manager here. And those of you who don't know, David that's is okay. the manager of the San Francisco Mechanics. <laughs> it's okay. You're, we know you're slacking from Penny the Mechanics anyway. Institute. And that's exactly how I a manager that, would think oh, about it, right? You're trying to build the lineup he to give yourself. Talk. If you could find okay. those if underrated not, diamonds in the rough, over, uh, fantastic, right? But overall, Daniel you're trying to build a lineup that, you know, you're imagining how those matchups should go on paper. All right, speaking of which, let's check in here. Eric Hansen game he goes, just quickly LOL, ended a draw, so he you finishes both. the day on yeah. three and a half out of four. Uh, Eric Hansen the there, sound. drawing Good. versus Bragazzi. Oh, wait, he can hear um, me say that. Kings, I, I approve of that. that. The, the wow. one game that we didn't follow closely oh. enough, let's go back to it and see how it ended, is the Jura. game between Kempsey and Superbliss, Who? meaning Shabalov here. Oh, and no, it the they hear us on camera. It was the redemption game for Shaba, who actually managed this knight to G4 like you and I wanted. And where did it yeah. go really wrong? I mean, this was already a tough position for White to play. But he... Let's see. Knight to d4. But now he's just up a rook. So... Well, it seems like on move 37, Black may have forgotten that his rook was attacked by the knight on d4. <laughs> Tell me what your impression is of this 30 move from Black. I just love the way you said that. <laughs> because that's exactly what happened. But you said it with such a level of... Could this really be possible? <laughs> uh, yeah. 
I think that that's exactly what happened. I think Kempsey just blundered the rook on e2 because he had everything we talked about. He had the knight on g4, he had what he wanted, and then he forgot that his rook was under attack. Okay. So had he moved the rook, he might not have lost this game. Hashtag blunder the week. But we got one game going here in the first yeah. match of the week, and that is, right now, Shetty doing work. With point zero seconds on the clock, there's a flag. There it is. Does a, he does a flag, but he's about to get... Uh, Eddie the Eagle is... Uh, She's a lady over there on E1. Dude looks like a lady. And that's it. We have the Atlantic Division in the books, buddy. We've, yeah. uh, we've got well the Pacific done. starting. Pacific starting in moments. So hopefully Robert and Alexander are ready to get cracking. I believe they are. In fact, yeah. if you're ready, we, we, we're going to do a direct handoff to them. We use a service that allows us to not stop everything. So I'll get a cue here from the team and figure out exactly where we're at but if you okay. need to get ready for the pacific you can do that if you'd like um well the one thing i should maybe do is make sure my players are online for their match i was gonna say uh, as a manager wearing a lot of hats today <laughs> if you want why don't you why don't you uh bow out and i'll finish the show here hand it off to robin alexander you can take a quick breath before yeah. you do another four hours of commentary you're a superhero today all right and uh good yeah. luck to the mechanics tonight Cool. So everybody, if they give short shrift to the mechanics, you can come check out what we're up to. Seriously, you <laughs> I'll should. be covering I mean, just the mechanics. If you happen to be watching this from San Francisco or anywhere in the Bay Area and you've got a few hours, I mean, you're literally yeah. seeing uh, the Pro Chess League live in action at the Mechanics Institute in downtown San Francisco. So, David, dude, this was awesome. Yeah. You know what? Hey, I Thank think you, this Danny. I think this thing between us, I feel like it mm -hmm. works. I feel like yeah. I feel like this relationship yeah. is working. Yeah, so, we, didn't, we didn't lose a step. We didn't. And uh, yeah. seriously, love you, buddy. Good luck to the mechanics, and I will see you the next time we come together here, and uh, I will take this home to Robert and Alexandra. All right. Thanks, Danny. Peace. Bye, everybody. Okay, well, we're saying goodbye to David. It's me, solo adventure, one man, one cheese, one chess show. One chance at redemption, one opportunity. Thanks, Eminem. Okay. Well, um, as Alexandra and Robert get set, let me take you through a little bit of a reminder of what it is that you're watching here today with week one. This is opening day, opening division. You just saw it go down uh, with me and my co-host, International Master David Pruis. But uh, the Pro Chess League is going to be going for the next four months. Four months, okay? This is the biggest thing in the world of online chess. Really, it is the, the most global event, I think, that professional chess has ever had. Um, I say I think, I, I think, I think I can, right? The uh, little issue that could, I'm pretty sure that it is. We will see you again on January 10th. Uh, some different co-hosts lining up at the Eastern and Central will throw down. Those are teams from the Far East and uh, from Eastern Europe, all over, all over the world again, throwing down in the Eastern and Central divisions. Uh, but as you can see, the different color, the different color highlights, want to highlight what that is. The round robin format is something we do a few times throughout the year, kind of a special format that, that throws teams and, and players together in a slightly faster time control uh, in a way that adds a little bit more excitement if you needed it. Uh, but um, we really like those kind of special formats. It will happen three times this year, including the last week of the regular season, which is March 12th and 14th. Then the playoffs begin in March, all the way until we have a month break. There may be some slight changes on it. Yet because Greg gets mad at me when I say things and he's working on his back to that. But uh, there may be a slight change to some of the playoff dates uh, based on working around uh, the elite events that govern the over the board chess world. Some people still use chess pieces, right? Uh, but anyway, no, jokes aside, there there may be a slight adjustment there in the playoffs. We'll let you know about that. But championship weekend will go down, it will be live, it will be awesome, and there will be opportunities to be there. Speaking of opportunities, every week, every week, we will have a Halfway Highlights show. The reason it's called the Halfway Highlights is because it takes place tomorrow on Wednesdays, meaning only Tuesday's matches will be done. They will spend half their time highlighting what happened on Tuesday and the other half their time previewing what might happen on Thursday. So as I tried to explain to everybody what this show is, they're like, wait a second, they're doing it halfway through the week? And I said, yeah. So naturally, the name is born, Halfway Highlights. That, uh, that will be something that happens. It will be the next thing that happens after the Pacific Division. Because tonight you're going to tune in to Robert Hess and Alexander Botez. And 
job. Sounds like there's music going, by the way. Music going just covers my voice. So, uh, anyway, you already got it. Oh, my bad. Ah, uh, got it. Hey, that's, that's production behind the scenes. So shout out to Arm, by the way. I want to throw a studio cam up one last time. One more time. Do, do, do. We're gonna celebrate. Oh, yeah. All right. Yep. Anyway. All right. What else do we do when we're on camera? Can I give it to Robert yet? This is when things get weird. Or no, this is when the clothes come off. Like, this right is... when the camera's off, this shirt gets ripped <laughs> off my skin, and I get out of it. This is when we start doing the YMCA and right. flossing. Yeah. And like... <laughs> so I you'll see, though, this is what magic happens. I think, uh, I think we just want credits and... Uh... Right. Get some bagels, late night bagels. Are they ready, really? Uh, they better be. <laughs> Cause here it come. Uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in, everybody. I'm gonna try to go get some Rogaine, work on that receding hairline. <laughs> it really gets an eagle-eye view. Of what's going on with that horseshoe? I got the the classic George Costanza horseshoe pattern going on. All right, peace out, everybody.